Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, today we do a special stream. Uh, we normally don't do it on a Monday, but uh, it's just a special, uh, just to make sure that, uh, so it's, it's everybody's schedule is, is different in different countries, so it's not easy. So we have to accommodate with whatever is available. And alhamdulillah, today we have uh, Ustad Daniel and also uh, Brother Amir Haq, um, both of them joining from two different parts, one from the uh, the West all the other way in, in the United States, and Brother Amir uh, all the way here, this side in the East from Pakistan, alhamdulillah. Uh, inshallah, the topic today is about um, Hindu scriptures. Um, there's a lot to, to, to cover actually, but let's see how much we can do today uh, in the limited time we have. Uh, so inshallah, we'll be unpacking uh, what the Hindu scriptures are uh, with regards to the authenticity uh, and today in terms of how the Hindus themselves value their books and the scriptures uh, and then contrast that with the Quran and Islamic texts inshallah. So let me quickly just uh, introduce uh, brother Amir Haq who is actually a new um, well, he's, I think it's the first time he's come, come on Dawah Wise. Uh, brother Daniel has come quite a few times before. Uh, so, mashallah, Brother Amir Haq, I think they do um, quite a few streams on his channel as well, Awaz e Haq, and also on um, Iman Union, I believe. Um, and alhamdulillah, they've been doing an excellent job uh, in partnership with Brother Sam Stallone uh, and I think some other members as well to unpack Hinduism. And they have done a lot of damage from what I can see. Most of their, I think most of their streams are in Urdu or in Hindi. Uh, but I can see the impact already, alhamdulillah. Uh, and as you all already know, Stad Daniel, mashallah, he's uh, from the Muslim Skeptic uh, website and YouTube as well. And mashallah, he's, he's done, I think he's, in, he's an all-rounder. He's, he's done every topic that I can think of. <laughs> alhamdulillah, he's, he's come a few times. I, it was like seven months ago, we did a stream together um, on, on Hinduism as well, um, on this very platform on Dawahwise. Uh, but yeah, I mean, without further ado, I would just like to uh, hand over to Start Daniel, uh, just to give us a brief. If you want to, you know, add something to the intro, if, if I haven't done so, Start Daniel, please feel free to do so. But uh, the floor is yours. Sure. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to come uh, speak to you guys on Dawa Wise. Um, today is a you know interesting topic on Hindu scripture. And I just want to share some, you know, very basic information about the differences um, in the Hindu versus Muslim belief about scripture and beliefs about God. And I think it's important for Muslims to really understand the perspective of Hindus themselves about their own texts. Because sometimes if we're not careful, we might project Muslim understanding of God, for example, or Muslim understanding of scripture, or even Muslim understanding of history onto Hindus, when that's not necessarily how they themselves understand their own beliefs. Um, and this can make debating them difficult, uh, because we assume that we're talking with people who have a similar structure in their religion compared to Islam, Because when it comes to Muslims, as we'll see, um, we are very particular in terms of preserving our texts. We are very particular about our history. Um, we kind of are uh, very hesitant uh, if we don't know something is completely authentic or sahih. We won't necessarily share that or we'll, we'll be very you know, hesitant to use like even weaker reports, especially like in a debate context. Whereas the other side, they don't have these kinds of hesitations uh, because of a difference in understanding of the preservation of scripture, the preservation of history, uh, and so forth. So I think what would be best if we, is if we start from an objective basis, like what does statistics say about the difference in uh, Muslim beliefs and Hindu beliefs? And there's this interesting study uh, that was put out by Pew Research. So Pew, you know, world famous uh, institute that does statistical research. So if I can share my screen. One second. Uh, 
Alhamdulillah. Br brothers and sisters, uh, share the uh, link for the stream uh, so we get uh, more exposure, inshallah. And particularly if there are any Hindus out there who are listening, uh, we'll be doing a live Q&A shortly. Um, so you're all welcome to join in. Uh, we'll give priority to the Hindus first uh, and then take on the Muslims and um, to invite them on to the panel for the Q&A, inshallah. So can you share it? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Maybe expand it a little bit. Um, or, or I have to do that. Yeah, I think you'll have to do it on your side. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. There we go. Uh, so this is uh, belief in God among Hindus. Percentage of Hindus who say that they believe in God and they're absolutely certain of this is 41%. Uh, believe in God and is, is fairly certain, 34%. Okay, and then 10% do not believe in God at all. Now let's compare this with Muslims. 84% are absolutely certain in God. Uh, and only 1% do not believe in God compared to 10% amongst Hindu. So, I mean, we would question whether someone who does not believe in God can be considered a Muslim. Yeah, but, I was just uh, thinking about that. <laughs> yeah, but their their survey data is based on like self-report, like I'm a Muslim and I believe in God or I'm, I don't believe in God. I see. So you can see like 84% compared to the 41%. So over double. That is very interesting and very significant. Uh, let's continue. So importance of religion in one's life among Muslims. So 64% of Muslims in this survey say very important. 24% say somewhat important. 2% say not important at all. When we go to the Hindus, 41%. Uh oh, that's the same one here. 26% importance of religion in one's life amongst Hindus. Only 26, as opposed to 64, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. uh, 64 for Muslims. Uh, 53 say somewhat uh, somewhat important. 6% say not important at all. So that's, again, a very big gap in importance of religion in one's life. Attendance of religious services among hin Hindus. 18% at least once a week. 60% once or twice a month. 21% seldom or never. So then we look at Muslims. And it's 45% at least once a week, 31% once or twice a month or a few times a year, and 22% seldom, never. So, you know, these, again, these stats are taking a sample from each religion and then comparing them. You can see, you know, I won't go through every single stat, like frequency mm -hmm. of prayer, there's also a big gap between Mus Muslims and Hindus. Yeah. But let's go to the part where it talks about scr um, scripture. Almost there. Okay, frequency of reading scripture. 10% for Hindus at least once a week. Once or twice a month, 11%. 60% seldom or never will be reading their scripture. Okay, so then when we go to Muslims, sorry. So 46% at least once per week. So almost 50% of the Muslims were that were surveyed, at least once a week, they're reading scripture. This is compared to 10% amongst Hindus. And then 28% said seldom or never uh, amongst Muslims versus 60% amongst Hindus. So again, this is a huge difference. Um, then interpretation of the scripture like okay we're reading scripture 
word of God should be taken literally 42%. Uh, 31% say word of God, not everything taken literally. Okay, So these may be like deviant Muslims, right? Um, 12% will say not the word of God, right? So these are people who identify as Muslims, but they have wrong theological beliefs. But still, like we're doing a comparison here between two groups. Hindus... Yeah. Only 12% think wow. that it's the word of God. And 60% say that it's not the word of God. So, like, you see this huge difference. So, this is significant because when we want to debate Hindus and have this kind of discussion with Hindus uh, about difference in scripture, they're not necessarily even believing in their own scriptures. Yeah, it looks like they're not serious at all. They're not serious at all about their own scriptures. And this is something that we see um, with Hin Hinduism today is more of a political phenomenon where they define themselves in opposition to Muslims because of Hindutva and the BJP and, you know, everything that's happening in India politically. There is yeah. this Hindu identity that has formed that is defined in opposition to Muslims. But when they're amongst themselves, they really don't believe in their scriptures. They don't read their scriptures very often. They don't necessarily even believe that their scriptures are the word of God. And, you know, their religion overall, there's very low numbers in terms of taking the religion seriously. Mm -hmm. So I uh, just wanted to share those stats, but if you want to see them for yourself, you can go to, um, uh, maybe we can put the link in the chat, but it's Pew Research. I'll share it in the private Yeah, chat. if you put it in the private chat, I'll make sure I share it. So Pew Research is quite a big, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite, it's well reputed. Uh, they do a lot of research on a lot of different topics. It's not just uh, religion. And... Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Daniel, are these statistics, are they international or are they just from the U.S.? This, let's see, actually, it's a religious landscape, so it's just on the U.S. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because most, most of the time I've noticed Pew Research, they do most of their statistics, collect the data mostly from the U.S., from the census. Uh, they do quite a few from internationally as well. So just uh, wanted to make sure mm -hmm. where it is from. Yeah, but it's not uh, from the census. This is like a specific study looking at religion. Right, okay. It's not like the official U.S. census. Okay. No. So, so um, here's the link. And there's another one. I think you just replaced the last word Hindu with Muslim. It's identical link, but let me just yeah. put it up as well. Okay, quite interesting. Uh, Amir Bhai, what do you think of that? Was that Assalamu something that you expected in terms of the numbers? Thank you. Thank you so much. I would like to, first of all, convey my salam to Brother Daniel Hakikachu, you, Brother Hashim, mm -hmm. and the people listening as an audience. Uh, this is actually my first experience. Jazakallah. This is actually my first experience in a live stream, especially in English. Uh, because okay. since you said uh, my most of my work, uh, live streams or videos in uh, Hindi and Urdu for that audience in the Indo Pak, Bangladesh, Nepal. That's right. Yes. Um, as far as Hindu community is concerned, Daniel, brother Daniel Hakikachu has presented the beautiful and uh, the informative. Actually, it's shocking. But at the same time, Alhamdulillah, Allah name Islam, that we Muslims are far more better than Hindus uh, in the context of uh, practicing our religion and following our scripture and uh, all that thing, what we call as a religious person in these days. Uh, irrespective of what we call as a religious person in the context of Islam, but um, after all, like in a, in a popular way, a religious Muslim or a practicing yeah. Muslim. Um, as far as Hindu scriptures are concerned, uh, in terms of uh, their authentic, uh, authenticity and um, uh, preservation and the credibility, um, I would like to apply the technique of Imam Ghazali, rahmatullahi, the internal criticism. Uh, I have done 
I guess series of live streams in my program in my channel on my channel Avadeh Hak official two programs on Avadeh Hak official and three programs on Avadeh Hak live. Right. Uh, right. Uh, first two episodes, I guess. First two episodes are really important to understand the Hindu scriptures and their philosophy or their technique to understand them or to take them or to uh, uh, recognize them or to accept them as the word of God. First, the origin of Vedas, understanding Vedas. Actually, it's uh, uh, under the banner of understanding uh, Vedas or understanding the Hindu scriptures. So the first is uh, origin of Vedas. First of all, we need to understand how they get originated from the Ishwar, from the God. Uh, since they claim that uh, it's the eternal, with the eternal books from the God, and that's what they call authenticate these books since they claim that uh, it's from God. But the thing is, when you um, deep dive in their references, in their claims, especially uh, the people, uh, they, they call themselves the Arya Samajis and their founder, Swami Dhyana Saraswati, he wrote in his books that uh, in Satyarat Prakash. And he said that there are multiple theories, multiple opinions about the origination of the Vedas internally. And everyone has their arguments. Um, for instance, you can take the Shattapat Brahman. They claim that the Vedas were given to four rishis, four human, Aditya, Agni, Vayu, Angira. But at the same time, the uh, uh, Upanishads, they claim that the um, Brahma created the Vedas. And he gave them to his sons, not the rishis, not the saints. So there is a big, big, uh, you can say, uh, contradictory statements uh, as far as the origin of Vedas are concerned. So uh, the Vedas are the top priority, top, uh, uh, you can say the top uh, uh, highest, highest um, status of the books in according to the Hindu beliefs or Hindu uh, epistemological uh, uh, structure regarding the books. And the second episode is about the eternity of Vedas. Uh, it, what is eternity uh, in the context of Hindus? They claim that any book which claims to be the word of God should be in the beginning of the universe or the beginning in, of the creation or the beginning or the starting of the world. That's what they claim. So, but when we read Vedas, we find we clearly find crystal clear evidences that Vedas are influenced by time and historical um, incidents or what we call as uh, the wars and uh, some people they are living normal lives and they are getting instructions from Vedas. So that kind of things you find in the Veda, in the text of the Veda. For instance, you find in Rig Veda, uh, book number seven or eight, what do we call as the Mandal. The Mandal number seven and eight, which talks about the Dasarajana, the war of ten Rajas, 10 kings. So when we read these kind of uh, stories or uh, historic events in Vedas, it's very clear to understand that Vedas are not uh, from uh, God or not the word of God or not eternal as per their claim. So that's what I say. It's in internal criticism, the technique uh, uh, posed by Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah to understand any claim or to criticize or analyze any ideology, any um, claim as we make. So this is how I see. And the second thing is I'm going to make a inshallah live stream. Uh, I'm going to um, present some evidences uh, from uh, Swami Dhyanan Saraswati books, which he claims that uh, a word of God should fulfill these conditions, these terms, this criteria. So I will prove inshallah with evidences in future, inshallah, I guess next week or the week coming after that, that uh, according to their terms and conditions, Vedas are not fulfilling those terms, that criteria, which they themselves present uh, to claim that uh, Vedas are or Hindu Dharm Shastras are from the word, uh, from the God or the word of God. Okay. That's all. Brother. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, one thing, I, I let's say if you're looking objectively, you know, if someone claims their book is eternal, yeah, 
uh, I mean, even the Muslims, we know that Allah has uh, got the the revelation came down from the Lahul Mahfuz, and then Angel Jibril at the appointed time was then revealed either to Musa alayhi salam, depending on what scripture Allah wants to reveal to him, like the Torah, or the Injil to Isa alayhi salam at, at, at its appointed time. And finally, the final messenger, the Quran, to uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. But we know that these Allah had already preserved us in the preserved tablet in, in the Lahul Mahfuz. Um, we don't say it's eternal, do we, in that sense? Um, because when you say a book is eternal, first and foremost, the question that I would ask is, okay, what language was it in? You know, because it came, you're saying it came from an eternal uh, place to some rishis who had lived. By the way, you said they were humans. When I asked the Hindus who these rishis are, and they say, oh, these guys, they live for millions of years. Millions. You're not talking about hundreds or even thousands, but literally millions. I don't know what human being lives mm -hmm. for that long. Um, but that's that's besides the point. The thing is, the, the language itself is something that wouldn't be eternal because Sanskrit is like, what, 3,000 years old, four maximum, or even five, but not eternal. So, Daniel, well, how, how, would they res how do you think they would respond to that? Well, I think that anyone can say anything like, oh, our rishis were the millions <laughs> of years old. But when you actually look at the historical fact, like the oldest... Uh, Vedas like that in terms of physical copy that has been dated is a thousand CE like a thousand CE that's the that's the oldest copy whereas they claim uh, its origin the origins of the Vedas are from uh, or at least like in terms of anthropology or the study of religion they say that the or that the uh, Vedas date to maybe a thousand BCE or fifteen hundred BCE or at the at the latest five hundred BCE. So yeah. the early, so the closest physical copy of the Vedas is over a thousand years, almost maybe even two thousand or twenty five hundred years after the fact. Now compare this with the Quran. Non Muslim academics have dated. Um, the earliest mushaf, the earliest copy of the Quran, to within the lifetime of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and furthermore, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a known historical figure that has been attested to by non-Muslim historical sources. So compare this to Hinduism; these rishis, there's no evidence that they even existed. There's nothing that like a non-Hindu academic can point to and say, "Aha, here's evidence that when the when Hinduism claims the rishis existed, they actually did exist, and they actually did author the Vedas." And they and here is you know the earliest copy of the Vedas that we can date to within that time period. There's nothing like that. It's all just claims that are that's being made by uh, by Hindus. Uh, so this is a big difference. Like Islamic claims uh, are based in uh, historical evidence that even non-Muslim academics will recognize. The thing about a lot of the Hindu texts is that they did not preserve them. Um, this is partly because of their understanding of revelation or the, their understanding of you know, this kind of uh, scripture because they they don't have the same kind of understanding of, okay, this is the last uh, revelation that Muslims do. If you, under, if you believe the Quran is the last revelation, you want to preserve it. Um, you have a motivation to preserve the Quran and that's what Muslims did and that's what uh, Western academia, non-Muslims recognize that Muslims were able to preserve their book um, but uh, I mean that's one factor is the motivation that Muslims have as opposed to Hindus when you have the concept that revelation is is going to uh, continue to come and you have multiple different scriptures separated by thousands of years um, but then also uh, the environment because in Arabia um, and drier climates uh, such as Mediterranean climate Middle Eastern climate it's easier to preserve um, scripture that's written on parchment or even animal hide because uh, the weather is arid, it's dry. The 
documentation does not uh, deteriorate. Whereas if you have a very humid climate, like in the subcontinent or even Southeast Asia, then it's hard to preserve documents unless you just constantly have to rewrite them, rewrite them, rewrite them, rewrite them. So this is also a big difference in the kind of documentation that Islam has of its scripture, where you can date it to the lifetime of the Prophet wasallam and the early Muslims versus what you have in Hinduism. So this is this is a big difference. And what what ends up happening is that Muslims have like a sense of history, like uh, like a historical record. And that can be like documented, whereas with Hinduism, it's just claims and there is no documentation. And when there it and the claims are very mythological, like it's clear that this is is this history or is this like mythology? Um, and this is due to the lack of textual preservation um, in Hinduism for environmental factors and also this kind of internal motivation or lack thereof uh, right. amongst Hindus. So one of the things um, um, the Hindus claim. Uh, sorry, Amir, by just just one quick reference, and then I'll give you the uh, the mic, inshallah. Um, so when we ask them, I mean, most likely everyone says it's like you said, you know, it's like five thousand years old, you know, fifteen hundred BCE, and uh, some say even three thousand BC and gone. I mean, it's it's just speculation. Most of it. When we ask them for evidence, produce a single manuscript that is extant of any of the Vedas. They don't have any. So. Once I, I was Googling and I saw in Times of India, they said the same thing, like uh, 1500 BC, and they mentioned UNESCO. And they said it's actually preserved in UNESCO. They got these 30 different uh, uh, texts of the Vedas, and it's, it's preserved in that. I said, okay, let's, let's check it. I asked for the reference. Um, sorry, they didn't give any reference on that uh, site. So I thought I'll check it myself. And guess what? I actually did find the link for the PDF on the UNESCO website. And it's it's here on the screen now. And this is what, when I looked at the PDF, and this was on page seven, towards the end, uh, it says, uh, there are 30 manuscripts of the Rig Veda at the Institute collected from different parts of India, like Kashmir, Gujarat, and, and then Rajputana, central provinces, etc. Uh, they are written in Shraddha, Devangri, uh, and Devangri with... Uh, Prishtamatra and the material used for writing is birch bark, as well as paper. The oldest of these manuscripts dated 1464 CE, which is less than 600 years old. Yeah. Yes, not 6,000, mm -hmm. 600 years old. So I think uh, they should really go and do their research uh, from the very sources that they're quoting, <laughs> because it okay. definitely doesn't add up. For some reason, Indians believe that Aryabhata invented the zero, so they can take the liberty to add zeros <laughs> to any any number. Uh, just they have that uh, option, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> All right, uh, brother Sam is here. Assalamu alaikum, Sam bhai. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi barakatuh, brother Hashim, brother Daniel, brother Amir. How are you? I'm um, alaikum. Good of you no, to I'm, feeling good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just got a little emergency here. No, so I'm just here now. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, welcome aboard, brother. And always good to have you on the panel. Alhamdulillah. So, so yeah, Sam, so I don't know if you heard the last bit. I was just saying that the Indians, they take liberty to add zeros to all <laughs> everything that they say, whether it's the number of years of their rishis or, or <laughs> the, <laughs> the number of years, how old their books are. They just say 15. Some of these guys say millions and trillions of years old, long before the universe exi existed. You know, like, come on, guys, give us a break. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah maybe is like really yeah. easy for them. Yeah, there, there, are, there are a few Hindus who can who can say that uh, the scriptures are older than the gods. Few gods who are new in this world. Yeah. Like the sons of the gods, the daughter of the gods. They came yeah. after the scriptures. So yeah, it's uh, all fallacies about Hindu scriptures, and actually, actually, UNESCO already said that the Hindu scriptures are just uh, the the manuscripts of the Hindu scripture is just uh, five hundred and fifty years old. Yeah, yeah, it's five fifty. And maybe the history. yes, it's uh, less, than six, six, less than six hundred years old. And you guys can go and check the manu uh, sorry the PDF which mentions this 
and there's a lot more on there uh, but i don't think any of these vedas are even like brother daniel was being generous i think when he says 1000 years old <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amir, I wanted to say something. Um, Amir, would, please. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, Sam Solon is here since, so, alhamdulillah, I'm feeling now uh, good, better. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, brother. Okay, I would like to... Jazakallah. Jazakallah. I wanted to say that um, uh, Brother Hashim was saying that million years old, they claim. Actually, Swami Dhyanan Saraswati, in Rig Veda Bhashya Bhumika, he claimed that uh, Vedas are 1.4 billion years old. He dated 1.4 billion. Billion. Yeah. billion, yes, 1.4 yeah. billion, <laughs> billion. Like it's like useless. Rig Vedas were there, useless. I don't know where, but they were there when there was no human being on the face of the earth. So Vedas were there. So 1.4 billion years. He dated there. He claimed. And Amir, that's yeah. the reason I told you when you said that rishis were human beings. I said it doesn't add up because they actually literally say these guys are millions of years old. But you're saying the Vedas are even even older than them. So Billion. who was exactly yes. reading it? Yes. Swami Dhyanand claimed that that's the only person. Arya Samaji founder Swami Dhyanand Saraswati only claimed and he um, uh, uh, quoted the reference from Shatpat Brahman. Shatpat Brahman is actually a commentary from Vedas. And the second thing I have shared a, a reference you can see the screen down. So kindly share uh, it. Yeah, it's, sure. Yes, it's from Satyarat Prakash, page 476, 476 page. And the last thing, cut to short. Last thing, the reference is on the screen. If anyone wants to double check it, review it, open the real book and check. Page is there, name is there. The last two lines. Jo in me, kin me, like in from where? Jo in me, from which those uh, uh, mantras, those verses in the Vedas me ved virud vachan hai unka apraman karta hu. Swami Dhyanand here is saying that itself in the Vedas there are some mantras, there are some verses, they are contradictory within the Vedas. So here he is claiming that he never uh, believe or never accept um, uh, Vedas as a whole, as complete, as to be the word of God. Okay, so, so he's saying he rejects the contradictory uh, verses in the Vedas. Is that what he's yes, saying? Yes, exactly. It's like okay. someone is, is, is like some, any Muslim, obviously not, Nauzubillah. If any Muslim says that I don't believe on uh, in some verses or I don't consider some verses to be the part of Quran, which contradicts with the Quran. That's a fallacy. Mm -hmm. Quran claim in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 82, I guess, 82, 89, the same book from, from, from God can never be self-contradictory at the same time. Can that cannot be? Yeah. So Allah says, if this book is from anyone other than Allah, surely you will not see contradictions in it. Or if it's uh, sorry, if it's anyone other than Allah, you'll find lots of contradictions in it. Uh, but if it's from Allah, then there are no contradictions. The fact that there this uh, Swami actually, he, he's, he's in fact conceding that there are contradictions and he rejects those contradictions. And he admits, yeah. you know, I just um, uh, read the two last lines just for the time, uh, mm -hmm. short of the time. But yeah. if you read the complete passage, he is accepting that in the Vedas, there are some interpolations from the Rishis in the part of the commentary, like Brahmana's, uh, in the Brahmanas of the mantras, like there are mantras, mantra richas, mm -hmm. those are the original verses, and then there are a brief and precise commentary of those mantras, which we, they call as Brahmanat in the Veda, in the same book. So yeah. that's what the difference between Muslims and Hindus that we consider only Arabic text as to be the word of God. That's it, not the translation. Neither the commentaries, even not the hadith, Sahih hadith. We consider yeah. only Arabic text to be the word of God. Alhamdulillah. That's the difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Brother Sam, this topic, I know it can go on for hours. Um, what can you summarize with regards to uh, what do you want to say about the authenticity uh, of, of the Vedas or let's say all the texts that they consider to be from God or divine or whatever the words they want to use uh, of the Hindu manuscripts. Yes. 
but there is one uh, one book i just want to quote it the reference of the book just give me a second yeah it's uh, atharva veda bhashya author name is professor vishwanath vidyalankar volume 3 page number 742 and the verses are uh, uh, 127 to 136 here this is this is the bhashya of uh, arya samaji and here he says that there are 11 verses which are interpolated they are not part of the veda they have been added later on so they have kicked these verses out of the uh, vedas to be authentic canonical non canonical so those who says that vedas are not corrupted they book the arya samaji's uh, uh, the the author of this book is arya samaji professor vishwanathan vidyalankar he says in the book and in his commentary that 11 verses have been prakshit interpolated mm-hmm. and uh, there are many things about like uh, swami vivekananda also said uh, the earlier the original veda consists consists of uh, uh, one 100000 verses that was the original veda but now we have like a uh, 20000 plus verses so he says most of the vedas has been lost 80% to 85% of the vedas has been lost so they are not preserved even in the uh, uh, vishnu purana it's talk about the original verses contains uh, 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 the vedas the four in four vedas original verses were uh, 100 100000 but now they have been uh, uh, cut down to 20000 or 21000 verses 70% or 80% of the vedas has been lost wow so this throughout the history even the even the uh, uh, the historians and the travelers who came to india even they also said the original vedas consisted of uh, 100000 verses but now we have only 21000 plus verses okay. so most of the vedas has been lost so the majority has been lost uh, yes. okay so so daniel what what do you reckon would be the significance of a scripture is supposed to be from god almighty uh, but that hasn't been preserved what what do you think would be the consequence of in such a situation well if there's no um scripture that you can go back to to justify your practices in then how can you believe that they're authentic how can you believe that your practices your theology is actually authentic it's not something that was just made up you know because of political pressure or social pressure you know 500 years ago 400 years ago 300 years ago 10 years ago you can't really go back and verify that okay we believe xyz we have xyz rituals these actually are authentic this is what hindus have been practicing for hundreds of years or thousands of years there's no way to verify mm, absolutely yeah so let's say we let's say we for the sake of argument i mean between us because we we want to hear the side of the hindus as well and i hope they do join during the q and a um now that they like like brother sam said they've only got like 20% of or just over 20% of their vedas which they claim uh remaining even from that there's no there, there's contradictions as well and there are things which are probably added later on as well and they have been corrupted over the years um i don't even know what language so sam what language do they normally say it was written in yeah they are scripts sir. actually the sanskrit language has many scripts the script changed uh, centuries to century what right. we have today is a uh, devanagari script the writing of a sanskrit is, is in devanagari script yeah, yeah which is just like uh, 950 years old Yeah. and we get all manuscripts of vedas in this manu- uh, in this script only before the script that 2000 years before there was another script that script name was pali lipi so before that there were other script and the scripts are so different that if you see if we see it looks like a numerical number it looks like mathem okay the scripts old, are like a very different script? compared to today's script how old is this pali script um pali script uh, could be like around uh, in range of uh, 2000 year to 3000 years okay okay interesting but they haven't got any of the but we do, don't do they actually have yeah, anything right we don't get enough. anything okay exactly so, exactly it, we do have other we do we do have yeah. other manuscripts of uh, uh, ashoka and buddhist scripts 
but we don't find any script in pali lipi for rig veda or any veda okay now here is another angle i want to approach this from so so far we have focused on the written manuscripts the written scripts but they say that the the vedas are supposed to be shruti okay so they are read out uh they are not written down they are just recited that means they are orally transmitted from the guru to the shishya from the guru to the student um and this is the way they have propagated their veda so just because you don't have anything written down in a manuscript format doesn't mean that they haven't preserved it so how would you respond to that and this question is open to any of you if those were not the books or those were only shrutis then how come someone you know stolen them from uh, vishnu first and uh, then they uh, uh, you know uh, um, d- dived into the sea deep sea and someone has to take an avatar and snatch them back and retrieve those vedas you, you need to not- give us some 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 context to that because many of us not heard that particular story okay. that the okay. demon stole it from someone i think <laughs> So Actually, please give us some Veda, background to that. The Vedas were stolen once in the history. Right. So if they were only shrutis they were not written on the scrolls or in the in not in the written form that how mm-hmm. come someone stolen the memory? They, they you cannot you cannot steal a memory. You can only steal a thing which is something physically exist. Yeah. So you can snatch it from someone. You cannot steal a memory. You can destroy a brain but you cannot steal the content or the the um, you know the the data in that mind yeah so there is a there is a, a history of uh, an avatar of vishnu and uh, he you know he took that avatar to just to retrieve those vedas mm-hmm. so um, like you cannot say that if they are shrutis and the second thing is those were shrutis for the first sages for the first sages right and okay. the first sages according to the shatpat brahman swami uh, dyanand saraswati said that brahma gave them to the four rishis four sages and he taught them like gave them literally there is mentioned they gave them mm-hmm. so you cannot give something which is you can convey something or you can read out for something uh, read out something for someone but you cannot give something which is not actually exist in the physical form right so are you saying okay. that the hindus don't have this tradition of memorizing and passing 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 the the vedas on as a shruti okay. just like the way the muslims do you know we have hafiz al quran who memorize the quran and they pass it on to their students and so on why do you think that could not be possible amongst the hindus who claim this is how they propagated their their shruti actually they- actually they had they did they did memorize the vedas but the thing is that at the same time quran is totally different the preservation of quran is a, a two way two way mm. steps so um they, they were hufaz the yeah. they used and to memorize the quran, they were the katibin and wahi katibin describes they used yeah. to write at the same time and prophet himself used to sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to tell them that this was belongs to this surah and this was belong to this surah and all the structure and the uh even the uh, the numbering the order of the sura uh, is from prophet muhammad sir directly from him but Absolutely. the vedas there um they just claim and when we ask them who wrote them first who wrote them they have no answer and actually mm. if you read vedas there are rishis uh, there are some mandals there are some suktas there is uh, you will find few names of rishis um beside those suktas and they claim that those suktas were written by those rishis that's what they claim so do they and, not and say they, it was ved vyas who first wrote it down or compiled it or something like that no 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 it's tot- it's totally wrong if they say that this is a claim but the second thing is you will find multiple rishis i guess yeah. um yeah. i have mentioned i have did a, i have a live program on my channel where i uh, the episode name was who wrote the vedas and there i have uh, presented few evidences from their sites hindu sites official sites where they mention i guess 100 and 200 plus 100 plus 200 plus what rishis plus rishis who wrote okay. the vedas not the only one ved vyasas right 
Uh, yeah, so Wade Vyasa right. compiled it. You know, it's it's like like Bukhari and Muslim. You know, they compiled the yeah, hadith. Yeah. Similarly, yeah. Wade Vyasa compiled it, but he also compiled the Puranas. He also compiled the uh, the the yeah. Ithihasas. Mahabharata. And they say, Mahabharata. oh, those we don't believe in. You know, they are corrupted. They're interpolated. But it was the same guy who compiled it. You know, why do you not trust him? Exactly. Okay. Anyway, that's so that's what, uh, that's what Quran says. Afatou minuna bi baadil kitab wa takfuruna bi baad. Yeah. So that's what Quran says. Yes. So they actually believe in some part of that which suits them, and they reject those which they don't like. Mm. Right. So with regards to the preservation, I mean, in look in comparison to the Quran. So, brother Daniel, what is the earliest extant manuscripts of the Quran that we have? The earliest there's. Things like the Birmingham manuscript that yeah. um, can be dated to, you know, the first half of the seventh century, common era. Yeah. So that's those are the earliest manuscripts. They've been dated by non-Muslim academics. Right. Um, yeah, and they also have, I think, the top copy manuscript and also the Sana manuscripts uh, from either the first century Al Hijra. Or the early second century Hijra, which is still like within the hundred year period, which you would expect these, uh, like you're talking about 1400 plus years ago. Yeah, there are uh, many, there are many manuscripts that they've dated to within 50 years after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed. Yeah, there are many, but recently, like within the past five years, they've mm -hmm. gotten manuscripts that go to even to the lifetime of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yeah i think the birmingham manuscripts are w one of them right because they they dated them to very close to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, and this is quite important discovery uh, we have uh, and we have got loads more manuscripts which actually we can show as evidence from very close to the person to whom the quran was revealed to the prophet uh, muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is quite significant uh, part of the data that we can present to anyone who's seeking physical evidence, you know. However, the primary mode of the Quran's uh, propagation has always been oral from the very from the very beginning. The reason for that is because the Prophet ﷺ himself did not know how to read and write. So he couldn't have written or uh, written it himself. So he had to obviously memorize it first. And then many of his companions did write. He had scribes who would write it down, but then there are many more than the scribes who would actually memorize it and then pass it on to their generation and so on. And also at that time, I think um, not only that many of the people were illiterate who couldn't read and write, but also the material on which it was written was quite expensive uh, and so on. So it's, it's going to be quite difficult to actually have a lot of written manuscripts but at least we have some that we can use as evidence to show yes the quran has been preserved both orally and in written format however when it comes to i think i've looked at even the Christ christians and they don't have the the gospels preserved nothing from the first hundred years uh, of jesus christ and also even from the second century they got uh, fragments at best and most of their manuscripts come from, uh, as ba Dr. Bart Alman would put it, like from the ninth century and onwards, you know, the big chunk of it. Uh, it doesn't mean that there were no manuscripts before that, between the fourth century and the ninth century, but they're saying the big chunk of it comes much later, nearly a thousand years after. And that's the reason you have many of these um, Hebrew manuscripts on which uh, they depend, or even the Greek ones that they depend on, that they can never go as close to Jesus Christ as possible. If you wanted to have anything from the first hundred years, there is zero manuscripts. And the same thing with, reg with regards to the Torah. Um, I think they have the Dead Sea Scrolls, which are like 1200 years after Moses. So more than a millennia after Moses. And uh, so it's, it's quite difficult to get anything close to the actual people to whom it was revealed uh, and the Quran is the only exception to that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna wa inna lahu So Allah himself in chapter 19 has given us this um, guarantee. Sorry, it's chapter 9 given us a guarantee about the preservation of the Quran. And he's taken the preservation upon himself because the Quran is the last message to the last messenger.
you know, before, uh, after Moses came, Isa alayhi salam, after Isa alayhi salam came Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. So always the next messenger would would actually come back with the with the actual message which had been corrupted by the time he had come. So he would always renew the uh, the message that was from God Almighty and then give you the updated version, the correct version, uncorrupted version. But because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the last messenger and there's no more messengers or prophets to come after him, who is going to correct it if there's any uh, amendments or any interpolations in that? And that is the reason Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has taken it upon himself to preserve it. Now, I'm wondering if there is any such passage in the Bible and I'd, I've checked and there isn't one. And I'm wondering if there's one in, in, the, uh, in the Vedas where the God himself has taken the, um, the, the, uh, the authority or the responsibility of uh, preserving their holy scriptures. Do you think there are any such passages, Sam or Amir Bhai? I would like Sam Bhai to speak on it. I wanted to clear an, uh, very, a very important point about it. Right. So whenever we yeah. whenever we talk uh, to Hindus about the scriptures or about their, uh, you know, uh, Vedic philosophy or Hindu philosophy, there is a common understanding misunderstanding um, uh, they have about us that this the, that the thing that we are judging or analyzing their religion mm -hmm. according to Quran or according to Islamic philosophy, that's a misunderstanding. We are just Muslims talking about. Hindu scriptures or Hindu philosophy or Vedic philosophy according to your own criteria, the internal yeah. criticism. And the second thing we are doing is just checking out what the world thinks about the Vedic philosophy or Vedic scriptures. So that's it. We are just Muslims talking about. We are not talking Islam. We are not talking about Islamic uh, criteria and judging Hinduism and Hindu scriptures on that criteria. So there is a big difference because I know I have some experience with these Hindu brothers, they are so innocent. They think that since he's a Muslim, they are Muslim. They're talking about Hindus or Hindu philosophy. They don't know anything about Hinduism. Mm. Don't look what we believe. Just listen to what we say. We are giving yeah. your criteria to you. Thank you. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's that's yeah. important. Um, Sam, you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah, brother. And there is no such verse uh, like how, how Quran say, how Allah says in Quran that we will, uh, we will be the guardian of this Quran. We will preserve the message. There is no such verse uh, from in, in, in Vedas from the God. So there is no guarantee that the verse, uh, the, the Vedas has been preserved. And many of the scholars already has mentioned in their books, in their speeches, in their lectures, that Vedas has been lost. They were Shruti. They, were, they, were, they used to memorize uh, uh, Vedas time to time, and they used to pass on to the generation after generation. But the scholars say that few generation which came became extinct. So the major part of the Vedas has been lost. So let me read one small passage. Uh, it's from the complete works of Swami Vivekananda, volume nine. It says that almost the largest portion of the Vedas has been lost. The priests who carried, out it, carry, carried it down to the prosperity were divided into so many families and accordingly, the Vedas were divided into so many parts. Each part was allotted to a family. The ruler, the ceremonies, the custom, the worship of that family were to be obtained from the respective portion of the Vedas. They preserved it and performed all the ceremonies according to that. In course of time, some of the families become extinct. And with them, their portion of the Vedas were lost. So the ma major portion of the Vedas were lost. And uh, in Vishnu Purana, it again says, uh, let me read one more thing from uh, the complete works of Swami Vivekananda, volume 9. He says that the Sanskrit in which the Vedas were written is not the same Sanskrit in which the books were written uh, about uh, 1000 years later than the Vedas. So what we have, the Vedas, uh, it doesn't match us with the older Sanskrit. So there is no reliability or trustability in the Vedas, what we have today. Okay. That's good. And so Vishnu Purana, yeah, this... just one more, just yeah, one more sure, verse. Sure, uh, Vish, Vishnu Purana, book number three, chapter number four. It says that the original Vedas in four parts consisted of 100,000 stanzas and from its sacrifice of 10 kinds to accomplish all the desires proceeded. The 28th uh, 
Dwapara, Dwapara age, my son, Vyasa separated the four portion of the Vedas into four Vedas. So original Vedas consisted of 100,000 stanzas, verses. Right now we have only 21,000 plus. So 80% of the Vedas has been lost. Okay. So not only the text has been lost, but also the, uh, the, the, the what do you say, there's contradictions in it and no original language because they had some other script and then it's been changed again. Yeah. Um, no manuscripts evidence either. So, yeah, I mean, we are not, we are not just comparing like uh, brother Amir said, you know, like there will be a different criteria for comparing, um, let's say the Abrahamic texts, uh, the scriptures compared to the, 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 what do you say, the Hindu scriptures. We're using the same, criteria in terms of contradictions, in terms of any manuscript evidence, in terms of the language, all these things should apply across the board, regardless of which manuscripts, or, or sorry, which religion you're, you're comparing the books with, you know, the same criteria should apply across the board. Um, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's pretty, it's not looking good to, with regards to the Hindu scriptures. Uh, but anyway, um, Brother Daniel, do you want to add and, something and brother to that? I'm sorry, sorry, brother. Yeah, and, sure, the, and the criteria, yeah, and the criteria of the Shruti is also false. Like the all, all Hindu says that uh, the Vedas were used to be memorized. That's why mm. it's called as Shruti. The same goes with Upanishad. Upanishad. Upanishad are also called as a Shruti, but they don't memorize this thing. Why? Right. They only memorize Vedas and they left out the uh, Upanishad, and both are called as Shruti. So the criteria for for for, for saying uh, uh, talking about the shruti is not same for Vedas and Upanishad. So it's a false yeah. criteria they put up across the Vedas. Yeah, and look, even if they did memorize it, I th I still think they should produce some sort of a, um, you know, like the way we have the isnat for the hadith, hafiz, you know, yeah. and we have the uh, El Marijal, like every every single person within the isnat. Uh, you would know about him. You would know his biography. You would know whether he's reliable or not, whether he's old or whether he's young, uh, whether his memory has lapsed by the time he actually narrated this hadith and so on. So there's quite a lot of detail uh, and it's actually called the science of hadith. The, uh, the, uh, this is an ulum, it's, it's, it's a science. And the same thing with regards to the preservation of the Quran as well we have this chain of transmission, just like the way we have the chain of narration for the Hadith, we have a chain of transmission for the Quran as well. So those people who become Qaris or even the people who become Hafiz, they have um, a chain of transmission from whom they learn this. You know, the Qaris, those people who pronounce the Tajweed accurately. So even the pronunciation, we have a chain of transmission for that. Not just a written one or not just a memorization. There's a lot of uh, what do you say, internal uh, checks built in to ensure that there is no mispronunciation of a single letter of the Quran. And exactly. that is the significance, that is the level to and the extent to which this science has dealt with, actually, of the preservation of the Quran and the Hadith post. So do they have anything like the Isnat for the oral transmission for the Vedas? Do they? They don't. Uh, so they they do they say it's preserved. Yeah. They they do. Yeah, they do say that they have chain of uh, narrators, but mm. uh, <laughs> there is no proof about it. the The chain is broken. Okay. The thing. The second thing is the chain it's is like more in in yeah, the hadith. Exactly. Okay. There are two things. We don't only need a chain. We need hadil, adil, and hafiz, a just yeah. one, a, a sincere, and honest person. Absolutely. That's yeah. the second condition for the chain to be authentic. Mm -hmm. We cannot say like, I'm saying something to Brother Hashim and Brother Hashim is conveying something to Brother Daniel and Brother Daniel is saying, right. sending that message particular to the Brother Sam. And we, we say that this message is very authentic because the chain is, you know, uh, marfu or uh, complete. But the second yeah. thing is we have to check, we have to find out what uh, kind of people we are conveying this message. The first thing. The second thing is, this is the thing we are talking about Vedas to be preserved in a book or in the public or in the society to be spread out as the word of God. But the first thing is, Alhamdulillah, we Muslims are very clear. Our concept is very crystal clear that Allah sent a prophet, Jibreel, an angel to reveal Quran, Prophet Muhammad Three people, Allah, Jibreel and Muhammad 
simple. Let's ask this question, a simple, basic question, a question to Hindus. What do they think about it? You will find a, 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 a Hindu brother, he will say, like, a Brahma created with us. When you will find, he will say that uh, Rishis, you know, uh, they extract the meaning of the Vedas. And one in, in Upanishad, Chandogya Upanishad, and the Sri, uh, Sri Mad Bhagavatam, there is mentioned the Brahma extra, extra, extracted Vedas as a nectar from four, di four, four deities, like Vayu, Surya, and other two. So the thing is, when you when you try to look into the basic chain from Ishwar, from God to the Rishis, you will find a, a contradictory opinions within themselves. So this is the basic thing, like two things, from Ishwar to man, and from that single or Rishis for Rishis towards the society. There is a big, big gap and big, big, um, you know, confusion about it. So I don't know why Hindus, that's why, I think that's why this is the big reason. If you talk with a normal Hindu, they never bother. They, you know, they, they do not bother to read their scriptures. That's why Brother Daniel presented the presentation. He show, he was showing that uh, these are the per percentages of the Hindus, why they don't, you know, like to read their book. This was the reason. Because they cannot understand. They have no interest in it. And this is human nature. Once a news get you know, confused or uh, 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 unreliable or non-credible, you, you lose your interest. That's what happened with the scriptures. This is human psychology. Simple. Thank you. The thing about their, you know, this kind of uh, lack of authenticity is that it's not just with their scripture. It goes into their understanding of history as well. And you see all kinds of claims that they make about Muslims in order to, to oppress the Muslim minority. Um, they make all kinds of claims that Muslims have invaded, Muslims have committed the, this kind of genocide against us. Um, okay, fine, you know, let's just concede to these kinds of claims. But they won't have any kind of knowledge of their own history. And, you know, they make the claim that, for example, Hinduism has always been native or indigenous to the subcontinent. But this is historically false. Uh, this is something that has been disproven definitively in academia that, no, it was uh, Hinduism came to the subcontinent through invasion of Aryans. And this is something that happened historically, but there's no his Hindu record of it. There's no historical um, acknowledgement of it by Hindu Dva or these modern Hindus. So it's like the pot calling the kettle black, for example, on this one issue of invasion. They have claims like that, you know, based on their interpretation of their scriptures that, oh, Hinduism invented the internet. <laughs> or Hinduism <laughs> invented, you know, a, a satellite technology and airplanes like this is their understanding of history so how can you take these people seriously like how can you take them seriously in, not only in terms of their religion but in terms of their entire historical identity it has no basis in empirical fact um so this is i think very significant because it's not just you know, comparative religion, looking at their scripture, this also bleeds into politics and the uh, social situation in India and the oppression of Muslims by this uh, very fascistic uh, Hindu uh, political group. So, I mean, we have to keep all of these things in mind uh, when we're looking at these kinds of issues. Yeah, it's, it's quite amusing. They would make such bold claims, you know, like, we invented the internet and we invented the uh, the supersonic uh, rockets and all that. Uh, and it's not even just like some <laughs> random guy on YouTube saying it. Even Modi is saying this. <laughs> Modi is, you know, <laughs> saying these kinds of things. So it's just shocking. Yeah. They found the cure the for the COVID-19. Even before, even before COVID-19 was there, they find the cure there. And they were talking about <laughs> this on national TV. Yeah, they were laughing. And the second thing is they find the precautions for the atomic radiation bomb. And guess what? That's the dung. Sorry to say Go, that. Go <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm really sorry for that. I have shared a screen uh, talking about the advent of Aryans in the India. 
So right. uh, what which uh, Brother Daniel was pointing out, there is a book, Satyarat Prakash. Again, the Arya Samaji founder, Swami Dhyanand Saraswati, chapter 8 and page 250. And here he what he's saying, advent of Aryas. How did they come here? Who? Aryans, obviously. When the quarrel between the Aryas and the Dasyus, I have explained Dasyu term. You know what uh, Dasyu means in Sanskrit? Dasyu they call uh, the decades, decades, the robbers, the rippers. So the rapists, uh, sorry, rapists, Dasyus they call. So Aryans and Dasyus, they were quarrel, they were fighting each other. The learned gods and ignorant, ignorant devils became frequent and bitter. The Aryas, uh, the Aryas considering this land in bracket India. Watch out. So Aryas considering this land, bracket India, as the best country in the world, came here to settle. And so it was named the Aryavrata or the abode of the noble. So here's the argument. Swami Dhyanand Saraswati accepting this, the Aryans were the aliens. They were the, uh, you know, foreigners in the India. Mm. And they fought here and they pushed the um, local natives, which we call uh, these days uh, Dravidians, Dravidians Indians. So um, this is here. Yeah. I think uh, Sam was mentioning about uh, Modi, something to do with uh, plastic surgery, I think. Yeah, head transplant of the animal. Yeah, head, tra head transplant the many... of, uh, of, of uh, Ganpati, <laughs> Ganesh. Do you remember that? That's yeah. what he quoted, Modi. So Modi actually said that, oh, we invented... Uh, uh, plastic surgery long before you guys even heard about it, you know, like uh, when uh, Shiva cut off the head of his own son, Ganesh, and then he used, the, he cut off the head of the elephant, poor elephant, I don't know what he did, cuts his head off and he transplants it into his son. And presto, first plastic surgery. And on that note, uh, Modi, you know, reminds me of my chai, but I'm having Moroccan chai today. <laughs> I can share and there is you, one more uh, incident. Yeah, and there is one more incident apart from Ganesha incident. Uh, Vishnu head was also cut off, was chopped off with the bowstring, and later it was replaced with a uh, horse head. So with after that, that his name was called as horse, horse head, head okay. of a horse. Oh dear. So the god head was cut off with the bowstring, and later he was called as the higher griva. Okay. Means the head of so, the head of the horse. That, guys, those guys who are watching this, we are just not making this up. This is actually things that they have said, and this is in the scriptures as well. Yeah. Daniel, you want to share something? Yeah, you, not I even, have the article even, that talks even, about Modi and. Ah, there you go. Thing, just one thing. Just one thing. Not just in the scriptures, brother Hashim. Yes. There are serials. They are spending money on it. Yeah, they but they series. use the scriptures as yeah. the scripts, isn't it? Exactly. So there are series. They still believe this and they put uh, conveying this thing to these myths yeah. to their children. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, as We're proof, Narendra Modi gave examples of the warrior Karna from the Sanskrit epic, Mahabharata, and of the elephant headed Hindu god Ganesha. Yeah. I mean, this is, we, we didn't just make it up. It's, it's something that they actually. Mentioned this is a prime minister of India, you know, it's not just some ordinary chaiwala. <laughs> not only like plastic surgery, that they, they're talking about uh genetic science, you know, because they're genetically yeah. modifying <laughs> thousands of years ago. Uh, yeah, I mean, lots of technology, technology and it's as, unbelievable. As somebody wrote in the comments, uh, they didn't have the brains to invent the toilets. I mean, they still are suffering, they're still. <laughs> are defecating <laughs> on the train tracks in India, you know, many places. Uh, it's just appalling anyway. Um, so going back to the um, the topic at hand, uh, is there anything else you want to add, Amir Bhai? I think you wanted to say something earlier. No, I think I'm more into talking to, you know, serious callers. Let's, okay. let's Shall ask, we bring ask the... these questions to them. Let's see what they have to say. Yeah, we can. So unless somebody else has got, I'm going to invite the... The guests. So I'm giving uh, the first choice to the Hindus because, after all, this is a topic on Hinduism, and it would be unfair not to hear their side of the story and their side of the narrative, whatever it is that you want to bring on on the table here. Uh, we are open to have that discussion 
uh, with you directly face to face, inshallah. So I'm going to put out the link. Uh, first, as I said, first we'll be inviting the Hindus, and after that, uh, the Muslim uh, the Muslims can join in, inshallah. All right, so you'll find the link pinned to the comments, sorry, to the live, um, what do you call that? The live uh, chat. Uh, and yeah, please join in. Any Hindus out there who are watching live, you're welcome to join us and please present your case. Um, anything that we might have misrepresented, now is the time for you to correct that, inshallah. God willing. All right, until then, um, Oh, yeah, we've got some people already coming in, inshallah. Yeah, so ex-Hindu, you're a Muslim, so please try to join in later. Uh, we'll we'll invite the Muslims later, inshallah. Just make way for the Hindus at the beginning, okay? And for verification, we would like you to keep your camera on uh, before we let you on the... Before I stream. forget, I would like to I would like to thank you, uh, thanks to Daniel brother, to taking notice to, to this issue uh, regarding the Hindutva and the uh, RSS goons. That's really important, you know, to present to the international public. So what's going on in the um, India uh, with the Muslims, with the minorities in 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 general. So Alhamdulillah, thanks to brother Daniel and uh, Dawa Wise as well. Barakallah. You're welcome, brother. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Right, so if the Muslims can please leave for now and come back later when I call you guys, that'll be good, inshallah. Um, right, Hari Om, uh, do you want to just quickly switch on your camera for verification and then we'll bring you on. Make sure you switch it off again before we bring you on online. Yeah, I will not, yeah. Just for 30 seconds, 10 seconds. Yeah, that's fine. You can switch it off now. All right, so we got our first uh, guest here. I'm assuming he's a Hindu. He, oh, he came last time as well. How are you doing, Hari? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm right. What about you, sir? Okay, how are you today? You good? Yeah, with the grace of the God Almighty. Okay, it's good to have you back. Um, I don't know, have you been thank listening you, to the stream? So have you What's been that? listening? Have you been listening to the stream? Yeah, yeah, today. Yeah, today I have listened to the stream uh, from the beginning. Okay, that's good. Well, you got anything to add? Mm, I got that. Uh, one thing I just want to say uh, last time that Brother Amir had said that in India, uh, Muslims are targeted. No doubt, they are being targeted. No doubt, but it doesn't mean that Muslims are not doing anything else against the Hindus. And there are videos available even on the Insta. You can see that Muslims are also targeting Hindus. No, uh, even today. You no, will see, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Today. I'm sorry to interrupt you, brother. He, no, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you, brother. He said minorities. He didn't say just Muslims. He said minorities. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I am also saying that no doubt that minorities are targeted, but it doesn't mean that minorities do, do not target the majority. So you will not let me talk even here now, brother Hari. Just give me a. Second. Oh, you know this guy? Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. they, they, they don't want to come, you know, there. So, anyways, thanks to. Uh, okay, I rephrased myself. My last sentence was in general, religious minorities. You know. In general, that was my rephrased sent sentence. So now, thank you. Are you, brother? Did you hear the question, Hari? Hari, bye. Are you there? Okay. Uh, I don't know. Do you want to just make another point, maybe while he's I don't know checking his uh, microphone or something that happens actually yeah so we haven't muted him i think he's muted himself uh, uh hello yeah we can am i audible to you yeah go ahead yes 
Okay, sorry, B Hari, before you say something, I just want to tell the Muslims in the back chat, can you guys please stop joining? It's only the Hindus at the beginning. We'll call you in good time, inshallah. Okay, so please leave. Make space for the other Hindus to join in, and we'll call the Muslims later on, inshallah. Okay, Hari, carry on, yeah. Yeah, so uh, what should I have? You said that there is a question, but... Sorry, uh, Amir Bhai, you want to re repeat your point again, please? I think he didn't hear that. No, nah, it was just a mis misunderstanding. He hey, thought hey. I'm just saying that Muslims are, Muslims are, you know, getting the wrong treatment there um, in India. I said okay. religious minorities overall, in general. Yeah. Even Muslims yeah. are doing something wrong. I'm not going to endorse them. Okay. Obviously, so, so hurry, this topic here is about the, about the Hindu scriptures. So can we please stick to yeah. the topic? Yeah, thank you. Okay, no problem, sir. Right, so you have anything to say with regards to everything that we discussed so far on the stream? You said you were listening to the stream. Have you got anything to comment on or to add to what we said? Mm, I would like that. Uh, I would like to hear that question, you know, because I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not as great as you guys. So please repeat that. Please say the question. Okay. So let me ask you the first question. The basis of this stream is whether the Hindu scriptures are they preserved or they are not. They have been corrupted over time. What is your view and why do you think uh, that is the case? In my view, it is preserved. And why is that? Uh, why do you think that is that is preserved? On what basis? Uh, because there is uh, oral trans and transmission of it. And uh, and time to time that avatars also came to protect that. And uh, a third thing is that uh, we see from the uh, critic uh, what can I say critical no, sorry scriptural uh, what is a scriptural evidence like that from any other uh, from the foreign sources also. No, no. What, you said they were preserved. What is your evidence? You, you said it is orally transmitted. Just because something is orally transmitted doesn't automatically uh, imply that it is preserved. Uh, there are so many branches. And when we collect all together, we find that uh, they are almost the same. Which? What is the earliest manuscript you have, which makes you think it's the same? Uh, the earliest manuscript, 1464 AD. Uh, that is the earliest manuscript. Yeah, so that is only f less than 600 years old. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Your your scriptures are only about just over half a century? Uh, it doesn't mean that my scripture is over half a century because it is also mentioned by the foreign writers also. Uh, I have read so foreign... some of the uh, writers like Al-Biruni and uh, Abu Rehan Al-Biruni and uh, uh, Fahiyan. And uh, sorry, not Fayyan, I'm saying uh, Wen Sang. So, all these writers also mentioned about the Vedas. Yeah, but and what even does it in mean? the uh, Buddhist scripture, e even in the Buddhist yeah. scripture, we see uh, textual okay. evidence. We find the uh, find about the uh, Vedas uh, in uh, foreign sources. I mean, the textual evidence from the foreign sources of Vedas. Yeah, but you know, when you talk about these historians, they might have just made reference. Okay, they read the Vedas, for example. Yes, that still doesn't imply that the Vedas yeah. itself, the content within the Vedas is preserved. You see what I mean? Just just because mm. somebody says, yeah, okay, uh, I spoke to Hari, that doesn't imply that mm. everybody knows your entire biography. You see what I mean? Making a reference but, but, to something but, is just that it existed. Okay, that's fine. Okay, but how long did they exist for? What was the language it was written in? What part of the Vedas, what does it teach us? Whether it's been preserved? Uh, who wrote it? Uh, who compiled it? All these things, you know, lots of questions come in. So how can you say something is preserved uh, just because you think it was orally transmitted or there's a reference by a historian? But... Uh, uh... How can one say that if you are finding anything archaeologically 1400 years old, it, may, it will convey that it is not older than that. Likewise, uh, 
we do not find the evidence of the first man on the uh, earth so we do yeah, not find uh, we cannot say that see, who was the first yeah archaeologically yeah. you are doing a what about ray now let's stick to the vedas if you if you claim that they are preserved then the onus is on you to provide yes. the evidence right so where is the evidence show us hmm? you already you already admitted it is the earliest manuscript is 1464 ce that's only 529 yes. years ago okay yeah. so how can you say something that is less than 600 years uh, and then there are other other hindus who claim it is thousands of years old are they wrong yeah but they are wrong okay let's leave it there samba you want to add something yes uh, brother hari you have uh, spoken about uh, al buruni al buruni was a a, a a historian and he was a traveler he traveled to india and he has mentioned in his book that vedas used to be memorized but he did not say how they have been preserved till now till date and there is one more one more traveler by name uh, let me tell you he is a buddhist he 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 uh, he accepted buddhism later uh, and he has written a book the book name is india and the malay archipelago and the the traveler's name is it singh so he has said in his book the scriptures the vedas were were, were revised and there were four vedas containing about 100000 verses at that time but right now we have only 21000 verses so the even the travelers knew that the original vedas consisted of 100000 verses the same thing was uh, said by swami vivekananda in his uh, speech and the book the complete work uh, complete works of swami vivekananda volume 9 he said the same thing the original vedas consisted of 100000 verses the same message has been repeated in uh, vishnu purana as well this is the scripture forget about the the traveler forget about the scholar but your own scripture says that the original vedas consisted of uh, 100000 verses later it has it has been cut down to, to 21000 verses right now what do you have to say about this hari bhai hari bhai please un- unmute your mic brother kya kahiyega hari bhai yeah i i have unmuted him so Yo. Okay. You you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, hurry, go on. Am I audible to you? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Am I audible to you or not? Yes. Yes, yes, sir. We yeah. can hear you. Oh, yeah. I was saying that uh, uh, you have said uh, Al Biruni didn't mention that. Al Biruni mentioned that. they were memorizing it and still they say that they are memorizing it and it is in the sruti parampara but the, he is saying that the uh, one uh, uh, he mentioned a guy uh, i forgot his name because i have mentioned the name of that guy sukra uh, something like sukra or something he just uh, uh, started uh, he was from kashmir and he started first time to write the vedas not down the Ved- vedas in the manuscript i mean in the page on the pages uh, so uh, firstly he mentioned that this is the first guy vasukra vasukra his name is vasukra and he uh, he wrote uh, for the first time in in his time in his time uh, on the copy and second thing is that you are saying that vedas have one lakh verses the mentioned by uh, it singh yeah you are right still it has one lakh verses you know only uh, when it is said that 21000 verses in vedas it is only mentioned about the mantra samhita mantra samhita has 21000 verses you know but when we uh, count it from the brihati chand so when we are taking every chand each and every meters in one parameter that is brihati chand and it is still in the 24000 format the mantra samhita and remaining all those the uh, we have the we have the upanayan we uh, we are the sacred thread it has four uh, thread and it means that 24 uh, 24 into 5 96000 verses and there 96000 verses are the Uh, explanation commentary of vedas and other portion of the vedas and fourth version that is the aranyakas so all these collectively you um, enjoy it you will find that there are there are the one lakh verses still in the vedas preserved to, still today okay let me quote you one reference brother thank you okay, complete okay. works of swami vivekananda volume 9 listen to this brother some of you know that the vedas are divided into four parts one is called the rig veda other one is yajur veda and another one is sam veda and the fourth is atharva veda 
each of this again were divided into into many branches for instance the sama veda has so 100 branches 1000 branches of which only 5 or 6 remains the sama veda has 1000 branches out of that only today 5 or 6 remains the rest of all are lost so with the other the rig veda has 108 branches of which only one remains and rest of all are lost these are the words of swami vivekananda why is he saying that these things are lost they had the branches but now they have got reduced to five or six or one branch and the rest of all branches has been lost so it's a clear branches evidence that are... the major part of the sorry yeah that Please is what ahead. i am going to say uh, uh, sorry brother i just interrupted uh, forgive me for that i was just saying um, that uh, when he is mentioning about the branches the branches you must know that branches just are the explanation or just uh, you uh, of the vedas and uh, it contains some uh, brahmanas the explanation and sometimes it contains the replacing of the words to uh, make the disciple understood the meaning of some proper mantras that is very difficult to them so when he says that the branches are lost that doesn't mean that vedas are lost the mool vedas the uh, adi vedas or the mool vedas are the mantra samhita that is said to be the mother of the all uh, scriptures in our religion we say that veda mata so that are the mantra samhita portion is the mool veda and others are explanation they are also inside from the god but the mool is that uh, given by the god that, that revealed by the god to the four devas or say four rishis in their soul and we know that agni vayu ravi etc they, uh, and angira were the four rishis so this is what the 24000 bihat chandi vedas the mool um, 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 samhita these these are just the uh, uh, what um, mool vedas and they are still preserved today brother brother hari i got okay, you okay let me let me no, let me tell you yeah let me tell you one straight straight statement from uh, sorry sorry amir bhai let me no, let sure. me give you a straight statement from uh, uh, swami vivekananda uh, in the same volume number 9 he says almost the large portion of the vedas has been lost this is the straight clear cut statement from swami vivekananda and he gives and he gives uh, why why he says this the priest who carried carried it down to the prosperity were divided into so many families accordingly and they preserved it and performed all the ceremonies according to that in course of time some of these families become extinct in uh, and with them the largest portion of the vedas has been lost he is yes, said that is what i am saying about uh, are you getting me when yes. someone says please go ahead someone says when someone says there is something lost what do you mean by that what do you understand that's you know a strange logic like you are saying there is a hen with one leg and you and i am telling you that there is that there is one leg missing and you are saying a uh, hen has to you know there, there has to be one leg we have seen yeah there has, they have two legs okay so this is a simple logic if someone is saying there is something lost that means it you know there is something lost there is something reduced the original one uh, the original one is not in its original form that's a simple thing okay the second thing is that was a simple logic the second thing is you are saying that these the these mantras which are present or which are available in the vedas those are the real uh, mantras okay brother hari that's what you are saying right yeah yeah okay give us some praman from a rishi from a genuine rishi that these are not from the lost one and give me from the shastra um uh, yeah Uh, I am. I, 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 I will give you a bit of while. Uh, there is uh, one verse from Sattva Brahman no, 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 which no, mentions no, that. Uh, no, brother, 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 you are claiming right now. I need yeah. evidence right now. Not a bit while. The topic will be changed then. So you are claiming these mantras available now in the book. Those are the real Vedas. Yeah. So give me some evidence. Yeah. Simple. uh i i am not saying that uh, i am not memorizing that you will have to give me at least 2 minute to 2 to 3 minute or maybe 5 minute because i have to find out that verse uh, that is uh, screen shots uh, so it's that okay. i that's, can prove that's fine that's fine yeah. take your time i'm going to bring in zatos uh, while you're doing that uh, 
I don't think Zatos is a Hindu, if I remember correctly, but he probably might have some point to make. Zatos, can you hear us? You need to unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. How are you doing? You all right? Uh, yeah, I'm Okay. So uh, it has just been like uh, ten minutes. I joined the stream, so I did not watch okay. the whole thing, but uh, I did get that. It's all about the Vedas. It's like about the preservation of the Vedas. It's a preservation about, of the, the Vedas. Yeah. So uh, what we're right. discussing is the the preservation of the Hindu scriptures. Are they preserved or have they been corrupted over the years? That is what it is. Yes. Well, uh, I I don't have much knowledge on this topic, but uh, one thing I can say that uh, uh, I think so. And uh, uh, sorry, sorry. One uh, archaeologist, I guess he's an archaeologist or a historian, who claimed that the Vedas are like the uh, recording which could be heard like five thousand years ago. Exactly, I, I forgot the name of the person. Uh, he's uh, he's a general one. I mean, like uh, a recognized person. Just the name, I'm not able to get the name. Uh, you can Google it on the net. Maybe you can get it. Sorry, can you repeat the point again? I missed it. What was it again? Like uh, he said that uh, he said somewhat like that that the Vedas are like the uh, recordings uh, uh, which could be heard five thousand years ago. I mean, like the, which uh, mentions or it is applying. He was applying that is the Vedas are quite preserved, comparing it to the past. Yeah, but I mean, like claim. the oral traditions. That's yeah, a that's claim. a claim. And where's the proof? And I guess so. I guess so. He has put the evidence as well. I don't exactly remember it, but I uh, read somewhere. Yeah, but that's a waste of our time. If you're just making a claim, then it's neither here nor there. You know what I mean? Anybody can make any claim. Yeah, that doesn't make it true, does it? For for yeah. a claim, you need to substantiate it with evidence for it to be valid. Otherwise, it just remains uh, a claim, you know. Anyone can say I'm the world's strongest man. Okay, what's your proof? What's your evidence? You know. Yeah, yeah. I believe right. that you should bring someone who is quite knowledgeable in this field. So okay. you said yeah, it. We bring, in, we bring in Swati. <laughs> I I guess. <laughs> <guess. laughs> I mean, a uh, Hindu doing, right? who is well aware of this. Well, Malikum and also I read some. She's and also, around. I guess, so somewhere in UNESCO report, uh, it says that the Vedas are uh, well preserved. If we look by the oral oral traditions and that stuff, right? I just want to bring something here. All familiar, you know, friends here: Hari Om Tatsad and Zatos. Uh, before that, Assalamu Alaikum uh, to all the panelists here. Uh, initially, you had oh, said, you know, there was this. Uh, there was this particular aspect which had come up with regard to uh, whether uh, had it been an oral tradition or was it, you know, was it a written one? And most of the times when they say that this is an oral, um, uh, like uh, this is maybe this is an oral tradition. Uh, first of all, if it's an oral tradition, it can't get lost. And it's not an oral tradition because we do see there is in Skan Puran. Uh, a narration which has been given. I think Sam was also talking about that. Maybe I hadn't heard the entire stream, but there was this uh, narration which was mentioned in Skan Puran where it was said that it, this is about Hayagriva, which I think he was mentioning about. And Hayagriva, he was like a horse headed Asura and he stole the four Vedas, you know, which is supposedly the book of wisdom. So he stole that and he became invincible and you know the entire anarchy prevailed all over the world so in that situation then vishnu came you know he he came into it and uh, you know and he then he took the horse head with the help of brahma and other devs which were there and he engaged with hayagriva in that very very futile duel and that resulted in then uh, you know, the latter's death. So then the Vedas were recovered and then they were stored, restored. So that that clearly shows that um, it was not, it's not, it's not just about the oral tradition. Definitely, you know, when they're saying somebody can steal it, it's mentioned in the Skan Puran also. So that means it's a written one. So that's first point, which I really wanted to bring in. Secondly, uh, you know, with respect to this entire, I was uh, hearing Brother Daniel's, you know, uh, initial uh, research, which was very, mashallah, wonderful, with respect to the, the survey which was done, you know, regarding uh, people in terms of Hinduism, 
people not caring about the scripture and you know with regard to preservation corruption etc they don't bother about it so much that's precisely because you know and we see so many guests who say that that you know we we don't we don't it, we don't mind about this thing the it, what's the fuss and you and cry about preservation all about so what i see is you know the uh, I, and i think brother hashim you had done a stream also with rami seven who is who's a very famous dharm teacher in fact he's a government advisor he's a counselor and government advisor till present date so you know it's been it, the entire thing here the pundits the swamis the dharm teachers they themselves are saying the very fact that don't believe in the scriptures i mean you should not you should not even worry about the very fact whether they're preserved or not just use your reason just use your empirical evidence and uh, that's that's and which which is something which they call darshan all the time you know they use this word darshan so they say don't bother about whether they are preserved or not all these scriptures which are there the shastra which are there they say these are they admit and say that this is authored by human beings they are you know humans through the mental tools and through the general knowledge which was available to them they have in fact uh, you know authored it and when it comes to god the entire debate about it uh, you know they say it it said that those people who say that these scriptures come from god they say it's it's absolutely irrational and it's impossible without any evidence that's the reason by the entire hinduism you know we see so many people saying constantly bringing this fact that anuman and pratyaksh these are the primary sources of knowledge for them that means anuman meaning reason and pratyaksh meaning evidence and this is this is something which is very very important for the material world and the and any scriptural statement which is called shabd any scriptural statement if contradicts the fact and reason then it can easily be rejected we can even in, reinterpret that so that, and that's the entire and which is and which is why you know they they have entire darshan the philosophy of it where they say rational argument tark and nyay the rigorous logic that's something which on which they base it so the entire you know the theme of this particular live stream which is about hinduism the texts of hinduism whether they are preserved whether they are you know corrupted or not the, why would it not now there is inconsistency within that this is one school of thought with pandits and you know with other scholars who are saying about this fact but when you go through the scripture itself and you know when you so and that that's something which upanishad also says very very clearly that you know it says that grantham abhyasya medhavi gyanam vigyan tat parah palalam ev dhanyarthi twajet grantham astate meaning having studied the scripture the wise one should just pursue the knowledge uh, through the meditation and you see rohan saxena constantly talking about meditation so it says that you pursue it through meditation and then you discard all the you know all these uh, texts etc the scriptures just like you discard the shafts so uh, from the grain just like that you discard that now that's one school of thought which take it like a prop like a crutch so you know many of the hindus would not even bother whether it is preserved whether it is not whether it's corrupted whether it's not the way we see you know like for example uh, hari om our friend and that the one saying however my question you know coming from this particular religion is that the same te- same particular text you know what we find is the problem is not about preservation or corruption the problem is about the inconsistency which is present within this so bhagavad gita for example would say as we all you know we know it chapter 16 verse 24 very very clearly it says that the let the scriptures be your authority in determining what should be done what should not be done now upanishad there i had quoted was saying that discard it like you discard the chaff from the grain here the bhagavad gita is saying this manusmriti again would say the same thing where it would say in fact it would go to the extent of saying in chapter 4 verse 30 where it says that he shall not honor even with speech who shall not be honored the impostor somebody who follows a improper occupation somebody who have, who have cat like behavior hypocrites and logicians so log- now here logicians are being discarded upanishad it was saying that use your in fact you have the entire nyay nyay philosophy which is based on this tark which is based on this and one thing more you know which comes out to be so these are these this is the inconsistency which is there within the text itself and secondly very very uh, another very important aspect is the bhagavad gita which is of course the epic 
uh, and lot of people you know believe would would subscribe to that krishna being you know avatar of vishnu or vice versa now here what we find is that bhagavad gita chapter 2 verse 42 and 43 says yamimam pushpitam vacham pravadantya vapishchit ved var ved vadrata partha nanya dastiti vadinah kamatman swarg para janma karma phal pradam kriya vishesh bahulam bhogeshwar gati prati meaning basically what they are saying is those with very limited understanding they get attracted to the flowery words of vedas which which and what is veda advocating just very ostentatious rituals for elevation to celestial abodes it has no higher principle which is which is present within them they and you know and they glorify only those portions of veda which please the senses so this itself is saying that veda is just about pompous rituals it's all about ceremonies etc nothing more and it's and the irony is it says that if you really want to have the salvation which is so very dear to all the hindus most of them would say yeah we want to go in for moksha the bhagavad gita chapter 7 verse 23 says that men of small intelligence are the ones who worship demigod and their fruits are very limited very temporary and the those who worship these demigods and these demigods are mind you present within the vedas they are all talking about the natural elements indra and you know agni vayu etc so those who worship this they go to the planets of demigod but he says that my devotee that is krishna's devotee they ultimately reach that param dham the supreme planet which is mentioned in bhagavad gita chapter 7 verse 23 so the important aspect to understand is that we'll never be able to decipher this because of the precise inconsistency which is present i mean what are we talking which scripture are we taking to be sacred which is preserved or not the 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 puranas itself is saying that vedas are nothing you know the epic within that bhagavad gita within that is saying that epic is nothing it is uh, the vedas are nothing it is just flowery you know flowery language which is used uh, just for your material gains so you should not if you really want salvation just discard that and come to me you know follow me follow who krishna so 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 this kind of inconsistency which is present within the text where one is contradicting the other that's the reason why you know in that entire data research we find that there is no clear cut answer and nobody would therefore you know bother about in, bother about it whether they want to worship or not because the text in itself is laying out so many different things and that's why now i want to ask that why would then shruti or vedas you know vedas coming with within the shruti classification why would vedas hold such authority then when on the other hand vishnu's incarnation krishna who is an extrapolation of brahman is saying himself in gita that vedas are nothing but just the flowery language which has been which has been presented and those people who do that they'll just go to the realm of demigods they'll not achieve the salvation or the moksha so this kind of inconsistency which is present is the reason why we, we never get you know a consistent answer that's precisely the reason why whether it's preserved or not doesn't matter to anybody within hindu religion all right thank you sister swati uh was that uh sorry i don't know hurry were you able to get the reference you were trying earlier yeah 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 i have gathered uh, it is satpat brahman das char do uh, sorry 10 4 2 uh, uh, 23 and 24 number words can you share can you share the link brother hari uh, so uh, how, how how should i share it uh, uh, in the private chat because i am in uh, just copy paste, paste private, private, private chat, chat. okay oh. Thank you. I have in uh, PDF. Uh, brother Sam Stolen can uh, search it on Google. I request you, brother. It would be better. Just... It would be. Right. Yeah, it would be better if you send us the link, brother. We all can yeah, just copy paste it in the. I in don't. The I, I, share it. Uh, I have one uh, screenshot, not PDF. Uh, 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 oh, I will. Listen, listen, uh, listen, yeah. listen, brother. Hari, okay. I was about. Just... I was about to search it, but I was saving time. So just share the link. Okay. Screenshots. I don't know how to get the screenshot. I want to open it in the, the link in the side. So let's see what it has. Okay, to okay. I will try. I will try. Yeah. Brother Daniel, uh, you've been quite uh, wondering if you want to add something, inshallah. 
Can no, I, I've just can been I send listening. it to the private? Uh, Sam, brother Sam, can I send it to your uh, Insta? Oh, that is that is okay. You can try it. maybe. <laughs> that. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, one more bet, thing bet, that uh, better discuss, you send, yeah. better you send, better you send the link, brother, if, if possible, uh, in the comment section in the private chat, or uh, please you can. Even, otherwise, you can read it out the words. Uh, yeah, I am not getting the link. That's why I'm saying. I've tried. Uh, uh, okay, that's fine. Just just read it. Just read it. It saves us all time. Read it. Yeah, it is uh, yeah. Satpat Brahman 10.4.2. Uh, yeah, it is Satpat Brahman chapter 10, uh, 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 10.4.2.23 and 24. Satpat Brahman. Okay, what it says? 10. It says that uh, when you calculate the uh, verses of all the four Vedas, it uh, in the Brihati Chan, it uh, um, it mentions that all the verses in each Vedas, and when you calculate that, it uh, come uh, to twenty four thousand verses in the Brihati Chan. Just, Can you read up the verse, the, please? Just for the record, uh, Hari has already said that. Yeah. The Vedas, the manuscripts are the oldest ones are 1464 CE, uh, which is like just under 600 years old. Um, and anyone who says they are older than that, they're wrong. Uh, is that right, Hari? That's what you said earlier. Uh, I said that the Rig Veda is 1464 AD and the uh, Yajur Veda is uh, 1050 or 1150 AD. Okay. Um, and do you have, yeah. do you know where these manuscripts are for the Yajur Veda? Uh, it is uh, of, uh, you know, uh, Harvard University, there is one uh, very famous man, I forgot his name. Who is that? Okay, okay. Uh, 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 Brother Hari, the, the Shatpat Parham you quoted, which, what's, what's the total of these verses, of the, those mantras? Well, uh, 24,000. If you all calculate that, it uh, comes to 24,000. 24, so 10.2. And what yeah. do you send? 24,000 or 21,000? Uh, no, no. I said 24,000 in Brihati Chand, in a particular okay. Chand. Yeah, because Vedas have many Chandas. But when you bring it in on, on in one Chanda, in a special Brihati Chanda, it comes to 24,000. 24,000. And what uh, Swami Vivekananda said, Brother Sam? Yeah, he said that uh, uh, there were actually 1, 100,000 verses and the major part of the Vedas has been lost. 80% actually in total, 79 to be accurate. 79% of the Vedas has been lost. Hmm. I will reach he Right now we are having 21, 21 plus 1,000 verses. 21 uh, plus 1,000. Are, are you saying that, are you saying that uh, Swami, Viveka, Swami Vivekananda doesn't know what you're talking about? I am not saying that he didn't. I am. I am saying that he. Uh, who says that he will always be correct? He. Uh, no. He clearly said. He clearly said that almost the largest portion portion of the Vedas has been lost. These are uh, his he, clear yeah, statements. Because, what do you understand I, I, with the lost? When he uh, mentioned that statement, I came across brother that he is saying about yes, you can. Uh, the portion. Uh, yeah, the portion that he is mentioning about. The branches of the Vedas. The branches of the Vedas are lost, yes. uh, lost because it is, it, it, it is uh, you know, the explanation of Mantra Samhita. And f first thing, second thing, when he is saying that only 21,000 verses, he is wrong. You know why? Because uh, the Sankrachar uh, uh, explained that, that 21,000 verses uh, are still preserved and four times in the Brihati Chan, 24, and when you calculate it to the four times, the Brahmans, the R and the Upanishad, all these uh, uh, get closer to 96,000. And 4,000 is the Aranyakas when you visit uh, the forest. Okay. So it, it uh, calculates okay. all uh, to 1 lakh verses still. That's Ruti. Uh, yeah. Okay. According to Swami Vivekananda, when he says the largest portion of the Vedas has been lost, do you consider those portions to be the part of Vedas? 
they are not the part of the vedas they are the branches they are the explanation of the vedas that is what i want to say uh, um, let me explain you uh, that there are uh, four school of philosophies in your religion as far as i know four or six four i think yeah humbly and feel so, uh, so just, a, just a minute sorry yeah. sorry sorry yeah. sorry sorry to interrupt you brother sorry you were saying those were the explanations of the vedas you mean the commentaries right yeah the co- yeah the commentaries and also the verses that were uh, um, uh, what realized by the um, rishis in their meditative form or they have explained to their disciple all these are uh, mixed up in that commentaries no and- no yeah no the swami vivekananda specifically saying about the verses see this see this thing yeah, uh, they, this priests were carried out in in down the prosperity were divided into so many families accordingly the vedas were divided into so many parts each part was allotted to the family like the part of vedas like rig veda sama veda atharva veda yajur veda even in gurukul four vedas are complete uh, the four veda cannot be memorized by one person so every person uh, will be uh, memorizing one part of veda another person will be uh, memorizing the other part of it, veda so you would not be finding the the four veda gyani or the hafiz of four veda in today world so he is saying the same thing the family who used to memorize the veda they divided themselves uh, into parts of vedas and each family was allotted the different vedas uh, the the rituals the ceremonies the custom the worship of the family were to be obtained from the uh, uh, the portion of the vedas they preserved it performed all the ceremonies according to that so ceremonies are performed through the verses of uh, vedas not with the commentaries make sense if you are performing mm-hmm. any ritual if you are performing any any house ceremony or marriage ceremony the vedas verses will be chanted right so vivekananda yeah. is pointing out at rituals so these ceremonies were held uh, in, in the in the light of vedas and these portion of the vedas has been lost and those family few families among among those group uh, who used to memorize the vedas they become extinct so that's why he's saying the major part of the vedas has been lost so he's particularly talking about the verses not about the commentary uh, and this the also fact is that he is uh, not the yeah uh, uh and also uh, you know hari om our friend this also gets substantiated uh, if you see patanjali uh, there you know uh, the commentary on vartika there also it's been mentioned how when we talk about the entire vedic corpus which is there only 10 you know like 10 7 to 10% of that original vedas is left with us he mentions very clearly there that that rigveda had 21 dissensions yajur veda had 100 samveda had 1000 and arthveda had 9 this is original one uh, so to say and now what remains is only one complete recension of rigveda he calls it a shakala and five of yajur veda and three of samveda right. and two of atharveda so that means hardly like just 7 to 10% is something which is uh, which is which is remaining and this is this is mentioned in patanjali in his commentary on vartika uh, where he says sarve deshantare and this is in his mahabhashya uh, book 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 1 to 5 there it's been mentioned i think minimum minimum we, what we can get is according to swami vivekananda we have 21000 mantras and according to hari om and shatpat brahman 24000 so still we need 3000 mantras they are missing thank you brother hari uh yeah so just wanted that to ask that i am uh, saying that is uh, swami vivekananda the only one who says that the vedas are lost or is there any other some um, le- uh, brother setus i just want to answer by my beloved brother amir is very respected and uh, i just watch his, uh, him sometime and we talk with each other so i just want to say that i am saying brother in the brihad chan i am not saying when you are saying that 21000 verses in the vedas it means that there are de- different types of chan gayatri chan brihad chan that's yeah. what no, vivekananda uh, said not me yeah, uh, yeah vivekananda uh, vivekan swami vivekananda ji said that uh, in from the uh, all um, he is mixing all chan that uh, as natural we have but i am saying from the brihad chand chand when you when they say when they uh, call vedas as chand that means they are calling a vedas as a whole chand you are including in upanishad as well 
ओनली छंद मीन्स वेदास बट वेन आई एम सींग बृहद छंद और गायत्री छंद इट डजेंट मीन दैट द ऑल द वेदास इज रेफरिंग टू हियर वी आर रेफरिंग द मीटर्स देर आर अ लॉर्ड्स ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मीटर इन इच वेदास but when i am saying that all the verses of vedas is counted in 1 meter that is brihad chand then it reaches to 24000 verses that is what i am saying brother thank you okay okay okay, okay. I, i i i have a simple question okay tell me where are those lost verses which you think are according to you another part of not the part of the vedas where are they right now in which book there is no uh, the, in the mantra samhita is not the lost part the branches the recension that you are saying it is different of the uh, description of the vedas them, uh, brother yeah. hari brother hari whatever you call them where are they are they available in some other book not in the vedas right but, now but in some other book no because they were the especially they were the explanation and the pad pad part of the particular family and or the particular no, tradition no brother the question uh, hariyam that sir the question basically is when you are saying that it's lost so the question is it's lost to where like it's where is it is it is does it exist or or lost in air where is it like that's been asked you were telling me that you were telling me that those are the explanations i got it those are the explanation not part of the original veda but where are they that's my question where are they right yeah. now uh, they simply lost uh, because they belongs to the that description belongs to the particular family or the particular gurukul they lost so the explanation so and many explanation are also present here yeah so basically you say, you you're trying to say that with the death of the entire family extension of the family it got totally lost so uh, so yeah. are you saying not that totally so, that yeah yeah oh, but then sorry, but sister, so, so yeah yeah so i i'm just asking i mean what is this uh, i'm trying to understand is it is it oral tradition is it written one how does because if it's a written one it should not get lost if it's a oral one and we had i just the way i had just mentioned here uh, which was present in skand puran that it was a written one because there was this entire you know fight which was there to preserve and it had got stolen and all that so that shows from the text that this is a this is a written one you know uh, uh, what you're saying is that they got lost you know that they got lost over the period of time what the is it the oral tradition is it a written tradition what exactly is it because had it been written it should have been preserved somewhere even if it's been passed from one family to another it should be you there know, somewhere you know, no you know, some record a, should a, be there you know that's a strange thing that the, the preserved one is preserved because of the oral tradition and the lost one is lost because of the oral tradition what's happening here exactly and my like, problem Yeah, please uh, go ahead. You wanted to say something. Yeah, first thing is that the family uh, who were carrying that those padpathas and those explanation they were extinct. And uh, when you say that, uh, why there is no? Need? It may be there is uh, lots of chances. We see that uh, uh, you know uh, in your uh, terms that azab ilahi. Like there's something the natural disaster. The whole family died, or the whole group of people oh, might have died, and that extinct. First thing. Second thing. When you are saying, my dear sister. that uh, when it is mentioned that um, mention about uh, in iskand purana hai grieve yeah yeah uh, it is mentioned that hai grieve avatar took place in the last kalpa last manvantar it was the sixth manvantar not the seventh now it is going on the vaivaspat manvantar the seventh kalpa and he came to the sixth and it is mentioned that in our scripture the god gives us in the beginning of the kal- kalpa to the rishis and at the end of kalpa he took it and it is mentioned that in the high grieve avatar took place at the end of the kalpa at the end of kalpa it, so, so there is chance uh, uh, now it is uh, the last kaliyuga as i uh, as uh, our scholar says that it is the last kaliyuga so, 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 uh, so basically you mean in, to say that this entire narration which is there in skand puran you are trying to say that this is the last kalpa which is going on and what has been mentioned in skand puran which has finished yeah which yeah. that has finished So is it so? What is mentioned in Skand Puran? Is it is is it about past or is it a prediction about future? What are you trying? No, to, is, I'm not getting what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah Hagrid Avatar uh, 
came in the last in the last kalpa sixth kalpa uh, it was the end of that kalpa and now and see, yeah, now so we yeah, see that i get that this, i get that so that means so that means but it still says no it still says that he stole the four vedas book of you know the, this entire book of wisdom he stole and then vishnu fought with him and then you know he with the help of the other devas and brahma and then uh, you know in that entire fatal duel which resulted in his death then he restored it so if you're saying that this happened so so when it was restored after getting restored how did it again get how did it again get you know how, how is it lost again then uh when it was the uh, as we see in this kali yuga it is the end of this kalpa so we see that the vedas in the written form also uh, thousand year before 1500 years there was no written form but now so as in the last kalpa uh, it was the end of the kalpa so it was in the written form so they when they um, uh, but in the written form all the... yeah but in the written form all four vedas kan puran says all four vedas were there all four of them were there in its entirety which was which was then stolen and then which was then restored but here what we are finding is that not all four we hardly even have 7 to 10% of that so i'm not i mean this is like an inconsistency which is which i'm finding finding in this and let me let uh, me let me quote one more clear verse let me quote one more one more verse hari bhai uh, that w- that will help help you out brother it's very simple atharva veda bhashya this is done by arya samaji author name is professor vishwanath vidyalankar volume 3 page number 742 let me read out the hindi words what what's written clearly and i will translate it so it says this is the kuntap sukh dialogue it says from uh, uh, chapter 127 to 136 sunta uh, uh, sukt uh, tak kuntap sukt hai ye sukt kil hai kil means interpolated arthat prakshit hai महर्षि दयानंद ने इन्हें प्रक्षित माना है अर्थात मिलावट माना है मीन्स दीज चैप्टर्स फ्रॉम 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 द बुक ट्वेंटी चैप्टर चैप्टर नंबर वन ट्वेंटी सेवन टू वन थर्टी सिक्स ऑफ अथर्वा वेदा दीज आर इंटरपोलेटेड चैप्टर्स अकॉर्डिंग टू दयानंद सरस्वती ही ऑल्सो कन्फर्म्स दिस हैज बीन लेटर एडेड एडेड चैप्टर्स इन टू अथर्वा वेदा इवन इवन द द रामी द स्वामी रामी he also said that uh, atharva veda has been uh, interpolated to the uh, uh, many times and it, it has been corrupted to its core so atharva veda is a, is the addition uh, to the three vedas alhamdulillah so the, the also, yeah go ahead yeah please carry on sister okay so what i want to uh, like this now uh, you know something which i need to get clarity about is this is the empirical evidence that we are talking about you know that that okay we are not able to find this i am also a little boggled about the entire conceptual aspect of this as i had mentioned because there's there's lot of contradiction with regard to the empirical evidence you are saying um, uh, haryam tat said that you know that this is this was there in the previous kalp you said that this had happened and i'm i'm asking that it did happen whatever it was it did happen and it was restored after the fight so today where is it um so that's one question which you know we are not able to resolve and second is about this entire conceptual narrative that we are dealing with which is about the fact which i had uh, you know said also that see you you do you do understand you had said in the previous stream you believe in brahman okay and yeah we also understand that brahman brahman had in, you know extrapolated in form of uh, brahma vishnu and mahesh and vishnu's uh, you know further avatar or incarnation is krishna the same krishna in one of your very important text of bhagavad gita from mahabharat which is one of the fifth vedas is saying himself very very blatantly that in in his bhagavad gita chapter 2 verse 42 and 43 that you know this entire first over vedas that we are having he is saying something totally different he is saying that men of small knowledge are the ones who are attached to these flowery words of vedas and he's saying that it's totally you know it, it, it and he says it's 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 redundant in bringing moksha to you he says that if you really want moksha if you really want salvation you know you need to you need to come to me you through vedas people of small intelligence are the ones 
you know, who who get attached to Vedas and they get, get attached to demigods. And, and that's why their fruits, what they get is also very limited. It is also very temporary. So now I want to ask, why do we then even fuss over Vedas when it's of no importance? And when Vishnu, Vishnu's avatar Krishna himself is saying that people who just subscribe to Vedas, they are of uh, they are of low intelligence and you know they are of they are of small knowledge and they will never get moksha until they come to me. So so what do you have to say about that entire thing? Because and you know from from that the question arises if that's the position of Vedas, if that's the place and designation of Vedas, that people of small intelligence and knowledge read that, then why is it placed in Shruti tradition? Why is it placed in Shruti classification, which is supposedly the authoritative text? How did then Veda become an authoritative text when it is said by Brahman's uh, incarnation Vishnu, Brahman's extension, Vishnu's extension, uh, Krishna, that people of small knowledge are the ones who subscribe to that, who go towards that, and they will never achieve salvation. Right. Can I quickly ask a question to Hari about the origin of the Vedas and where, the, where does he think the Vedas came from? Hari? Hmm. Uh, yeah. As for those viewers who are asking to bring others in, we don't have any other Hindus uh, who have joined other than Hari and obviously King Ravan, who is a different, obviously, um, different kind of Hindu. I, so, I, can, I, can go, I can go backstage if... No, no, no. It's not that we don't have room. We have room, but the Hindus are not coming okay. forward. Okay. 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 Thank you. So we have to do with uh, what's available, inshallah. Mm -hmm. So Hariba, you're in the, let's say you're you're in the center right now. <laughs> okay. so what, do you, what do you think about the origin? I mean, what's your view about the origin of the Vedas? Where did they come from? Yeah. Safeguarding Hinduism uh, is on your shoulders now, Hariba. Hari yeah. Big responsibility. No problem. Uh, as I have read, uh, so I found that the Vedas uh, were revealed in the soul of the four rishis, and uh, or um, by the Brahma or Brahma. So, since God is the knower of the four Vedas, so He is also known as the Brahma. So, those who ever memorize the four Vedas, so this is one of the uh, you know, Lakab. This is one of the Lakab. Where did the four rishis get it from? They got it from Brahma? Uh, from the God. And it is mentioned in the Brihad Aranyak Upanishad. So how the uh, how it was re uh, given to, the, uh, to them and how they just uh, uh, transferred it from uh, uh, chain uh, means chain of transmission. Uh, some parts of chain of transmission is mentioned there. Okay, so if that is the case, then if it came, you you believe it came. Brahma is a god, right? According to you. Uh, yes. Yeah. So if God revealed it to these rishis, then and the rishis obviously transmitted. But how it was all in oral form, not in written. Form. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it, even if it's in oral form. The question, the question still remains, is it preserved over the years since it was revealed to these rishis? Was the message preserved? Yes, as per the scripture, it is preserved. Okay, I'll give you a passage from Rig Veda. This is number 10.129. And it says something like this. Gods came afterwards with the creation of this universe. Who then knows when it was arising, whether God's will create, whether God's will created it, or whether He was mute? Perhaps it formed itself, or perhaps it did not. Only He, who is its overseer in highest heaven, knows. Only He knows, or perhaps He does not even know. Do you think this is something from the Rig Veda, or is it been has been transmitted correctly? Does God yeah, not know I, his own creation? Do the do the people it, who preserve this text don't know that God created this creation, or whether God doesn't even know Himself? That's the kind of message I'm getting from this. Uh, no, the, uh, it is mentioned in uh, the same Vedas uh, that uh, it is from the God. When it is said that whether it is or whether it did not, 
so uh, it is you know uh, it was a rhetorical question and just answered but uh, no uh, uh, there is no fully answer given here but in the same rigveda it is uh, fully mentioned that uh, it was given to the uh, so it was created the universe is created by the god so uh, if you open the in this particular passage it's saying it's not certain whether god created it or not or even god doesn't know it is yeah. not so uh, it is uh, it is a little bit different uh, if you give me time because uh, you know um, uh, to explain this verse i am finding is difficult because i am not so much a learned person but uh, i will uh, ask it from my guru and i will answer you on the next stream or i will answer you in the email uh, uh, but whatever i know that it is just like the rhetorical question and he is that, answering god uh, maybe yeah in a in a rhetorical question okay you wouldn't say uh, only god knows but maybe even he doesn't know you see that's not rhetorical that's more like a it's it's uncertainty uh i request you to open 8.70.5 of rigveda will you sir I, i don't have a rigveda book in front of me so i think you'll have to uh, quote it from whatever you have in front of you uh i will send you a link right now in the that uh, is this private chat okay i'm going to bring in a muslim brother who says that he knows a bit about the about the vedas i get so uh trojan are you there you need to unmute yourself oh uh, yeah brother hashim also i have to i have to go oh sorry <laughs> daniel brother wait. we didn't meet we didn't meet <laughs> meant to make you bored at the back there no no sorry i just had to take care of my kids but yeah, uh, yeah of course yeah sure have to go, no problem but... it's uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the panel as always and just thank you for sharing your your knowledge and inshallah you, uh, we'll welcome you again in the future um, inshallah jazakallah khair okay wa alaikum assalam wa alaikum assalam wa alaikum assalam wa alaikum assalam brother <laughs> Okay, Trojan, are you there? Chale gaye kya Daniel bhai? Yeah. Uh, Br- brother Ashu, you know, I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to talk to him. Wait, wait. Uh, well, you you, you were here for half an hour. You should have talked to him then. Yeah. <laughs> brother Ashu, brother Ashu. Yes, Amir bhai. Brother Ashu. Ji. Uh, yes. Confirm. What did Hari say about the look first? Uh, first person to get the vedas from uh, paramatma or ishwar well, he, 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 he said he said the same thing that uh, it is from brahman uh, sorry brahma and then brahma gave it to these four rishis and then the four rishis gave it to everyone else okay like uh, he said the first one was brahma okay, yeah the origin the yeah uh, hari i don't want to misrepresent you is that right yes sir when i asked you where did the vedas originate from you said it is from brahma and then yeah. brahma gave it to the four rishis and the four rishis gave it to everyone else yeah okay right hari yes sir yeah okay. okay this was this was the same question asked by me to hari 4 months ago in hindi or urdu channel that's mm-hmm. what he said just listen brother hashim since you know the hindi urdu just listen what he said kisko diya ishwar se nikal ke kidhar gaye brahma ishwar Okay. First, he said the Ishwar created the Vedas. Just listen again. It's obvious that Diya who gave it to whom? These Vedas who came out? I'm asking you from whom? Two days ago, I asked you. 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 Brahma 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 So there mm-hmm. there 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 is 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 a a a a complete right right now. So okay. and there is a Brahma. So there is one more hierarchy about Brahma. One hierarchy. About Brahma. Brahma 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 Yeah, is a Yeah, go on, Hari, go on. Hari, title. So is whoever receives them. So, yeah. How can how can okay. how can how can a same person give a thing to himself? Okay, now before we make that assumption, Hari, are you this saying that you saying, saying Brahma yeah. is Ishwar? Is that what you're saying? Bra- when God has memor, uh, God is the knower of the Vedas, so it is a title. He is Brahma, and when a when a person who is uh, uh, what uh, administering the uh, sacrificial fire, who is the man of ritual, he is also called the Brahma. So no, no, when saying, he memorizes the four, 
the question I'm asking is, is according to you, is Brahma Ishwar or is it not? Brahma is one of the title of Ishwar. I can say one of the attributes you can say because he, ha he has memorized so is he, something. To me, Ishwar he has the knowledge of the Hindus, because he has been. According to the Hindus, Ishwar is like supreme God, isn't it? It's not just some Deva or even Bhagwan who are like lower compared to Ishwar. Ishwar is always like the highest. And I'm yes, so wondering if, uh, if, 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 Brother Hari, if, if, he, if he's given the title of Ishwar, then how come Ishwar can get cursed by his Manas Putra Manu, which we had, uh, you know, you remember we had uh, sort of brought this forth in the previous stream also when we were discussing about the caste example. So how is it, because this is again mentioned that Brahma, Brahma, had, you be, remember Shatrupa? Brahma had created the beautiful woman Shatrupa and out of yes. pleased pleased out of Manu's devotion. And then Brahma himself got so un, un, enamored by Shatrupa's beauty that he fell in love with her himself. And when Manu found it, he got so angry and he cursed Brahma. And then he said that nobody will be worshipping you, uh, you know, henceforth on earth. So I wonder then, this person who's giving this, you know, this, this Ishwar, Brahma, Brahma, the creator, who's giving, is the one who's getting cursed. So can can we really rely? This question also comes to the mind. Can we really rely on somebody's uh, intellect and knowledge who himself, you know, is 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 getting cursed by his manasputra? Oh, as in, like, what will we learn yeah, from think, somebody who's getting cursed? Yeah, I think even more important than that is the fact that uh, he dies in every cycle. You know, right? So That's also how, there. If, yeah. if he's Ishwar, then Ishwar cannot die. I, I think even the Hindus will tell you that. Yes, every I don't know country. which kind of Hindu you are, Hari, but do you believe do you believe Ishwar can die? Ishwar can never die. I have sent you, brother uh, Simaya. Uh, yeah. If you see the back uh, back chat, I have sent a link, and I request okay. you to I'll, share. I'll check please. that. Yeah. So if Ishwar cannot die, do you know that Brahma actually dies during every yeah. uh, cosmic cycle? Right. Yeah, I know that. But you just said Ishwar doesn't die. So which one is it? Does Brahma die? Um, and is Brahma Ishwar? Or are you, have you changed your mind now? No, no. He, he can't change. He just said that. That he, the designation yeah. of okay, Ishwar. Sister Swati, let him, let him answer. That's fine. Okay. Ari, you can change your mind. Brother. Once again, can Ishwar die? Brahma. And you said, you said no. Is Brahma Ishwar? No. And you said yes. So you're contradicting yourself. I'm not contradicting. I just want to say the word Brahma is a designation. So yeah, but God, identity, you, the identity of Brahma and Ishwar, is it the same or is it different? No, no, you said Ishwar is a designation given to Brahma. Oh, no, no, sorry. Uh, it may be that my English is not uh, good, so I might have said the wrong. I'm saying, saying the word Brahma is designation, is the title. Whoever memorized the Vedas or whoever the knowledge of the Vedas, they are called Brahma. So okay. If, no, no, no. Now, now you are wait, wait. If you memorize, memorize, you're getting it mixed up now. Hold on. Earlier, when we asked you where did the Vedas originate from, okay, you said from Brahma, right? Yeah, it is the designation of Ishwar. So I said the Brahma because he okay. is the knower of so the once, Vedas. So, so once again, Brahma. we are not talking about someone who memorized it. We are talking about someone who originated the Vedas. Yes. Did Brahma, okay, who who is yeah. one of the Trimurti, you know, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, did Brahma originate the Vedas or did he not? Uh, did Brahma, no, no, he did not originate the Vedas. Okay, Vedas so, uh, are said to be the Nitya, eternal. So it is always in the mind of the God. No, no, we are not talking about that. We are talking about the actual Vedas which the which the Rishis received. You know, it was in the mind of God. Then the question is, how did it come in the mind of the Rishis? Uh, he just revealed in the soul of the Rishis. Okay, so that's that's the question. The origin is still with the God, and then <coughs> and then it, what it it transmitted to the Rishis. Yeah, it, uh, he transmitted it to the Rishis. Okay, so when you say the Vedas are eternal. Okay. Yes. When the rishis received it, what language did they receive it in? 
because language is not uh, eternal right language is not eternal uh, you okay, are right so, so but, how did the rishis uh, receive it in what language from the shastriya paksh from the scriptural view we know that it is received in the form of in, in sanskrit language yeah but sanskrit is not an eternal language uh, I, i have said it from the scriptural point of view that i we are getting so uh, we do not know but it is the scriptural view and we believe okay. that uh, amir bhai or sam or swati you guys want to respond to that i i have shared my screen yeah oh you can, you can share yeah one. you want me to share that okay sure okay yeah. what is okay. this so here is shrimad bhagavatam chapter yeah. book 3 chapter 12 and uh, verses from 34 to 39 so is the scenario of the creation of the vedas from right from brahma not the mem- memorizing someone like if one memorizes the vedas become the brahma if he, maybe he wanted to say uh, brahman so while he was meditating who <laughs> the brahma and according to him ishwar ishwar was meditating how he should create the well planned worlds as before the vedas came out from the four mouths of the creator like he was meditating for something else and suddenly out of nowhere four vedas were popped out from his mouth okay second so please tell me by what particular organ he produced a specific thing in uh, 36 month so specific thing there is a complete description about the creation or the um, recipe of the vedas to be very appropriate recipe so you can see from his mouth in the uh, uh, 37 verse from his mouth facing the east he produced the vedas rig yajunas saman atharvan shastra recitation of mantras in praise of god's interest so there is the east there is the west so uh, they cannot say that uh, you know is uh, um, what what they call nirakar like you cannot point out that there is god so there is a east there is a west according to the shrimad bhagavatam so when they say uh, uh, brahma originated he originated it but he didn't memorize it and he is completely different than ishwar yeah. and the second thing is second that thing makes is, sense because ishwar doesn't die and this guy died so that makes exactly. sense and 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 again one thing he is mentioned as devas dev ishwar cannot right. be called as dev he cannot be called exactly dev dev devta is totally a different um, yeah. category or a different uh, characteristic for something it's like uh, a like deity a, you know like god yeah, almighty demigods yeah, yeah uh, demigods semigods yeah uh, exactly just give me some uh, okay. reference about it i am going to share it it's uh, mundake upanishad i think yes mundake upanishad uh, i will share it just give me a second so you can see brahma completely in a different avatar as a devta not as the ishwar yeah uh, um, yes this one kindly share it brother hasham okay okay i'll zoom it so you can see mundaka upanishad first mundaka first khand and the first mantra brahma was the first of the devas in sanskrit if you check it it's called devta so dev or devta is totally a different thing different term for a different thing not for the ishwar the maker of the universe the preserver of the world he told the knowledge of a brahman vedas the foundation of all knowledge again vedas to his eldest son atharva here brahma is called as a dev and um, a teacher and the foundation of all knowledge and he is teaching his son eldest son atharva so here is the thing thank you okay interesting right i want and to bring in, in, in uh, bhagavad gita also yes mm-hmm. sorry brother in bhagavad gita ch- chapter number 20 verse number 17 it also says that those whose intelligence has been stolen by materialistic desires worship demigods and the wo- word came there is devis and devtas yeah so these this person the brahma is not to be worshiped and yeah. our brother hari is saying that this is the same ishwar No, I think I think he probably got uh, mixed yeah. up in the in the language or the wording. Perhaps let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, Other may we... I interject? Uh, yeah, Hello. sorry, Hello. just one second. I think there's uh, there's Trojan who's been waiting for quite a while. He wants to say something important. Trojan, go ahead. Actually, yeah, uh, I'm just unfortunate. I just wanted to uh, 
first talk to the brother daniel i was uh, i am a big fan of daniel actually that's why okay I you missed that him quite close. sorry you missed that inshallah next time yeah oh uh, yeah sure but very important information okay see first mm-hmm. of all we have to uh, i am being very clear okay what is history we have to understand what is history here okay there is one history which is presented to the public and one history is which is the actual history many scholars know it but hide it that is the truth i'm telling you even a, many see every religion has its own history and there is actual history okay like catholics have their own version of history how they got the scriptures then how it became canon then how uh, this uh, theological decision i mean uh, uh, yeah theological um, Uh, doctrine was laid down and all like same way hindus they'll say there is version of history but we have to go by what archaeological uh, evidence manuscript evidence what uh, contemporary scholars we have to gi- give some kind of evidence to show uh, that uh, the history of the religion matches with the actual history when we research when arch- archaeologists historians do the research so hinduism fails on total fronts let me be very clear okay Uh, I have I have been searching. I mean, I have been researching a lot. I have uh, I'm looking into ex Hindus. There are uh, academic Hindus who are looking into this. Many of them become Buddhist also. They are saying, let us be very clear. Okay, you know this interesting thing. Indians didn't know about Ashoka till 20th century. They had forgotten about Ashoka. He was such a great emperor. You know that, right? Ashoka ruled over uh, entire Indian subcontinent. He has his epithets. His uh, rock uh, i mean his uh, uh, structures all over subcontinent from afghanistan pakistan india about his achievement it is written in brahmi script you know right brother uh, sam stallone you know that right yes yes yeah yeah right so it is written in brahmi script even, even today's hindus brahmins whatever the religious class they can't read it the, the they british cannot read it yeah british archaeologists in the 20th century came and read brahmi script they analyzed the brahmi script and read out what was there wow. it was about uh, ashoka's achievements he said i have converted to buddhism and i have i am spreading dhamma so we have evidence of buddhism from there we have but we don't have evidence of hinduism let me tell you know that right uh, sam stallone bhai there is no evidence exactly, of temples exactly. before 3rd and 4th century so interestingly exactly. we have uh, accounts, we have an accounts of travelers like fahyan itsing uh, hangsa even uh, muslim travelers like al buruni okay al biruni they speak about uh, see interestingly that time uh, let me say something uh, yeah when those chinese travelers came like fahian it think they came before alburuni alburuni came in 11th century with ghaznavi during the invasion of ghaznavi he came along with ghaznavi and he stayed in india for i think about many years and studied with the, with the uh, i mean a brahmin seer okay so according to alburuni in his uh, uh, alburuni ka bharat you know that book right sam stallone bhai yes 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 uh, even hindus agree even everyone agrees that alburuni is a uh, neutral scholar i mean neutral historian he doesn't exaggerate he's not ideologically motivated he's describing what he's seeing what is hearing what he's seeing alburuni is quite a he's called father of indology everyone knows that right sam stallone bhai Yeah, brother. Can you just yes, yes, complete? Please, please come on the point. Very fine with Sam. Every every sentence. Just okay. get to the so point. Yeah, please. Come on the point, brother. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can When I you're wrong, say... Sam boy will correct you. Don't worry. See, I was just asking whether he can confirm because I'm sure yeah, yeah. that he will establish. Okay, fine. I'll just say it. Okay. So just come to yeah, the point, Alburu, brother. Yeah. Alburuni is regarded as the father of Indology. So when he uh, in, enters India with uh, during the invasions of Ghaznavi. and he stays in india for many years and studies uh, with the scholars of india he says he gives an interesting description he says what we heard of india he is saying uh, uh, foreigners okay muslims there you know arab travelers travel to india from the advent of islam they have been traveling to islam, i mean ports of india for trade and all so they had a dif- different description of india how it looked When brother the, we are not discussing the brother, history yeah. of india yeah. we are discussing it is, the it is, it is important to uh, history of india no no there's no there's no re- reason to give the history of india we have discussed this previously already no 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 it is related to hinduism because hinduism claims that his history no, no, is quite the, the stream is not just about hinduism it's about the scriptures of the hindus yeah, yeah vedas it is important i'll tell you i'll come to vedas also yeah okay do so, it quickly uh, please because we got lots of people waiting yeah some hindus have come brother 
Um, I don't know. They still haven't confirmed if they are Hindus. Okay, okay. Let me see, uh, speak quite quickly. Okay, so, so Alburini says. Okay, Alburini says in Alburini ka Bharat that what description they had of India. It was quite different when uh, he went to the India and uh, uh, I mean uh, research there. Okay, so first of all, Alburini says the scholars, the Brahmins are quite arrogant. They are quite superstitious. They have some knowledge about uh, medicine and uh, uh, astrology, but uh, astronomy. But other than that, they are quite irrational. They believe in quite superstitions, and they are quite arrogant. They believe they are the most superior uh, race. Most brother, superior. brother, you are doing the same thing. So, sorry, brother, brother, you are doing the same thing. Just come on the point of the manuscripts or with the Vedas. Okay, okay, okay. I'll tell you. Okay, sir. Let, let me see. Important thing. Uh, yeah. So. Whenever this Hindu says that uh, we have evidence of Vedas in Buddhist scriptures, Im important thing is before Sanskrit became uh, emergence of Sanskrit, there was another language in India called Pali Prakrit. That was the main language of India. I mean, uh, scholarly language, the main language which affected India's languages in uh, most part of India. Pali Prakrit. You know that, right, Samson and Bai? Now it is okay. Extinct. Okay, brother, please, please. Yeah. Are you are you a, are you a primary school teacher or something? <laughs> no, you know the, the teacher always have to repeat, you know, to make sure you get it. I'm sorry, brother. He is, he is using he is using your shoulder. Be aware, right? Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I think he's promoting he's promoting Buddhism. No, I'm not promoting Buddhism. See, I'm, I'm saying what? Okay, Trojan. Yeah, 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 yeah. One second. One second. Still, do you believe? Yes, do, you, do you believe that the Vedas have been preserved or are they corrupted? No, they are corrupted. See, first okay. Of all, why? I'm, why do you think? Why do you think they are corrupted? Not, see, first of all, I'm not a Hindu. I'm a Muslim. I'm telling you. It no, no. It doesn't matter if you're a Muslim or not. Doesn't Muslim. matter. The question yeah. still remains: Why do you think they are corrupted? Uh, why do you? First of all, they are. Uh, yeah, they are corrupted. There is no evidence of continuous preservation, first of all. And even origins are quite shoddy. And they have taken a lot of from, I think, from foreign sources. They have taken a lot. First of all, you know, description of uh, Vedas. Let me do it. In description of Vedas, there are chariots. There is no chariots in North India. There is no archaeological digs. You know, B.B. Laj, you know, do you know about B.B. Laj? B.B. Laj is RSS affiliated historian. He is quite well known. Yeah, I think he died recently. A few years back, so he dug in Ayodhya in uh, northern India, Gang Ganges plain. They never found any evidence of uh, this uh, sophisticated technology of ancient uh, in mentioned in Vedas chariots and all those weapons. They found just basic util utensils, utensils and nothing else. Even in uh, Vedas, you you get description. Hey, bro of brother, brother, sorry, of sorry, brother, brother, sorry, brother, brother, sorry to interrupt you. But with this, all these things, we cannot confirm that Vedas are preserved or not. So yeah, your arguments are something. going. Yeah. No, 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 no sorry, 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 yeah. brother, brother, please, 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 please. Yeah. You spoke about Al Buruni. You spoke about the travelers, but you did not talk about the how, how Vedas are preserved or not. You have wasted like fifteen minutes. Do you understand yeah. this thing? Like they say in Hindi, mudde pe aao. Exactly. Irrelevant right. information, no matter how informative yeah. you if are. If you go you around know. and around in circles, you know, people will just get bored and they'll drop off. And so, we believe you, you're a Muslim. Last, listen, last opportunity for you. You got two minutes. Gone. Uh, Make sure it's relevant to the topic, yeah? Fine. I'll, I'll just, I'll stay in the background. In the no, you're not staying in the background. You, people are waiting to get in. <laughs> it is not My a special privilege for you let me for say, US let history me lessons when okay, we ask you specifically about the yeah, yeah. Upanishads yeah, and the Vedas. Yeah, but preservation, you mean, see, first of all, there has to be an origin point, right? The origin point has to be correct. Original history, I mean, origin. origin. I'm saying to origin, go to origin. Where has it originated? We are going to origin. We already origin asked that. We, that's all what we were just discussing, and you were in the background listening. I hope yeah, so. Yeah, but see, all of this Hindu, I mean, uh, Hindu speakers here, they didn't say anything about origin. They're saying in their we, scriptures. No, no, we asked Hari. I understand what they're saying. Yeah, they're, we asked Hari about, about the origin. We're not talking about theological or scriptural matters, how the Vedas are. We're talking about historical. Okay, historical, no problem. Because when you have some information relevant, you can join us later, okay? But right now, I'll have to remove you. Sorry, yeah. brother. Okay? Brother, uh, brother, brother Hashim, thank, thank you so much, brother. I'm still gathering myself that a Muslim is quoting a Hindu scholar Swami Vivekananda, and a, non, a Hindu is quoting 
a Muslim historian. <laughs> That's the difference. Like we are talking about Hindu scriptures and Sam Stalin quoted Swami Vivekananda, a Hindu scholar. And to tackle that <laughs> and to deal with that, they are, they are quoting Muslim scholars. So okay, so give me, one, give, me, give me one evidence from Al Biruni book where Al Biruni says he believe that Vedas are from God. Okay, come on. Yeah, That's I true. think Biruni was a historian. As a historian, he's going to write what people mm -hmm. actually talked about, what they were referring to, yeah. stuff like that. For he, he doesn't need to believe in the Vedas uh, to make a reference in his records as a historian, and this is quite common. Uh, King Raman, you have been waiting patiently. Let me uh, bring you forward. To ask if you've got anything to add to this topic. Yeah, I am waiting patiently. Hari, because please mute yourself. Hari, because there's some disturbance. Uh, make some remarks. Hari, mute yourself. Okay, I'll, I'll mute him because it's probably. There you go. All right, King Ravan, go ahead. Yeah. Now it's okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, I uh, I just heard um, Hari Om that said uh, that he makes some remarks. That uh, God sent some avatars to preserve a Vedas. Sorry, again, but, I can't... Uh, after the Brahman Ram, uh, we don't have. Uh, we are, we are talking about your voice. Uh, Vedas, because we yeah, can your, your audio is not very clear. Uh, we are talking about the preservation or non-preservation of the. Oh, my audio is not clear. The Vedas. Have you got anything to add on that topic? He's saying basically Brahma had sent some avatars. Yes, yes, I have. Uh, I, That's what it said so far. Yes, yes. Even even Brahma called Brahmadev when he was not immortal from from the beginning, because he needed the, the Samantar Mantan to then. Okay, so before we go further, become mortal. Before immortal. We, before we go further, do you believe in the Vedas? I, I believe that we don't have any original Vedas today. There is no okay, original Vedas. And so Vedas should be preserved orally, not in red form, anywhere. Okay, that's that's okay, all right. Uh, what, what scriptures we don't do have you... those oral traditions, so we don't have the original yeah. Vedas. What, what's, what Hindu scriptures do you think are preserved? King Ravan, did you hear the question? In even... Even, According to even you, the which Hada, Hindu the scriptures Hada, are preserved? These people call Ramayana. And... I, I didn't. I didn't hear that at all. It's, there's a lot of disturbance when you speak. There is not uh, a pure um, sacred scripture that is uh, that is uh, that is preserved. Yeah, which are preserved? Which Ramayana, ones? Ramayana goes against against the, the Vedas. The people that claim that Vedas is is is, is a baseline, and Ramayana okay. goes against. Then they should throw all Ramayana. Right. But you, you still haven't answered the question. Which which scripture, Hindu scripture, according to you, are preserved? Yeah, because because we cannot we cannot differentiate differentiate between, between the what? corrupted verses and then the original verses. How do we how do we uh, uh, what identify differentiate between? Okay, mm. so are you saying original are you saying there's nothing preserved? Is what you're saying? And the corrupt is is that is there, there is no Hindu a, scriptures preserved? There is, is that what some. Saying? Parts are preserved, but we, we cannot we cannot we cannot differentiate. Right. It's like uh, it's like mixing the uh, the honey with urine. It's it's not honey and it's not urine. It's both. Okay, fair enough. Right. Um, Amir, by you, you got something yeah, to add on that? Yes, exactly. If, when you say there are some some passages or some texts which are not preserved, that means you are saying as a whole the texts are not preserved. You cannot say half of it preserved. And the same time, you are saying that you cannot identify, differentiate, uh, differentiate between the preserved one and non-preserved or lost one. So one, once you cannot differentiate, be, differentiate between these two, so we have to say yes. Even our Acharya, Hindu scriptures are not preserved. That's the thing. So water should be clean, hundred percent H two O. Nothing else. Mm. That's what we call a preserved mineral drinking water, drinkable water. Okay. By the way, Amir, by just to give you a bit of context, uh, King Ravan is not your average Hindu. Yes, yeah. that's what I feel. Okay, so it's his views he's might be a reformed. bit different. He is the reformed one. When he said that Valmiki Ramayana is preserved, I thought he is talking about the book which talked about him. He's basically waiting for Ravan to come again and kill. Uh, take uh, revenge. You know, take revenge. He has uh, a different ideology. Yeah. Uh, 
Yes. Yeah. But anyway, we we respect that. I mean, that's fine. It, yeah. It's different. Yeah. One thing is like Hindus, you know, they even claim they are atheists. At least he doesn't claim he's an atheist, you know. Right. So there are Hindus who claim all sorts of things, and they are still welcomed in the Hindu um, under the Hindu umbrella. Uh, but if you're if you're uh, someone who is an enemy of Ram, then I very much doubt they'll welcome you that easily. Okay. I wish some Hindu. So I have I have learned in. I have learned a new word. I have a I have learned a new word from him, Brahman Hatiara. Yes, yes. Yeah, which I did, which I would be using in my argument. That's the title of Ram, yeah. Ram Hatiara. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's true according to according to their own epics, isn't it? Yeah, Ra- they believe he was in a yes. Brahman. Yes. Right. So Ravan was a Brahmin and he was killed by Ram. And, and Brahma Hatya is one of the major sins, you know, within yeah. the within the Hindu tradition. The what greatest is the sin, sin on earth. What is the what is the consequence of uh, Brahman Hatya? King Ravan. Sorry. Yes, but in terms of Ramayana, there are various versions of epic that have been written over the mm. time, uh, each with a different interpretation. The Ravana character, the most popular version of Ramayana is Valmiki Ramayana, which portrayed Ravana as, as a villain who abducts Sita, the wife of Ram. Yeah. However, there are other versions like Ramayana, such as Prithivasi Ramayana, which portrayed Ravana as more sympathetic in, in as a, as a, as a wise, uh, wise right. and honorable Brahman. So how do you identify which is the right version? If there are many, if there are like 40 Ramayanas or something, how do you know which is the right one? Actually, we don't believe in any of these uh, books that are that are assumed to be sacred. No, we but you you must identify. you must believe at least in one of them. Orally from our acharyas. Yeah, King Raman, you must believe at least in one of them, because you have a narrative. Acha- we learn only to. to Debunk these other other sex and uh, okay. just to uh, right. Okay, thanks for your for the day. Thanks for your when we thanks for your input. Right, uh, Hari Om, you got anything else to add? Because I think everything is on your shoulders. No other Hindus are coming forward to help you. I'm sorry. Even the one who came here, he's not exactly on your side. King Ram, uh, could you please mute your mute your disturbing. mic? There's disturbance coming from there. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll mute it. That's fine. Yeah. King Rowan, if you don't have anything else to add, uh, you can make way, um, make room for other people. Is that okay, King Rowan? Yeah, you need to unmute yourself to answer that question. Hasim, bhai, yeah? Yeah, eight minute, eight minute. King Rowan, are you there? I'm going to um, make way for other people to join in because there's a lot of people trying to get in. So I'm going to remove you. Uh, if that if that's okay, yeah, because I think we have covered your side of the story. Thanks a lot for the join for joining the stream again. Right, so I'm going to um, yeah, Harry, go, go ahead. You want to say something? Uh, I uh, since uh, it has been too late. Tomorrow is my class because that was Saturday. That's why I uh, remain eight hours there. But I see. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no, yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, so I just. You're, you're the last man standing, as they say. <laughs> right. And Hariyam, yeah, could you yeah, please, before yeah, going, you, you know, it. because you are the only one who has been come, who, who's here as a savior of the Hindus. You know, could you just, maybe if you know something about it, this is a curiosity, very genuine one, which is there within me, that this entire Vedas to be placed within Shruti tradition, Shruti classification, you know, and then everything that is being quoted, you know, Hindus say that you have to check from Vedas. You know, it should not contradict Vedas. Vedas are the superior, most the most sanctified text. I want to ask that Brahman's extension or extrapolation, whatever we want to call that manifestation, incarnation, Vishnu and Vishnu's further extension, Krishna in Bhagavad Gita is saying, basically, you know, going back to Brahma only, if Brahma is equal to Vishnu is equal to Krishna, so Krishna is equal to Brahman then. So the, the so Krishna, when he's saying that, you know, Vedas are nothing but, you know, they are just the, you know, flowery words which are there and people who, who just have, who are desirous of sense gratification, they are the ones who indulge into it. And, you know, they are, these are the people of small knowledge and you will not get moksh through this. I just want to know then what has made Vedas so sacrosanct then? When, when Brahma's incarnation, Vishnu's incarnation, Krishna himself is saying in Bhagavad Gita 
that they are, you know, those people of small knowledge are the ones who get attached. And, you know, even after getting attached, they're not going to get salvation. Then what's the big deal about Vedas then? Why this entire fuss over Vedas that, you know, you have to prove it from Vedas, quote, see, show us whether it's there in Vedas or not. Only then we'll believe. Let's see whether it contradicts or not. And then entire thing about, you know, trying to prove whether we, whether we have the original Vedas with us or not. But, but if we see this, they are of no importance then. They're not even guaranteeing salvation. So then why this UN cry over Vedas? Why has it been placed in Shruti classification? Okay, I think I think Hari, Hari has to go to sleep because he has he has school or work tomorrow. So, uh, Hari, if you can if you can respond briefly and then we'll 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 give you leave, inshallah. <laughs> yeah, I just want to answer uh, yeah. one thing uh, when it is said that uh, Brahma has four uh, uh, four uh, face, it means that it is representing representing the four rishis. And second point, Sister uh, Swati said, uh, Lord Krishna is saying that uh, Vedas are the flowery, uh, you should not read that. Like, So same, Lord Krishna says in the Gita, Veda Nam Sama Vedu Asmi. Among the Vedas, I am the Sama. And he says that, uh, also says that, and, and all the Vedas, I am only knowable. Means oh, people search me through the Vedas. So he's not denying. He's saying that uh, some people uh, used to say that the, if I do so and so, only I will get the Janna, I will get the Swarga. So they were not following uh, uh, properly. They are just doing the karma and, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, but they are not acting. Uh, you know, I am thinking that this is but only doing the sacrifice, but they are not following that uh, I have to perform namaz and I have to do, uh, uh, I, I have to be a virtue person. So you to admit each that, other, I, get it, I get it, I get yeah. it, brother. That, so that means uh, you admit it that this is for people who have small knowledge, less intellectual, who are just who are just indulging karm can't. So those for those people, if they don't have any other alternative, they can't reach to that higher you know level of intellect. For them is this. For them is suitable Vedas. So so my question is, if they are of such caliber, then why do you why is Hinduism making it so important a text that every other text has to you know get clarification and legitimate legitimization from Vedas? Does. when when they are of when they are for people of small knowledge and intelligence then why this entire how would why would you place it at the topmost core and why would shruti as a as an authoritative classification would place vedas why not bhagavad gita then then let's place bhagavad gita in the shruti bhagavad gita rather is is placed within epics in puranas if if let uh, me read out one one quick one quick was I would like to add one. One, so, yeah, sorry, sorry yeah, if, yeah. If yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, what he's saying about the Krishna, the Krishna mentioned this cause of the karam kand that if someone is just following the rituals or practice or the 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 the, um, the physical, you know, religious activities or the rituals, so that's what he said that don't do this. That's why he said that flowery words or the the practical words. That's it. Then why Shri Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita, Ithaya sixteen. And the verse 23 and 24, which was mentioned re recently in the, the same stream, but I'm quoting 23. Vartate kama karataha. Kama karataha. So he is mentioning himself with the Karmakand here. And you know what he said? If one follows the Karmakand, then follow the rituals, practice, uh, practice the deen, uh, practice the uh, religion or rituals according to the Shastra. And, and, um, there is a note that Shastra here in Sanskrit, Shastra used as plural here. Yeah, Shastra vidimustrajya vartate kama karataha nasa siddhim avapnoti nasukham na paramgatim. So if he was saying that uh, don't just follow the scriptures, he himself said in Idhaya 16 that follow the scriptures. And if you do otherwise, you will not get the perfection in your life. You will not get the absolutely. Uh, the, that's what I've been saying. Prosperity yeah. and the the ultimate goal, the moksha, avapnoti, param gatim. So he's contradicting himself. Yeah. yeah. What is he exactly uh, wanting he, to say? What is Krishna exactly uh, I, wanting to say? Uh, yeah. Just I want to say. I think that I'm not able to express myself as good as you guys are able to. Not you. I not think you. that. 
I am really sorry. I am I am being very honest. Actually, yeah. it's Sri Krishna who is not very clear about the shastras in the same Bhagavad Gita. Not you. So don't be sorry. Okay. Yeah. Thank Let you. me quote one Bhagavad Gita verse, Brother Hari. This will be this will be an eye-opening statement for you because you have said this thing earlier that uh, Krishna himself said in Bhagavad Gita that he is the Samveda, right? So let me read that complete verse. Bhagavad Gita, book number nine. Uh, 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 sorry, Bhagavad Gita, chapter number nine, verse number seventeen. Nine seventeen. Here Krishna says, "I am the father of this universe, the mother, the support, the grandchild." and i am the object of knowledge the purifier and the syllable om i am also the rigveda the samveda the yajurveda the last one the atharva veda is missing he 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 don't consider himself as atharva veda read this thing as well manusmriti chapter 2 verse number 77 out of the three vedas again the supreme prajaprati milked each foot of the savitri verses beginning with tat so here manusmriti is also talking about three veda the third veda atharva veda is missing see this another verse manusmriti <coughs> sorry yeah this is uh, again again the verse out of the three vedas prajapati milk the letter a the letter u and the letter m and also the syllable bhu bhuva sava so here again talking about the three vedas the fourth atharva veda is missing here again manusmriti chapter 1 verse number 23 the same thing is said again out of the three vedas the deities agni vayu and ravi he extracted due, uh, for the due fulfillment of sacrifice and the eternal brahma three folds in the form of rig yajur and sam the atharva veda is missing do you know why atharva veda is missing from gita and manusmriti i'll tell you the rami sivan said the atharva veda is the latest supplementary addition to the original three vedas there were original three vedas the atharva veda is has been added later on and therefore not authoritative and in itself it deals mainly with the magic spells occultism and miscellaneous stuff it is the composition of many different authors whose names and identities are unknown so the fourth atharva veda is missing from bhagavad gita krishna also identifies that and manusmriti also says the same thing and one of your scholars says that it's a later supplementary addition thank you Okay, um, uh, I want to. Can I okay, hurry on. Yeah. You got time, or you want to? You want to go? It's I up to you want entirely. To, uh, I just want to answer and go. And uh, uh, I request everyone, please don't ask me any more questions because I have to. Sure, go. sure, sure. Tomorrow, sure. I just have that. one more question from Harif. If he, if he's okay, uh, brother. Kaiser, uh, actually, <laughs> he alone can't save Hinduism. It's like too big a contradiction. Brother, uh, you can, you can just, you can, you can just answer, and you can, you can just go yeah. off to the bed, brother. That's fine. We got, uh, we got, we got another uh, Hindu in the background, uh, so I mean, but I, here, so they can, he can take over for. You don't have time. We can understand yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, it's more about. You time. can, you can, yeah, you can, uh, but you don't have time, brother. Yeah, uh, I just want to answer uh, that. Uh, uh, as brother sam stolen said there is only mention of three vedas the fact is that uh, in manu smriti when he is mentioned about so there is uh, also mentioned about the ashram it is special for vedas so it is not for everyone uh, are you getting me you you also uh, am i am i yeah, able to in between it's breaking a little but yeah you can uh, go on let's see if it works out uh, uh, okay. uh now 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 is it right yeah it's better yes yeah it's better so i am saying that uh, wherever it is mentioned it is mentioned about the tri vidya so when it comes to the tri vidya it is three types of mantras rik yaju and sam there are only three types of mantra rik mantra yaju mantra and sam mantra and atharvid had the mixture of all these three types of mantras so it always included in the tri vidya and vidyas are tri but the vedas are the four so that's why uh, one thing and second thing is that when manusmriti mentions it mentions so, so about here, here, here. just a second just a second brother just a second hariyom hariyom that's what you're saying you you you've made this dis, this differentiation between uh, veda and vidya so you mean to say vidya is something else and vedas are not part of vidya uh no mantras are three types that is called tri vidya rik yaju sam 
did you understand me sister rick yaju and sam these are you are saying these are vidyas ah. or these are mantras what are ah, these are vidyas ah, yeah so these yeah, are vidyas what are they when uh, when anybody yeah these are vidyas when somebody wants to express the four veda four veda in the three uh, in the three uh, category only so he will say that three vidya rick yaju and sam it means that it included the fourth vedas in itself automatically one thing and second thing is that for the grihastha only maximum three vedas are uh, uh, good for them but no fourth one is medicinal one in fact atharva veda it is supposedly the medicinal one you know can learn the fourth fourth veda normal uh, yeah medicinal one that is it, it was not essential for the grihastha those householder that he may have to read the all the four vedas so only the three vedas were quite essential uh, or essential but medicinal essential, aspect is very important the for even vedas, if whoever read for the i am not saying that not uh, those who ever wished and those who were the uh, uh, you know uh, were the uh, what can i say i think there is still confusion with guys guys it's some of the yeah it's yeah. let's let's end it here for hurry hurry right. go to sleep now uh, yeah, come yeah. back next time we'll probably carry on from there but thanks for your input really appreciate that yes thanks for your and, time uh, your patience yeah. thank you so much yeah. brother hari thank you. you take care okay thank and you your so efforts much. in uh, in saving hinduism all right yeah thank you so uh, yeah, much asim bhaiya yeah assalamu alaikum good night have a nice allah you were kind good night thank you thank you so much jazakallah khair wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah okay take care bye bye right uh, we got another hindu here he's a uh, dark well not not his skin tone but his his title here or does he want to say hinduism itself is dark i don't know he's got he's got yeah. a picture of some skull and anyway uh dark what's on your mind today hello can you hear us please i need your mic brother is is uh, is waiting if uh, swati will recognize May his voice <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's a <laughs> maybe he's switching the... switching on the light he's, he's fearing yeah. for sati to do this you know <laughs> no I, i you know i was just a little suspicious because of the because of this you know dp which is there they usually have such kinds of dp yeah you're right I, absolutely i got the same feeling but yeah um, skull and all these you know let's unmask him come on dark <laughs> what do you want to call, yeah, what do you want us to call you because dark seems a bit hello, dark everybody. you can call me anything dark no no give, give us something you would prefer Okay Chandra thanks for that uh, I'll get don't you in a second Don't say that brother dark don't say that call me anything in front of me please please <laughs> it's a piece of <laughs> What don't call you dark No he's call saying call me, me anything and he's saying in front of me that's a teaser for me that's what I'm saying uh, Anything yeah. can go in a very wrong direction Yeah that's exactly. that's fine give me a name hindu name with d what is it dev Okay call me dev Dave Dylan I don't know okay Um yeah what's on your mind today what do you what, have you been listening to the stream i don't know yeah yeah you guys were asking about manuscripts right yeah yeah so the the stream is about um, we are scrutinizing the hindu manuscripts uh so most of the discussions we had so far today mostly with muslims only a few handful of hindus and it still seems like the hindu scriptures are not preserved many people are not sure about the origin of the scriptures so also, do you understand a lot of yeah lot of questions about vedas also yeah a lot of contradictions as well internal so do you want to shed some light from your perspective as a hindu well i will tell you first uh, hindu scriptures uh, is considered as oldest by whom okay. sanatan as a whole is considered as oldest who considers them as and the oldest and boldest <laughs> <laughs> i don't know that <laughs> is we actually we okay like there are certain proofs like to seem it as it is oldest mm -hmm. no but to whom like who, who who in the world in the academic world considers the hindu scriptures to be the oldest because and you know the you, you know the sumerians they had alphabet and scripts and evidence we still have yeah. those you know much older than the hindus like we have indus valley civilization which is considered not as hindu. one of the oldest indus valley is not hindu do you know that and any hindu no, there are that, certain they are not being sincere because the no, difference no, between the indus valley the harappan and the mohenjo daro if you look at you the lifestyle 
yeah if you look at the what what is it say again pashupati you can search it in online yeah i heard i saw pashupati there's no one claims that is shiva other than the hindus no yeah, no a, academic look, no no like archaeologists like claims it is shiva it's a look like a shiva so you yeah, can say you know like just shiva. because you look like shiva you know aquaman looks like shiva so is he shiva yeah he's got the trishul as well okay. the trident is he shiva the other gods you know they had long before the hindus they had a similar kind of image so don't think yeah. they are harappan the mohenjodaro these people were hindu they were not hindu the hindus have a, a one of their uh, within the caste is the kshatriyas the warrior tribes yeah amongst the harappan and the mohenjodaro there were no warriors there so this indus valley they were actually traders and they were they settled down in this place and there was not a single um evidence of any weapon so you cannot say they were hindus just on that basis but how how old do you consider hinduism as for you as as far as for us the hindus even the aryans they disappeared something like 400 years before the uh 400 years before this harappan and the um what do you say the uh, sorry the uh, the uh, the harappans they disappeared 400 years before even the aryans arrived and the aryans uh, the hindus come after the aryans so they are much later the hindus are much later and right now our discussion is not about how old hinduism is about how old the scriptures you which you claim to be eternal to be 5000 years old whatever you to claim do you have any evidence to substantiate this claim that's the question no, i have i have some of it and, ha- and how how they are preserved okay what does unesco, unesco say okay yes we do what does unesco say go to unesco's website search vedas unesco we okay. we saw it already earlier you can see page number 8 yeah yeah page look, number 8 what what it says yeah and look at page number 7 as well second millennium bce no 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 no, no. it doesn't say that it doesn't say have you actually looked at the pdf or, or did you look at the it, times of india because the times of india no. says what he said <laughs> the pdf said something completely different it says 1464 ce in the pdf this is about the rig veda wait a second wait let me open it the rig veda and is... only and, the, and and there are only 30 manuscripts by the way and only yeah. of rig veda so i got the text the here well for your for your information and it says there are 30 manuscripts of the rig veda at the institute collected from different parts of india like kashmir gujarat and then rajputana central provinces etc uh they are written in uh sharda devangri and devangri with uh, prista matra and the material used for writing is birch bark big box this paper and the oldest of these manuscripts yeah, i want to open you page, page number 8 oh. was that This is from the this is from the UNESCO PDF. It says yes, the old Okay, you first address okay. You first address this brother. Yeah, we'll go to the page number 8 as well. First you address this one because uh, this is also from the UNESCO. The further it explains in page number 8 how old is it really? No, what you it says what no here it clearly says there are 30 manuscripts of Rigveda just about the Rigveda. what about other other manuscripts uh, yajur veda sama veda and atharva veda and and only th- 30 manuscripts if yeah, you come down to the 8th uh, page veda, right? okay what about the other they just found 30 manuscripts right is that enough for you 30 manuscripts and we can't even we can we can't even tally we can't even cross check the manuscript have you ever seen any manuscript of rigveda brother duck have you ever seen a manuscript of veda he is just looking for one of... <laughs> or maybe the duck sorry yeah. i yeah. said he is just looking for one right now man i had lots of hope in this guy after hari yeah. are you a sanatani or are you a, or like uh, agnostic by any chance or an arya samaj ji dark 
has everything gone dark in your mind and in front of your eyes you're not saying anything is it trying to bring light from somewhere <laughs> yeah. well he'll, the only way he'll do that is from min zulumat ila nar ila nur is to come to islam inshallah <laughs> inshallah inshallah <laughs> yeah what that means is from the darkness to the light to the light this is, an, this is an ayah in the quran I think it's just after ayat al kursi are you asking somebody maybe is is somebody sending you some notes in or something court. that's is, what is i that... that's what i said that's what i said if you mm. are an arya samaji just speak up no problem okay we know they are having their i'll bring i'll bring another hindu while he's quiet chandra you got anything to share with us with regards to this topic uh i just was uh, trying to understand like uh, what guys were you looking for for getting gaining any knowledge you have to surrender yourself for that yeah, knowledge yeah we have totally are you a hindu yes i absolutely a sanatani no doubt for myself a uh, you can say but see sanatani you have to uh, be a good Uh, follower to do all the rituals and like that, but uh, almost like a eighty to ninety percent people have lost their own thing. So I would suggest that being Sanatani, hardcore Sanatani, hardcore is uh, a modern term, but in past it was a different kind of term. So that is there is no like a, as such good Sanatani, bad Sanatani, just a Sanatani who follows God. uh hindu okay, that's, that's, yeah. that's fine that's fine as long as you you, you acknowledge you are a sanatani you are hindu have you got anything to add with regards to this topic understand about... under, understand sanatani what what, no, what, look, what do look, you look, mean my friend, in you know for the uh, sake of time uh i know it's mm-hmm. quite late in india as well so we need to respect our guests as well including yourself so let's uh-huh. come to the topic so you want to close it right now this topic uh are you trying to be sarcastic No, no. You said that you want okay, to so listen to the question. What I'm asking, and then uh-huh, uh-huh. you can comment on that. Okay, because of mm-hmm. because of the time factor right now, I want to make sure go that ahead, we discuss we mm-hmm. discuss only what is relevant to the topic, nothing other than okay. that. Is that okay? So the question okay. to you would be: Do you consider any of the Hindu scriptures to be preserved? And if yes. why do you consider them to be preserved on what basis or what evidence can you provide to substantiate your claim so evidence is same as like uh, any other books in the world so you can compare with uh, bible you can compare with quran what, how it was preserved same way the hindu scriptures are preserved so one of the uniqueness of the hindu scriptures are they are forwarded to each other generation by word to word mouth to mouth even if you go right now in any any part of the namudris in the kerala state so you will find that they have been following till date even if you go to karnataka a village sanskrit they have a uh, giving it by mouth to one of the students disciples every time so you can say that you want evidence you want paper you want this wagera when did the paper invent When no, no, the, hold, uh, on, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. We are no, not saying no, anything. No. The claim, the claim is yours. If you're, if you're claiming that is preserved, claim is mine. Just, means I have not claimed it. Understand? If you I let me finish, claimed. you, if you let me finish trying. without interjecting. Then okay. you'll understand the question. Okay. So, go ahead, go ahead. Go for go you ahead. to ask us, okay, when was paper invented? When was um, the animal skin available? All this is not none of our concern. You see, this is something that you have to deal with. if you are going to say that mm-hmm. it is preserved only orally then give us the basis of that just be claiming that it is preserved right. orally doesn't doesn't mean it's preserved okay okay because okay, there's a okay. there's a problem no there's a problem called the chinese whispers have you heard of it yeah mm. do you know what chinese whispers okay. are yeah i have heard it i am okay. uh, what, what is chinese that? whispers so so you want to divert the topic whisper? from the fact i don't what think you know It's not, not divert. Uh-huh. It's yeah. very relevant to this topic. Absolutely, it's yeah. crucial for okay. oral tradition. If, If you don't know, just say it. I don't know. You know, there's no need to be arrogant about it. Just say I don't know. In but, fact, saying I don't know is one of the best can... things you can do if you don't know. Which is what you said in See, the very beginning you... that surrender and leave your ego okay. to understand. Uh, yeah. If you, if you guys talk, can I talk? Sure. 
so it is like you see it gets distorted while saying to one to another that yes. is what you are trying to achieve right yes is it relevant to the topic okay. so listen 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 to me let me complete okay. so there are there are ways of saying vedas if you want i will share you minimum 10 to 15 videos how to say no, a no, veda no, no, to share the videos the just give us okay. how how so, do you prevent this chinese whispers from happening when it's only orally transmitted that's what the uniqueness of the vedas are so, so the people have got a perfect method to yes. memorize it so still it is going on i've given you two examples one is namudris in south you go now you can find it anybody any you can claim it i will give you a research paper from the uh, university of uh, us origin who have done the research on the nambudris and come came to the conclusion that these guys hey, what mudris what are these mudris what are mudris nambudris 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 n a m yeah these are the people who have the oldest way of doing the following the uh, vedas vedas have okay, been divided so are they like part. the are they like the hafiz who memorize the quran yeah. uh, in islam are they no. similar to that I don't know. I don't know about them. I don't know about Hafiz. You know, it, I know about the, the way the Muslims I preserve the Quran. Chandra, is, no, it's memorizing it. Yeah. No. So the way they are Chandra, doing it. Chandra, like uh, it has... I have you. Chandra, Chandra, just a minute. Chandra, sorry, brother. Sorry. Oh, Chandra. Alone. Yeah. Go ahead. I haven't go seen. Ahead. I haven't seen. Yeah. I haven't seen any Hindu in my entire life who has memorized four Vedas word to word, cover to cover. But. In Muslim, we have a tradition of memorizing letter to letter, so word to word, cover by cover. In your life, that is what. Yes. You, you have met very just less a, people just in your minute, life. Just, 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 just a minute, brother. Just a minute, brother. If we just, if we just comment in the comments session that how many halfes are present here, can you come up? So I am sure, like, pretty four or five people can come up on the stage and recite Everybody you. Everybody doesn't have if this you kind try of to, time to sit and listen. Just a, just, just a minute. Just a minute. Let me complete. In my entire life, I have done many streams. I am talking about the Hindu scripture from like past two, three years. No, you are very I haven't new, come across that. Chandra, Chandra, Chandra. Does it matter? Does it, let, me, let me complete. Let me complete. Let me complete. Let me complete. Brother. Why are you interjecting? Chandra, 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 let You were saying that you talk. Now let him talk. Yeah, one at a time. That yeah, way brother. we can have a more productive discussion, inshallah. Yeah. Carry on, Samia. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't I haven't met any pundit or scholar even on the YouTube who has memorized four Vedas and being recited throughout it. I haven't I haven't seen in my life even on the YouTube. So you don't have the you don't have the oral tradition, right? And you're talking about the brick box and you're talking about the paper preservation when the paper got invented. Sorry, brother, you have Sheila Lakes as well. The mantras, the Sanskrit language. The Pali Lipi has been written and engraved on stones. They have been a lot of stones preserved in the Manuscript, Manuscripts Institute as, a, as an evidence that uh, earlier people, like 2000 years, 2500 years before, people used to engrave the writings of Sanskrit, other manuscripts of Buddhism uh, in, in, uh, uh, on Shila Lakes, on the stone engraving. So why don't we get any, any Shila Lake of Ved till now? Forget about the paper. I know paper won't last for like uh, more than 400 years, 500 years, 1000 years. What about the stones? Stone has, uh, a, let, ha, has a potential. Yeah. yeah. Let, let Chandra respond to that. Chandra, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay. So I have listened to Sam that he's trying to say that uh, it is nowhere written in the, uh, what you say, a paper or any kind of thing. Or uh, you want in temples, right? I I will say that you have to move out of the room. Or you can follow Mr. Praveen Mohan, who is on the YouTuber, who goes to every rich, like a holistic sites of temples, where he will point out mm -hmm. what it is there. So what mm -hmm. entire Mahabharat, entire Mahabharat, you won't find any word. You will find every scripture. It is Vedas, 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 Vedas. I'm talking about the Vedas. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm talking. We are talking about the Vedas, the main book, the Shruti. Okay. Ma Ma so, uh, Mahabharat, so, has, been, uh, so, Mahabharat has been Mahabharat has been corrupted. 
Shruti yeah. itself, it is said that it is Shruti's definition. You can Google it. What is Veda Shruti's? So it is what is remembered. It is not something it is written. No, 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 no. You can't. In Shri Mat Bhagwatam. Your... In Shri Mat Bhagwatam. Yeah. What yeah. do I in cannot Mat say? Bhagwatam, it's a, See, in Shri Mat Bhagwatam, it's a. Sitting in four by four room. It's a... Sitting in a four by four oh, room brother. and brother, saying that brother, it is brother. not there. It's written. It is very easy. Vedas. It Vedas. Is very easy. Brother. ंगेमर No no, 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 no. no <laughs> you don't know what the meaning of Shruti is. Exactly. What is heard is Shruti. What is remembered is Smriti. Smriti, right? Mm. You don't know the basics, my friend. And you're telling us four by four room, and you're sitting. Come on. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You, you, you have got the context of Shruti and Smriti, right? Do you acknowledge so, you were wrong? Uh, do. For do you what? acknowledge you were wrong? Your, no, your I'm not wrong. Of Shruti. Still. Okay. You, you Still. are an arrogant Still. person. Bye, bye. Right. And this guy, dark. Okay. Thank you. Well, first thing yes. I want to say is that you guys are Hindus. Thank you, brother. Without Shem. any Hindu on the panel. No problem. No problem. You we got arrogant people. Hinduism. They can remain back. Right. If and you don't even know the advantage. basics, yeah. okay. And after being corrected, not even acknowledging it, you know. Anyway, yeah. go here. Yeah, go this say... website. I'll show you these videos. I mean, that is the level of his research. This is called Google research. That's what they are. So it's either. WhatsApp universities or Google research. Right, you know, you're, you're, you're the only Hindu here now. Uh, do you want to defend yourself with regards to the preservation of the of of the scriptures? Do you think they are preserved? And if so, why? And one of well, the other I'm tactics saying... which I have seen, just a second. One of the other tactics which I have seen is they start talking talking simultaneously over talk, and then later, you know, they say we were not allowed to speak. Everybody was just bombarding over yeah, us, and yeah. you know. Four to four, four is to one, five is to one. I mean, give a break when somebody is talking. Have some courtesy and manners to just keep quiet and let the other person complete. They'll, they, when they don't have good arguments, that's their last tactic. Just simultaneously yeah. keep speaking. That's okay, yeah. Swati. So we got one Hindu remaining again. Uh, Doc, uh, do you want, do you want to add something? Am I clear? Yes, you are. Yes, brother. You do you get any proof, brother? Hinduism, being Muslims, but without any Hindu on the panel. You are the Hindu here. You're on the panel. What are you on about? No, like moderator. Listen, why would you have moderator? Why, do you think? <laughs> wait, wait. No, wait, wait. Why do you need another moderator? Do you think we have been unfair to anyone? Yeah, this is a discussion. No, like on. you should also discuss uh, discuss with a knowledgeable Hindu, right? Are you not knowledgeable? Are you not right? <laughs> Bring one. Bring like one. really knowledgeable. So okay, I'll tell you what. Look, if you don't, if you have nothing more to add, there are lots of other people waiting. Oh, no, I have say. Because uh, right now, what you're doing is, I'll tell you what. Write, chanting. write a complaint to dawawise at gmail dot com, and we'll <laughs> we'll review your complaint and get back to you. Okay, but right now, within a week, <laughs> you know, it's quite late in India. All these people are they they actually awake, and we should be thankful to for their patience. So don't delay. Lasting, lasting. I want to say lasting. Say again. Uh, I want to give a last proof. Is that fine? Last proof? You didn't give the first proof. When did you give the first one? That you've come to the last one. <laughs> okay, go go you on. Have you not read okay, the page okay. number eight? Ha have you say? Okay, what is on page number eight that we missed? Go on, read it. Read it to us. One second, one second. Yeah. <clears throat> Dava by his mistake that there is no learned or educated Hindu here. <laughs> That's a good news. Okay, uh, there's some Hindus in the background, or at least with Hindu names. If you do not switch on your camera, you guys won't be allowed on the panel. So you got and one minute, Vishnu Prabhakar. You got one uh, minute. Page number eight, it says on the fourth paragraph. I, I, just wait a minute, Doc. I'm yeah, really sorry. Amir Bhai, go ahead. I I just have five mi more minutes, then I will be leaving. Okay. Yeah, yeah, your yeah permission. Sure, Thank sure. You, sir. No problem. Jazakallah khair for your patience. No, can I read? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. This collection of Rig Veda manuscript is unique owing to the fact that it contains at least five manuscripts in bracket in which have preserved the complete text of the Rig Veda, which belongs to antiquity and certainly a lot later than the second millennium BCE. Okay, so which, uh, sorry, which, um, 
which is this way down which, which paragraph can you can paragraph. you can you give the reference for fifth saying page 8 the question of rigveda it starts is this about rigveda which one is it yeah yeah rigveda okay and what does page 8 say again can you which paragraph is it He's again uh, there, there are like to... sections 4.4, 4.1, 4.2. Which, yeah. which section, which uh, paragraph? Yeah. Why is it taking so much time for him? It's 4.2. Let me help you out, right? Is he consulting somebody at the back? Probably. Yeah. yeah. After an hour, he's come up with two lines. And now again, a pause. It's obvious when you get chits. If you know the context, if you read yourself, then you don't have you know have to wait that much yeah why are you waiting for so long you seem to be in such dark ignorance anyways brother hashim thank you so much uh, brother sam stalin especially dawa wise team doing such a great work alhamdulillah especially when now they are taking notice about the hinduism and the you know uh, the um, the human rights violations having in there so we yeah. must understand the hindu uh, philosophy and the vedic philosophy and we have to, you know, uh, 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 talk with them and have discourses with them. Alhamdulillah, it's helping uh, us Muslims to understand what's going on. Alhamdulillah. And uh, Absolutely, yeah. this is the only thing which uh, I think can get us closer to Allah. Alhamdulillah. And we can uh, feel blessed when we have the name of Islam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbi <coughs> Absolutely. And uh, Jazakallah khair, Amir Bhai, for your patience and for joining us. And uh, yeah, please do come again. You uh, you're welcome. Uh, to join our streams because we want you know the people in india they know the situation the people in india many of the muslims don't know about these things in fact many of the hindus don't know about the scriptures so this is mainly it's not to mock anyone it's not to make fun of anyone it's to verify and to understand through critical thinking what we know about different faiths and we do discuss christianity as well we discuss with the atheists we discuss uh, with with all of them it's not just we are targeting hindus here in fact uh, if you ask me the hindus are probably the least challenged on our platform ideologically exactly yeah. but, but the yeah. second thing right. is, we need to we need to this is the time need of time we need uh, to brother Hashim, may i ask something to the point wait a, wait a second. i'm leaving yeah. my brother this is my bottom line right so the thing is we need to equip our Muslim audience, Alhamdulillah, to get ready. And we need to aware our Hindu brothers and sisters or even non-Muslim brothers and sisters. That's all we can do it in the world. Yes. Thank you so much. Alaikum yeah. assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa Right. Uh, sorry, where were we? Yeah, Doc, you were saying something? He's still looking for help for the notes. Are Maybe you, you can come. He can come in another stream, brother, because I, I'm. I think clearly he's taking some notes or something. It doesn't take so much time. Yeah. Um. So we're going to close soon, anyway. It's. Uh, yeah. I don't think they're coming forward. Um. Listen, this Vishnu Prabhakar guy who keeps joining in the background. If you don't verify with your camera on, we can't let you on the panel. So make room for others, or we'll just have to remove you. And if you repeat it, you'll be blocked. So be careful. You got one minute to verify with your camera on, just briefly, and then switch it off. Only I can see; nobody else can see on the panel. Sure, if you're okay, that's fine. You're right. I'm talking to this guy in the background. Okay, uh, Doc, you got one minute as well. Uh, tell us what you want to say, so the the people don't feel we are removing all the Hindus. Okay, we want you guys to come forward and represent your faith. But do it sincerely, at least, please. That's all we ask. Well, I want to ask you, uh, can I replay this video and... Say again? Can I Sorry. replay this video? Replay can... this video? Which video? Yeah. This yeah, you video can do it, you can do it on your screen. You can always replay it. No problem. What but do don't do it right now here because proof. then it'll the voice will echo then. Yeah, yeah. Do it in your own um, with your own yeah. headphones on or something. No, oh, no. I said, can I review it again? Review? Yeah. What? what do you want to review? I will review. I will review this video again, and I will give okay, you okay. that video proofs. Next time, you mean? Is that what you say? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you can yeah. do that. No problem. There's no pressure. Okay, right. sleep well tonight. 
don't don't worry too much about it but yeah i mean that's fine no problem so if you're done for today we will let you go uh, okay. until next time okay all right take care bye bye take care brother thank you okay the chandra guy has come back shall we take him in or what do you guys want to do he is very arrogant brother he was just okay. making personal Let's attacks yeah. vishnu prabhakar once again if you don't verify with your camera on uh if you don't have a camera then just ask your question in the private chat and we will take it from there or you can give your comment in the private chat everybody has a camera in this day okay if you don't mm -hmm. have it on your on your laptop or on your uh pc you certainly have it on your phone so join in with your phone all right no excuses right um who was the other guy yeah faisal you've been waiting for a long time do you want to add something uh i just wanted to ask question from the uh the hindu guys yeah they are not uh, here sorry mate yeah i understand probably someone you know in the stream or if they review it uh, basically these are the questions for the preservation is, is it relevant to the topic yeah yeah certainly yeah okay it what's is. your question uh so basically when my question would be when they say when they believe that their books are preserved mm -hmm. then uh what i think what any reasonable person should look for is first of all like we discussed uh evidence of manuscript but we understand that uh, their civilization is very old and that sort of evidence is not possible uh, people also said that uh, they have uh, oral transmission so my question is majorly around that so uh, that would be around 150 transmitters i guess connecting us from today to back to like i don't know 1500 bc right so i don't know i would love to see like name and biography of these 150 people who who transmitted the these scriptures where they lived what they did uh, and all of, all of the basic information like all of the general information that, about them like uh, the reason i'm asking this is because this is how me personally or how we muslims basically accept any scripture to be true that's our standard of evidence and uh, i believe that should be a reasonable standard of evidence for anyone who believes that their book is from god so uh, i don't know if someone is listening or someone reviews the stream this is what they should be looking for around 150 people their name their uh, historical background good amount of history about them what they did and all of the things and if if we have that then i think we have some conversation to have but my friend they don't even have they don't even have the manuscripts so you're asking too much i understand them. yeah yeah i understand so uh, but then if if that is the case then uh, the question becomes that why are they even you know trying to make a square circle a square you know trying to square down a circle you see yeah they I'm can saying? they can attempt to do that but mostly is claims the thing is without yeah. evidence you know even if you claim that you have oral tradition there's still evidence required for that you can't just make a claim is oral traditions for thousands of years you know so, we yeah. have we have our an oral tradition as well in islam but exactly. for every oral tradition either hadith or the quran we have the chain of transmission and the chain of uh, narration uh, for the hadith for example uh, and we also have the biographies of every every link in the chain you know every person in the chain yeah from in the ilm ar-rijal this is a this, yeah. this is a compilation of all those people and the biography so we have yeah. enough evidence to support the claim both orally and written two modes of transmission and we have evidence for both do the hindus have the same so far we have not seen anything like that i mean this guy chandra came and he said he made a claim but so far there's no evidence so when you try to make a claim at least make sure you have the evidence that's okay. basically what i'm saying yeah that this is the standard of evidence that we have if if they yeah. do not be, bring something to fit the standard then it's as, as good as dirt to us to be fair yeah. i mean i'm being honest <laughs> Okay Faisal thanks for your input jazakallah khair you are so okay wa alaikum assalam right uh, who is it i think it was ex hindu suleiman yeah yes assalam alaikum guys how are all of you wa alaikum assalam wa alaikum assalam how are you 
I am fine too. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, so well, as far as preservation and authenticity of the Vedas are concerned, there has been a lot of extensive work done on it already by secular historians and uh, Indologists and all, uh, debunking the authenticity of the Vedas. But this problem with authenticity, brothers, it does not. It's not like restricted to the Vedas only. Even the scriptures which they like to claim, like uh, Bhagavad Gita, is supposedly the most popular uh, of all the Hindu scriptures, most widely read, I should say, and most widely claimed as such. But even in that, there is a huge problem with authenticity of the scripture, uh, as it is, uh, as we may know, that the Gita is a uh, part within the Mahabharata as such. It's the setting is obviously the uh, battlefield of Kurukshetra and. Uh, Krishna basically uh, motivating Arjun to perform his duty as a warrior. But what happens is after the battle entirely, and the reference for that is uh, it's the 14th parva of the Mahabharat, Ashwamedhika parva, chapter number 16. Over there, Arjun basically forgets portions of the Gita. So he asks Krishna that, uh, Krishna, could you please repeat uh, certain portions of the Gita because I have seemed to have forgotten it. So now going by the logic that our Hindu brothers present that Krishna is the incarnate God, he should be able to recollect verbatim because it was supposedly his own revelation. But he says that I am not able to recollect it right now. And he in turn blames Arjun that you are forgetful and your attentiveness is not uh, up to the mark and you did not learn properly from me. And in fact, uh, if you look at the Hindi translation of this particular, uh, what do you say, uh, incident, uh, Krishna says ki main usko yaad karne mein asamartha hun. So God basically saying that he is uh, incompetent or not able to recollect his own revelation. I mean that <laughs> that puts a huge question mark on the authenticity of even that scripture uh, and not to mention the divinity of Krishna himself which is not a topic that we are discussing. And uh, as Sister Swati mentioned in uh, chapter 2 verse 41 and 42 of the Gita the importance of the Vedas is undermined. Absolutely but to, undermined, yeah. Yeah. But coming to chapter 15, verse 15, Krishna says, I am to be known through the Vedas and I am the knower of the Vedas. So, okay, he's undermining a book through which he is supposed to be known. Uh, yeah. That kind of does not compute at all. Then speaking of the other epics, uh, that is uh, the Ramayana, of course, and there are multiple versions of that. Uh, the two most authoritative for Hindus are uh, Valmiki Ramayana and the Ramcharit Manas. So there are a few minor contradictions in two of these as well. Like according to the Valmiki Ramayana, King Dashrath, uh, the father of Ram, had 350 wives. But according to the Ramcharit Manas, he had only three wives. Then uh, in the Valmiki Ramayana, this entire episode of, you know, uh, like uh, when Ram goes to hunt the golden deer and then Sita asks Lakshman to just go and protect Ram supposedly then uh, Lakshman drawing the Lakshman Rekha to protect Sita. That episode uh, like the Lakshman Rekha thing is not found in the Valmiki Ramayana. It's a later invention that came in in the Ram Charitmanas as such. Then one more interesting thing, Hinduism says that uh, the chronological order of the uh, incarnations of Vishnu, uh, like when you look at the two main incarnations, that is Ram and Krishna, then it is Ram, Krishna and Buddha. Buddha is the ninth one, Krishna is the eighth one and Ram is the seventh one. So we assume that the uh, narrative of the Ramayana uh, would be perfectly developed by the time of, uh, say, Buddha. But then Buddha, when he writes the Ramayana, uh, he used to write a lot of stories called the Jatak tales. So he wrote uh, a Jatak tale, uh, number 461, Jatak tale number 461. It's called the Buddhist Ramayana. Over there, he says that the birthplace of Ram was Varanasi. Whereas the Valmiki Ramayana says that the birthplace of Ram was Ayodhya. So, and, and Buddha, by the way, was from a royal family. So he would have received the best education that there is, that there was available at that particular time. So even centuries after the supposed incident occurred, the narrative of the Ramayana was not as fully developed as it is currently. So there's no authenticity at all, to put it simply.
so major texts have major contradictions and problems basically of hinduism yeah. yeah yeah and plus going on to the jain ramayan the jain ramayan says that lakshman is the one who ended up killing ravan and that uh, ram ended up uh, becoming a saint after the entire war so right. yeah so filled with contradictions literally yeah. okay. and so you're saying in the fact, jain ramayan is different how many ramayans are there is it true more there than, are 40 40 different more, ramayans for more than 300 Uh, I think there's one Ramayan which also says Sita was the daughter of Ravan. Yeah, more than three hundred Ramayana. Yeah, more. And in Ban, she was the sister of Ram. I mean, how woke was she? If I may expand a bit more on the Ramayan written by the Buddha, uh, over there there is no evidence, like there is no mention of Sri Lanka, there is no uh, mention of uh, abduction, nothing of that sort. Just a uh, Exile nine years after which Sita and Lakshman come back. Ram comes back after completing the full fourteen years, whereas in the Hindu versions of the Ramayana, all three of them come back together. So Buddhist Ramayana, which is supposedly written by the same person, because Hindus believe Buddha and Ram ultimately are the incarnation of Vishnu, so they are the same person. So the same person who who apparently experienced all those incidents. reports like just 30% of what the hindus today believe in so yeah that's what it is and in fact the in the gita krishna claims that i am not like other beings i can remember my previous births so he clearly did not remember his previous birth in this case yeah all right thanks for sharing that uh, shoaib have you got anything to add yeah means uh, basically uh, when people say hindu first of all sorry assalam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh wa alaikum assalam the first thing like uh, generally hindu say they have like oral tradition of vedas if you have to ask okay when was the first time vedas was given they will say start of the mankind so when was the start of the mankind as per vedas there are like four yugas satyug treta yug dwapar yug and then kali yug and the ratio of those yugs are 4 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1 and as per their vedas the kali yuga started like 3000 bc so if you add uh, it was uh, satyug happened like 17 lakh 28 year thousands years ago so is it really at that time sanskrit was there and it was like uh, getting orally transmitted for 17 lakh years and even if they say okay that's fine uh, they uh, we can ask uh, for like uh, ramayan or mahabharat they ask if this is a true or just like the like a mythological text so they will surely say no it's a history so as per the vedas timeline of you know uh, the yugas so mahabharat just happened where at that time there was the indus valley so do indus valley have anything related to mahabharat or ramayan no they don't so how can they claim it was you know Uh, another thing like uh, there's one more thing they claim there are two separate accounts so on the uh, like a uh, dating back of that ram setu which is between india and sri lanka right they say okay ramayan happened like 7000 years ago because the stones on that particular bridge are like 7000 years old nearby uh, according the carbon dating but if you take that 7000 years uh, timeline then your vedas are wrong because the vedas timeline of a yug is very different Right. Mm. So Have you been movie? watching that from the Bollywood? Maybe <laughs> they, they made a video about it. Uh, sorry, a movie about Ram Setu, isn't it? Yeah, they, yeah. they made it. Yeah, uh, one person called it like uh, it. My it was my personal experience. It all happened. What do you mean your personal experience? You actually went there? Uh, yeah, there was a actually a, the real archaeologist, archaeologist, right? So he said uh, this story is based on my life story. Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> so he was, a, he was an oceanographer or something. Yeah, he was a, like uh, I think yeah he was trying to say there's no Ram or maybe some personal experience happened to him yeah, and they just not, yeah. uh, like it's, it's added crazy. a lot of things you know in the movies which are not there for sure. Uh, that yeah, movie I mean, is a big flop. Nobody nobody watched it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the way it was uh, highly jingoistic in yeah. nature, yet no one watched it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, mean, I think that is, you know, to be honest with you, most of these guys who come with this uh, flawed information, it's either from some YouTube video, some website, 
or yeah. some bollywood movie you know whatsapp and then they start believing that's all the that. biggest source of information WhatsApp yeah exactly yeah. like the guy he gave but the, the whatsapp uh, also they come from these things isn't it yeah. yeah the guy he gave the link yeah. it is a link from the quora app. so any can uh, one write anything on the quora app website I yeah, can yeah write of course quora and... is even worse than wikipedia because any tom dick and harry can write there no exactly. no one no one even checks for validity it's just people's opinions yeah and that's uh, where mr ravi what's his name sami used to hang around uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah right uh, any other points you guys want to raise i want to bring in uh, fakar here fakar gayur yeah means as per like hindus there was a khand bharat right and indus valley was part of the bharat means do they see any symbol anything sanskrit or any dravidian language over there in indus valley no my friend forget about indus valley they are claiming dwarka the place where krishna is not a single name of krishna is found in the entire dwarka okay not a single yeah. archaeological evidence yeah. to prove anything that they claim about krishna none of it and dwarka is actually where well, is it gujarat isn't it yeah and that's this that's is in india yeah. present day india yeah and they even even the, they have they have given up excavation over there because they know this is flawed probably that's a reason oh yeah I means they say a lot of things like uh, afghanistan yeah. is a city like kandhar right so mahabharat has a city called name uh, gandhar so they say it was the same thing yeah okay uh, this guy islam is in the background are you a hindu can you just write your response in the you're not a hindu what are you uh brother hashim uh, may i just uh, add something like uh, brother daniel in the very okay. beginning of the stream mentioned some uh, right, yeah. erroneous claims that are made by internet hindus Thanks, guys. Yeah. okay you can switch off your camera now that's fine yeah, sorry uh, ex hindu uh, so, can i just call you suleiman yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah no it's problem. much easier okay so suleiman yeah. um Yeah, I mean, mashallah. Thanks for sharing those uh, nuggets of uh, knowledge, mashallah, with us. Uh, it looks like no Hindus want to come forward, so I don't know. Shall we carry on with this stream, or you guys want to end it? Maybe we can close it then if the, none of the Hindus are coming. Because yeah. what we have yeah. we basically come out with is that neither normatively, you know, in terms of conceptually, theoretically, there's a lot of loopholes which have been there. Neither empirically they could come out with any evidence of this of the preservation of it. And this entire, you know, they couldn't even explain why. Because any time we come out and you know give any particular words, they always say we have to sanctify from Vedas. And now we have seen what is actually the reputation of Vedas in the eyes of the incarnation of Vishnu, who has come. come from brahman who yeah. himself says that vedas are just you know for people of low small knowledge small intellect and they will not even get salvation it's just flary words so then okay. if it's like that then what's the fuss about it <laughs> i mean let it be then absolutely yeah. so we're going to close the stream now we're not taking any more um guests uh, we got just two more people uh, in the background brother there brother hashim may i just add something for two minutes yeah yeah sure you can yes i'm just going to add these two here uh, so no more uh guess anymore you guys can uh, give your last words last thoughts yeah. whatever yeah go ahead suleiman yeah okay so uh, brother daniel uh, mentioned in the very beginning of the stream that uh, a lot of these uh, hindutva ideology people tend to make erroneous claims that ancient hindus developed spacecrafts internet and stuff when well, yeah. just three instances from the ramayana i'll point out uh, and mention how so called uh, science during those times was uh, prevalent mm -hmm. so when uh, sita ram and lakshman leave ayodhya uh, for their exile apparently sita prays to the river the river ganga uh, please uh, that the river should allow them to sail in a safe manner compare uh, yeah and this is from i think ayodhya kand chapter 52 verse number 82 and 83 uh compare it with the quran surah rum ayat number 46 which clearly says that it's the uh, that it's allah who blows the winds which makes the boats and the ships sail point number 1 point number 2 in uh, bal kand chapter number 40 uh, verses 15 to 20 uh, the valmiki ramayan mentions that uh, the earth is situated on elephants and when the elephant shakes its head that's what yeah. leads to the earthquake comparing uh, it with the quran surah lukman uh, surah 31 ayat number 10 it says that we created the earth without any pillars or support that was the second point and uh, 
I kind of forgot what the third point was, but yeah, this is just to show how so-called Vedic science was advanced in those days. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the claim, this is another claim they make that, oh, so they created the internet scientific. and nuclear bombs and whatnot, yet could not find out as to what's the source behind a boat sailing. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They Pretty claim awesome. Hinduism is the most scientific uh, religion or most scientific dharma whatever they would mm -hmm. call it when you start reading the vedas or their upanishads or the puranas you know everything all those claims just go down the drain you can't even prove how old your 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 scriptures are or whether they even preserve let alone anything else yeah and it's become especially dangerous in this period brother because uh, under this current government you have pseudo science and a lot of uh, an intellectual kind of comments being promoted like cow urine has medicinal value and stuff like that whereas biologists yeah. confirmed that there is a high risk of for those who drink cow urine bacterial infection and whatnot uh, there is such a risk while consuming cow urine and also yeah. it's especially dangerous in this period but right now the biggest export is yoga yeah 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 and, and if you look the benefits of which are Muslims. not exclusive by the way yeah yeah you can if, get if there are any benefits. muslims out there and you you think yoga is just an exercise look it's at not. every single um exactly. you know the, the way they stand the way they lie down you know all the all those expressions are a form of worship of their yes. gods and goddesses in fact one of the uh, exercises is called surya namaskar that is uh, yeah, giving absolutely. namaskar yeah. to the sun and in fact, you know, one interesting thing, Mr. Ben Shapiro, who's Jewish, he mm -hmm. called yoga as satanic. So, yeah, right yes. wing Hindus do like to simp for Jews. So, I it is sinful. Yeah, I mean, look, even yeah. even if you even if you say you don't repeat the mantras that they repeat, your actions itself is showing that you are mm. somehow, you know, you're you're not exactly a devotee, but you 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 is a form of adoration. Yeah. You know, like like Brother Suleiman said, you know, the Surya, um, what Surya is it called again? Yeah. Surya Namaskar. Surya Nam Namaskar is, is, is a Going form. Going before the sun. It's, it's like, you know, we, we have actions in, the, in, in our Salah. Yeah. So, for example, you have Sujood yeah. and you have Ruku. These are clear actions. So, even if you don't say anything or people, when they don't hear you saying, Subhana Rabbi al or Subhana Rabbi al -Azim, Yes. People know you're praying. They will see you and they'll say mm. you're praying. Okay. Similarly, when the Hindus see you guys doing yoga, they, they get happy because <laughs> you're you're actually a yeah. it's form of adoration of their gods and goddesses, even if you don't repeat the mantra, because the action itself signifies that. So exactly. most people do it out of ignorance, and they say it's just yeah. a form of exercise. I'm just doing few stretches. Even from a scientific point of view, the benefits yeah. of yoga are not exclusive. You can get those benefits in literally any other exercise that is yeah. available. Yeah, I mean, stretching is not exactly what do you say new. It's been there for yeah. years. Different forms of exercise. I mean, they they might claim there are some benefits. Well, there are benefits in alcohol as well. Okay, but it's still haram in the Quran. Yeah. Right. So any form of shirk, do not approach it. Yes, all those brothers and sisters who think you're performing yoga and doing exercise, uh, you have been duped. And this is exactly the reason these Hare Krishnas or whoever in the United States or in, in Europe, they have made yoga so popular that people think it's just exercise. And to be honest, you know, it's, it's actually an insult to you guys. If there is international yoga, yoga day which has been celebrated now. yeah yeah if yeah. you think yoga is a form of worship and then you export it outside and the way the, the entire spirituality has been taken away from it so your form of worship has been degraded to just a few movements and exercises okay so it's nothing to be proud of even if the hindus think oh everyone is practicing our yoga it's not like exactly, nothing to be yeah. proud of, to be honest. If it is, it's if been, it is to it's be been marketed, divorced of any spirituality in its purest form, right? Like with the entire purpose of that. Yeah, yeah. it defeats the purpose of, of the worship if there was any. Right. Uh, Shoaib, you got anything else to add? Just one thing for Sam, brother. Uh, means uh, I started to watch his streams recently. I really like them. Maybe like he can add one more thing in Sartan Sejuda <laughs> when Shri Krishna killed the Sishupal. Just for running his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. There are many verses of that. Yeah. Thank you yeah, so much, brother. Fakhar, you've been quiet very long. We asked you how you're doing. You didn't answer. Is your Rakhla microphone Rakhla. working? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. 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 Wa alaikum salam.
actually what? i was listening brother suleiman <laughs> so it was he was giving very informative <laughs> knowledge and uh, i have two things i am continuously listening whenever you have the lectures on hinduism although i am also listening sam bhai and uh, all the episodes of uh, in uh, amir bhai uh, i am the regular uh, listener of iman union and also i have the youtube channel with this name for the youth where i used to paste uh, this upload videos of sam bhai and amir hak bhai uh, i have some suggestions for sister <laughs> swati although she uh, brother to- brother hold on hold on you know the reason you came to this stream i was hoping you would add something with regards to the yes, topic I, if you just I want to if you just want to give advice or something you can go to swati's no, no, uh, i guess because, YouTube because channel and make a comment uh, there inshallah sir swati is rebuttaling so we most of the time get confused that uh, when she posed the question and then i uh, most of the time understood oh this is a good question but we didn't get the answer uh, from we the get the answers side. don't That's worry hinduism. we get the answers on hinduism so <laughs> if she can just uh, maybe she break. she speaks too fast uh, sometimes you know oh you, because you, i don't want to waste the time <laughs> yeah you, you have, you have I, to I, you have to watch it in 0.5 or something i don't know on our own youtube <laughs> channel so that we can get this information in a flow no because actually the thing is brother i post those questions to the guests who come but i yeah. don't receive the answer that's the irony of it so i want them to give me the answers that's the thing i don't want to give those answers <laughs> myself well, and that's the only thing unfortunate the very logical but, like, questions and uh, when they don't give the answer but they just run away and start bringing something else because just in this stream i was listening from the uh, first minute uh, when you started asking very great questions uh, at that time we find them very logical but for us who are learning this uh, uh, hinduism uh, like how to rebuttal and how to pose the question it will be very helpful for us if you will just elaborate something bring the answers you know what brother i would just suggest that if you just if you just listen very carefully most of the times those questions have inherent within it the answers if somebody could just figure out and uh, you know see the the it's like it's like question come observation come kind of you know it's like a hint to them that see this is what it is use your brains some rationality and the answer is it's 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 just there within it it's like a kind of sarcasm only so um so in that as so that's the kind of thing yeah and sometimes the questions yeah. are rhetorical yeah okay yeah, yeah, we are learning very i have learned a lot from this dawa wise uh, when i started listening if you want to learn about this topic then go to brother sam's channel mashallah he does he yeah, and amir amir had both of them they do they do an amazing yeah. work with regards to this topic they much more points I understood a lot about how Vedas are doing, but I have one question because there is something confusing that I am not getting clarity. Uh, uh, whether Sam can give answers so that uh, it will help me to understand this mythology. Okay, go uh, ahead. Go ahead. Actually, yeah. Uh, I will get back to him just quickly. Yeah. Who is the Brahmana? Who is or who is the Buddha? Uh, what is difference between this them? Because most of the time they say Brahmana is the god and he is the higher god and sometimes some says buddha is the god and others are the incarnation so i want to understand this concept no hindu says yeah no hindu says buddha is god no hindu on yeah, the planet earth generally says that uh, buddha is an avatar and uh, as it may be like mainstream. many many people yeah many people yeah, deny the, in- even the buddha is the avatar and few people uh, uh, accept that buddha is the avatar of vishnu the last avatar yeah so what is chronological order in this uh, thing uh, brother you do one thing you can you can brother brother you can call me on uh, instagram and i'll give you answer for your all questions thank so this you, uh, stream you. is about the I'm, preservation of vedas and uh, i am sending you uh, some videos but i will call from that instagram id i think you might have okay you, yeah, sure. you are seeing my videos there but uh, there okay okay from this you do okay thank you thank you for thank you so much brother thank you so thank you brother wa alaikum assalam wa alaikum assalam assalam alaikum elias brother wa alaikum assalam 
I will leave, brothers and sisters. How are you guys? Thanks for taking me in. Assalamualaikum. Uh, Barak. Barak. Assalamualaikum. Yes, brother. Brother, do you have so anything to say Sam, about uh, today's uh, today's stream? Brother, I have, I have a question for you, uh, and an observation that uh, we don't find much Hindus, you know, who can come in these kind of streams, your stream and this stream and Amir Bhai's streams, and they will defend their beliefs. We don't find much. I saw some people who come to your streams, but and Amir Bhai's streams, but they, you know, usually they abuse and they run away. There are very few decent people that they will come and they yeah. will defend their beliefs. I mean, they have their own channels. They sit in the mm -hmm. echo chambers and, you know, they do, you know, uh, reaction yeah. streams. <laughs> yeah, you do everything. That, I mean, that's they, pretty they much do, true for they, all Islamophobes, like even yeah, Islamophobic Christians and all. They prove everything in the echo chambers when nobody is, uh, you know, uh, questioning them. But when it's yeah. come to defend their yeah. beliefs, they just, and, 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 uh, they just run away. It's like um, day before yesterday. Uh, it, well, it, he was an atheist, to be fair. Uh, Kaisal Bhai asked him, why don't you defend your uh, atheism? He said, oh, I don't have anything to defend. I mean, <laughs> it's, I mean, I think Hindus yeah. are like uh, this too. I mean, when it's come to defend, they just run away. They don't defend. Why they, is they that? Just, uh, they just, the person? The, every why ideology. Yeah, I'll, I'll just answer you. Every ideology is scared to defend themselves. They are just good in attacking Islam. When we question about uh, their ideology, they just run. So only Muslims and, uh, on the face Sam, of earth, Muslims are the yeah. only people. Brother, you're interrupting me, sorry. So yeah. on the face of earth, only Muslim who is able to defend their ideology 100%. We tell them, come, ask us question and allow us to ask a question about your ideology too. They just want to ask question, but they don't want to answer. This is the cowardness and this is the uh, holes in their ideology, which uh, hold them back uh, uh, and make them run from answering any question of us. Yeah, as simple as that, brother. And that's... Brother, really, that... yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, please, please go ahead, please. I was just saying that that's something which is which has become like a norm now. You know, they just send one or two people here and there so that they can uh, pose some questions, and then uh, they don't they don't have uh, like uh, you know back and forth conversation like that. They just they just even if very few Hindus that we find you who come usually there's not a very intelligent conversation which takes place. It's later that they sit on their streams and then you know among their own folks they try to then you know bring out whatever like kind of a mockery kind of a thing which they make out of it because i think maybe the major major reason could be that this entire whatever like culture philosophy way of life religion whatever it is 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 inherently very very flawed there are because of that they are not able to give those responses then and there you know to have an intelligent conversation then and there that's why they have to go back and then look for you know whatever how do we now answer it how do we respond to it and then later they make streams like that and whatever mm. like take viewerships etc otherwise these are very simple plain questions that we usually pose the the con beat conceptual questions beat empirical questions anybody who has a very strong core you know uh, ideology should be able to respond it intelligently in the conversation but most of the time we don't see that happening that's precisely exactly. because yeah b b because there's a lot of inconsistencies which is present within this and especially what we see with uh, with these kind of people is that uh, even when they do engage with muslims on their platforms they engage with Muslims who are not so learned about Islam. <laughs> yeah. and, and they bomb five, six of them, they bombard them with uh, various questions and then they kick them out of the stream and say, yeah, see, no Muslim could answer uh, our questions. So they don't even engage uh, learned Muslims, so to speak. Oh, well, the yeah. funny thing is, uh, sister, when Sam by or Ahmed by talks about Arya Samajis and some uh, uh, Hindu come on their stream, they will ask him, are you Arya Samaji? He will say, no, I'm, I'm a Sanatani, a simple Sanatani. Mm. And when they will, uh, you know, talk about the Sanatani, a Bola Sanatani, which Samba used to call, they say, no, I am Gnostic. So 
Yeah. You know, yeah. and you, if somebody asked him, do you believe in Purana? He said, no, I believe, I believe in Vedas. So, okay. If some uh, somebody pointed out some contradiction in Vedas, he said, no, it's, yeah, that's how they I don't believe. If, if some, yeah, if something is wrong in Vedas, I'm not going to accept it. So somebody asked him, so how are you you're going to judge what is wrong in Vedas, what is not? This is a contradiction. He said, I will use my reason. This all subjectivity, nonsense. This is all, you know, a dhan, the, the conjecture, he is saying. They don't have anything. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there is no consistency at all. So that's, that's, I think that's one of the reasons. They had a very good chance this time again. Sam had done so many like chapters of that series where they had to prove the manuscript 0.1% or whatever they couldn't. Here they had another alternative. They could have come and sort of made the clarifications of the preservation. They were not able to. None of them come. And then maybe the lamest of the excuses, oh, it was a weekday and it was done during whatever, like night time. So we were not able to. Then when do we do it? During the daytime, everybody is, you know, busy with their own works and course. So that's the only time which on where, you know, mostly people are back home. So it's like, it's just lame excuses which are there. Somebody who has to give the responses, they do that. So, yeah. And plus, uh, brother Sam okay, has been having a back and forth with a Hindu YouTuber since past few days, and still that guy has not accepted the debate offer. Am I right, <laughs> brother Sam? Or is there any change? Uh, yeah, no, they don't. They don't understand, brother. As expected. Yeah. Assalamualaikum, brother. So yes, brother. It's a. Uh, Waalaikum uh, assalam, brother. Uh, I just have a small question for the panel. Um, yeah. Do we see any remnants of uh, Tawheed or claims of Nubuwa or about uh, beliefs that coincide with Islam in the Hindu scriptures? Remnants? Is um, Tawheed mentioned in the Hindu scripture you're talking about? Yeah. Mm. Tawheed or Nubuwa or Risala? Yes, of course. Or, can you give uh, us some examples uh, if, if so? No, the, the, the concept of a Risala is a little bit different. Uh, they don't have the concept of Risala, but yes, they do have a concept of Tawheed, oneness of Allah, believing in one God, worshipping in one God. So the Vedas and Upanishads are very clear cut. They say it's to worship one. So yes, of course, yes. Tawheed is mentioned there. And even in the also, Gita, but it's not very. Really, I I yeah. would I I I have a slight disagreement that it's not very consistent and pure in even in Vedas because again mm. there are a lot of natural forces you know in Ravayu, yeah. Agni etc. When these come and then they, they say no, it's all about Karim Kant and a lot of mantras which are there. So it's not even that clear cut pure Tawheed which is there of just the Brahman that you have to. So that's so that's why and that's the reason why it got so corrupted. And then again Brahman incarnation in terms of Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh and then which take further forms etc. So that Brahman is not isolated pure version which is there. That's the problem. You know it okay. gets it has got a lot of entanglement which has then again distorted the entire idea. So we don't find pure idea of Tawheed in that sense in Vedas also. Okay. Um, and one more question. Would you say that the Hindu religion in general is uh, it's completely fabricated or could it be something that's uh, changed from what Allah revealed to the prophets or what is the opinion? Yeah, corruption has been taken place in every religion, but Hinduism is corrupted to its core. Like I have done a couple of streams on uh, proving authenticity of Vedas uh, with one person, just one person authenticity they fail to prove even 1% of authenticity of Vedas with the help of manuscripts and novel tradition. So it is pre pretty clear that uh, uh, they, we won't be finding any authenticity of Vedas, even mm. to 1%. To the extent that they even say that it is not, to the extent that, you know, some of the very well-known scholarly people even say that these scriptures which are there, these Shastra which are there, they, they don't come from God. You know, they go to that extent of saying that that, that they are not coming from God. They, they themselves say that, you know, these are just uh, humans who have meditated, whatever, and got 
through their through their intellect and through their meditation they've received it and one school of thought i'm talking about and that that's how they have received and that's what they have written and because it's human who have done it so which is why we can always keep you know sort of renewing reforming changing this mm-hmm. and this entire nyai school here yeah. yeah and there are many hindus who says that uh, uh, hinduism is uh, not based on any book it's based mm-hmm. on our ideas how we how we how we believe and how we treat other people so they reject their own scriptures because they know that their scriptures are not authentic and and yeah. such people are called demonic by the way by krishna in bhagavad gita yeah, chapter by, 16 verse exactly. 23 yeah exactly yeah. even so, manushruti would say that yeah, we, we are... yeah. so may i answer brother elias's question actually so like about tawhid and yeah okay. Yeah so, yeah please go yeah, uh, in the gita you see in chapter 18 verse 61 and 62 krishna also says surrender to the almighty lord so yeah, yeah there is some remnants of tawhid but it's a highly corrupted one i won't even call it tawhid as such and uh, uh, did uh, was could hinduism have been a result of revelation maybe maybe not cause none of the names of any indian prophet as such is mentioned in the quran so we can't authoritatively say that it was or it wasn't uh, but we do know that allah did send a messenger to every country and could have certainly sent it to india as well but we can't say it authoritatively since no indian yeah. prophet as such has been mentioned right and even when you had said no this thing point, of uh, uh, yeah that suleiman uh, just to say uh, brother this thing which you had said no that come to me like worship me which you had said of geeta i mean that's not about that one uh, like the way we talk about one allah it's it's not that he's saying hmm. come to me in terms of come to me as like whatever krishna so that's yeah. the thing you know he's talking about himself and he's saying i am brahma whereas he yeah. dies also he he goes through all the you know karms and the repercussions and consequences also so again again very inconsistent multiple thing. rebirths yeah. as well yes yeah so how can brahman have multiple rebirths so yeah. that's why that's why you know it's like just bits and pieces of it but when you try to study it and try to make some sense of it you absolutely go crazy with these texts and, and fact, perhaps the same the same book says that it's the imperfect beings who get stuck in this cycle of rebirth so is vishnu an imperfect being <laughs> Right. Uh, pretty confusing, yeah. Yeah, yeah lot of questions, <laughs> lot of such questions which are there inherent in this text. Um, I just have one point about uh, Brother Suleiman's. Um, we believe the Islamic position is that after Ibrahim al Islam, there has been no prophet except from his lineage. Um, so, would it be right to say that uh, there could have been a prophet in the Indian diaspora because? we do not uh, know if the people even existed before ibrahim or we could have had an ancestor that might coincide with some other population like the indo europeans or um the africans as well so would it make sense to say we might have had a prophet in india when we don't know the history of india before ibrahim al islam which could be roughly 4000 5000 years ago yeah there are some verses in quran as uh, matya purana it's uh, talk about a prophet uh, named as manu actually manu is uh, just a generic word for uh, a saint or a rishi or for us like a prophet so uh, matsya purana has a, a similar story of uh, nu ali salam which uh, mm. is mentioned in bible as well as in hadith and quran so we find the similar story in matsya purana as well and in one of our hadiths uh, we find a similar question uh, being raised on uh, indians it's one of the hadiths which says that on the day of judgment when everybody will be uh, standing before the lord allah and uh, all the prophets would be standing front and his genera- his uh, umma will be standing behind so uh, when when the angels would be asking uh, uh, nuh alaihi salam like uh, have you not informed your umma about uh, the allah and about yourself so nu alaihi salam would be saying that of course i have explained them about allah and uh, about myself but unfortunately the my umma has forgotten me forgotten my name you can ask them so the angels asked the, the umma of nu alaihi salam like uh, have you ever received any prophet to your nation 
so they said that we we don't have any uh, concept of profit we do not know any profit so then nuh alayhi salam says unfortunately my umma has forgotten my name um, if you doubt about that you can ask uh, the people of uh, muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam the umma of muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam they are the witness to it so we would be we would be uh, standing as a witness in front of allah and we would be saying yes allah we have given we have given your message to all hindus hindu brothers and whoever living around us uh, that uh, we have invited them to islam we have explained about the prophethood we have explained about you but these people rejected it so this is the one indirect hadith which uh, talks about the indian people and pointing out at hindus uh, representing no al islam yeah Barakallah, Fik. That's a very beneficial information. So, Brother Sam, uh, Sister Swati and Brother Hashim, I really want to appreciate your, uh, your efforts. And may Allah reward you in this world and after. I have learned a lot uh, from these streams. And uh, thank you very much. Barakallah, Fik. Welcome. Right. Uh, hope I would miss much. Uh, how just went stepped out from Maghrib. Yeah, he thought uh, so. That's all right. Uh, Kubeb Elias. Yes, he's asked. Yes, he's oh, asked. Oh, he's asked his, his question Kudab. already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 All right, so Kobeb, if you haven't got anything else, we'll just make way for other people. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Salaam alaikum. Right. Uh, Yeah, I think that's it because the other guy is waiting in the background except for Jonathan. Uh, I think he came before. I see. Yeah. Jonathan, do you want to verify yourself by showing your self in the camera in the background? Only I can see it. No one else can. I can't see you. It's dark. You need to switch on your light. The purpose of verification is so we can see you. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, uh, you can switch it off now. How are you doing there, Jonathan? You're right. All right. Uh, Sam by Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Q by sir, Sam by koi Q salam karne ka? Nee nee. Ab sab Sam by se like baat baar baat kar chuka nee isli. Oh, is it okay? Special case. Okay, go on. तो मेरा क्वेश्चन सेम भाई ऐसा है कि आपने एक बार यूनेस्को की एक वो नॉमिनेशन फॉर्म ब्रदर ब्रदर कैन स्पीक इन इंग्लिश दिस इज एन इंग्लिश इज एन इंग्लिश चैनल ओके ओके यू हैव टोल्ड नॉमिनेशन फॉर्म टू अस इन द पास्ट इन व्हिच यू सेड दैट मेनी ऑफ द मैन्युस्क्रिप्ट व्हिच आर फाउंडेड एंड कार्बन डेटेड बैक टू द पास्ट द ओल्डेस्ट वन वाज 1464 एडी but uh, in that menu, uh, in that nomination form it says uh, that there is a sage uh, his name is shank uh, i forgot his name but he, uh, he died in in 1387 ad so uh, one of the hindu uh, said to me that uh, if the oldest is 1464 then how can uh, the one who uh, did the commentary of the uh, rigveda died at the 1387 no no you, you should complain you yes coach No, no, you misunderstood what the fourteen sixty four means. Fourteen sixty four doesn't mean that's when the Rig Veda was written. That is mm-hmm. the yeah. earliest physical evidence that they have, which is a manuscript. Do you understand? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. We are not saying we are not saying the Rig Vedas were written in fourteen sixty four, but when we ask them for evidence, and the only thing they can show is this manuscript, which is mm-hmm. less than six hundred years old. Yeah. I I asked him the same question. Then he said uh, he showed me some letters of uh, uh, an emperor named Mitanni, and he said to me that uh, it's way older, like uh, BC, something around thousand uh, BC. And uh, in that letter, uh, some Ved- Vedic uh, uh, verses were written. Okay, so it wasn't Vedic. So Mitanni is actually Persian during the Persian times. Okay, mm-hmm. and what what happened is like they found some evidence of these gods which had similar Bogusik names. Boy. Yeah, they they had similar points basically. Uh, sorry, names. Uh, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to connect the two. Look, they have the same names. They have the same names. You know, mm-hmm. the term the term Allah existed before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah, the name definitely. of God. Yeah. That's the reason the name of his father was Abdullah. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
the servant mm-hmm. of Allah. Now, before Prophet, people will say, oh, before Prophet Muhammad Sallam, how can Allah exist? This is that kind of question. So just because the names match or the terms match, it doesn't imply that you're talking about the same uh, entity here. And even some of the names are not exactly the same. They might sound similar, but they're not exactly the same. And uh, I mean, it's it's like I said, even, look, this. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, brother. Yeah, e- even if the e- even if the names matches, that doesn't make uh, the entire two, 20,000 verses to be authentic. Just yeah, like exactly, if you yeah. find the just, just, just Surah, Bahra, Surah Bahra title in some of the manuscript, we cannot confirm that all entire the chapter, the verses uh, to be authentic by just yeah. uh, finding out the Surah Bahra. Right. Okay. Like for example, you know, they have the God, God called Varuna. The Persians at that time, yeah. they had someone called Orovna, which is completely yeah. different to Varuna. But the Hindus mm-hmm. say, no, it is similar. It sounds similar, so it must be the same. Okay. But they had someone called Indra, Indara, and they have Indra. So again, yes. like I said, yeah. it can it doesn't mean that it's 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 different. And it could be possible that the Hindus actually got the names from them. Yeah, yeah? that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So they are the original people... they are the original religion, which is a Persian religion at that time. And this is actually Eastern Syria, and uh, the kings had these names basically. Indo-Iranians, mm-hmm. you know, the Aryans, which you used to call. Yeah. But I think these, these are those kind of kings. So they copied it from them then, you can say. And they, they, and they never claimed to be Hindus. They did not have the same kind of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Okay, which are, their main, which are the main gods of the Hindus. So are the Hindus mm-hmm. saying that neither the Vedas yeah. have names like Krishna or Ram. And then they, they are your gods. Mm-hmm. So if they were really your gods, then the the main text like the Vedas should have these names, isn't it? Right. Bill. All right. Uh, is this your... Sam, bhai, uh, one more question is that uh, like a lot of Hindu friends of mine says to me that uh, our religion is so much spread around the world that uh, there, there are some uh, local deities in North American region and uh, even Egyptian region and around the globe, which story matches a lot with uh, the Hindu scriptures. So they say to, uh, say to me that uh, these stories and scriptures were uh, copied from us. So do you have any uh, thoughts about it? Like, what can you say about it? There is no proof, brother. As simple as yeah, it's, it's just claims, just claims. You know, yeah, it, at, least, at least the Egyptians, they preserved their history and they preserved what their gods' yeah. names are. Where are the evidence for the Hindus? Everybody else could preserve it except for the Hindus. Why? Mm-hmm. So next time, ask them this question. Whenever you hear any claim, the first thing you should do, whether it's, it's from a Muslim or from a Hindu, ask for the evidence, you know? And this is what Allah was... says in the Quran, you know, Hatta Burhan in Kuntum Sadikin. It's, it's clear. You provide yeah. the evidence if you are indeed truthful. So bring your evidence. And this claims they want to say that, oh, we were the only thing before. Everybody else copied us. <laughs> when we ask for evidence, they don't have nothing. <laughs> Zilch, even their own key scriptures, you know. Like for example, I gave them this uh, passage, uh, and it says that even God doesn't if, they don't know even if God created the universe. God himself is not sure about this. Can you believe it? Yeah. Now, how can, how can uh, God not be sure about his own creation? And there are so I, many mantras which are which are similar to this in Vedas if you go through that. Lot of ambiguity which is present. Manusmiti, uh, in some, some of the verses of Manusmiti, it quotes that uh, Brahman, the, like the uh, original God of them, uh, came, from a, came from an egg. So... Uh, can it be a reason that they uh, reject the manusmriti from it? The golden egg you're talking about? Yep, yep. Uh, an egg from which Brahman came and then he created the whole world. Yeah. So, so Brahman was born from an egg, like a chicken. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's I mean, like seriously, a... do, you, do they even believe these things? But it's mentioned, yeah. In one of the... Yes, yes, that's one of the theories. Okay. Right. Who, who came first, the egg or the Brahman? <laughs> I mean, honestly, you know, like this would be the next. You know, even... one thing. One thing I realize is that even though Brahma is one of the Trimurti, but he's right. been rejected as a god. Yeah. 
Right. Yes, and this this shows clearly that something went wrong because no one says that he's not part of the trimurti. He's definitely part of the trimurti, the Brahma, exactly. Vishnu, Shiva. Exactly. But he has been cursed to not to be worshipped ever. So that's Worship. the reason you don't find people yeah. worship Hindus worshiping him or even any yeah, temples. There are only his name, two you know? major temples. There is only two temples out one of is in Rajasthan. Yeah. And the other one is yeah. in Thailand. And I he's guess. the only one who keeps dying every kalp. So I mean, yeah. what the creator dying, the one who creates himself gets he gets the death. That's very absurd. I mean, they don't listen to themselves when they talk about this. Absolutely. All right, Jonathan, bye. Or kuch? No, or kuch. No, we said some Islamic questions, but we will do that later. Okay. 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 Right. Fine, um, we got three people in the background. Even though I've said I won't be taking any new, but since they're waiting, so guys, you wait, wait. The people waiting in the background, you need to verify with your videos on, and then we can bring you on the panel. Otherwise, we'll have to close. Inshallah. Okay. For Kanbai, are you there? You need to verify with your video on. Okay. Thank you, guys. I'll switch it off now, and I can bring you on. Unless you want to keep it on, it's up to you. Okay, so these are the last three guests, inshallah, and uh, we'll be closing after this, inshallah. Assalamualaikum. Right. Um, Waalaikum salam. How are you doing, Furkan? And Muhammad and. Assalamualaikum. Uh, Suhail, bye. Waalaikum salam. Waalaikum salam. Waalaikum salam. Right. Uh, so let let me start with Furkan. He said salam first. So Furkan, bye. You got uh, any points to make with uh, in yes, relation sir. to this topic? Uh, yes, sir. I just wanted to ask uh, Hindus uh, if uh, they they say that it's the oldest religion. How come Quranic manuscript, which was written much later, predates the Hindu manuscript by approximately 500 years? The Birmingham manuscript was carbon dated to 645 CE, and the yeah. earliest manuscript of Vedas is written in 11th century. How is this possible? Well, what what they will obviously they won't have any evidence to prove to you, so they will just make the claim. Oh, they are lost, or the papers disintegrated, or something like that. You know. So to you be know, honest, I mean, they won't have any evidence to show you anything older than that. You're absolutely right. The the Quranic manuscripts are much older than some of these so-called Vedas that they have. You know, you know, whenever a new invention is found, uh, almost every Sanatani says it was found. Uh, it was uh, first invented in India, in India, be it surgery, <laughs> airplanes, internet, cars. But the simple yeah. fact they, they invented they everything manage... except the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> everything <laughs> else was there except the toilet, you know. But Vedic manuscript isn't found anywhere. A yeah. simple parchment of Vedic manuscript. That's why I'm saying it's 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 very easy to make a claim, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and when you come that's... to proving it, that's why they fall apart. You know why Islam, Alhamdulillah, within 1400 years has become a universal religion. Look at Hinduism; it's still pretty much in India. Yeah, because people uh, yeah. when they read yeah. the books of Hadith and they read the Quran, they can resonate with it. Doesn't matter which background they come from. In India, yes. everything has to be pretty much Indic. You know, it has to be in that region, and even that they don't have evidence for it. They are so confused that they don't even know who the supreme god is. Every yeah. single sect within Hinduism have different gods. So if you are a members Vishnu, within then the Vishnu same is your family, main within the same home, pray to different. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah, I can attest to that. Like when yeah. I was a Hindu, of course. Absolutely. Uh, that's yeah. why uh, many uh, and they can change as well. You know, like one month they feel like, oh, hold on, actually this Vishnu guy is not giving me much, so let me switch over to Shiva. Which is why so many festivals. You know, no like it's it's, it's like your football team. You know, you can just switch <laughs> over whichever yeah. is benefiting you the most. <laughs> and if if you. And and you know they show this in some of these Bollywood movies. When the god doesn't give you, they take the statue and they destroy it. Yeah, what is this like? Are the god serving you? Or are you serving yeah. the god? It's it's crazy, honestly. So when you that's the reason I said Islam. The reason the reason Islam is become double in number because even if you take the entire population of India as, as Hindus, one billion or over, yes, Islam has now exceeded two billion in population. Within fourteen yes. hundred years, oldest religion, but you're still stuck in less than half the number of the Muslims. Why is that? Why has Islam progressed so quickly in such a short time? And if you guys are saying, "Oh, it was by the sword," then what is happening in Europe today? What is happening in the United States today? These are superpowers in in the world today, and over there, 
the local the the local population you know are accepting islam in huge numbers if you think the women are oppressed in islam the women are the most accepting islam in these western countries yes yeah. more than the men so all yeah. your what is the excuses in, all your in India, crazy like, evidences uh, you give I are against you a lot of reverts and also i tend to see more girls reverting to islam than yeah more boys. women revert because yeah. you know allah gives them hidayah mashallah and when they see that oh why are these women being targeted why are women being targeted just because they cover their bodies to hide to basically conceal and to preserve their modesty and who is who is pointing fingers everybody who wants the women to be without the clothes you know they want to see them they want to but the muslim women they want to cover their modesty that's all they want that's all they ask for but these guys say no it is for everyone to see who are you to judge who are you to say yes and these feminists they come across as saying oh my body my choice well if you want to you know abuse your body and for everyone to take away your modesty just by showing it's if your clothes are the ones which they are being um you know attracted by it just they value your your skin they value your your, your clothes not your intellect not yourself whereas in islam whether you're covered or at home not covered your it is your intellect that is valued okay and this is you know when you look at islam everything that it has prohibited like for example uh, take alcohol for example yeah when you look at the latest research done by um and and published in the lancet the medical journal which is well respected here in the west yes it says no amount of alcohol is good for you yes islam has made it forbidden to drink alcohol everything that islam is forbidden there's a reason for it so allah says in the quran there might be some benefit in in it but there is the harm outweighs the benefit Precisely. and that is exactly what we see today we see families being destroyed we see people drunk coming and abusing their spouse and there are all these cases whether you go in the east or the west you'll see the same drama when people are drinking alcohol the exact same thing happens the children suffer the spouse suffers their neighbors suffer yes a person Many who might be driving you know, while he's like drunk people, he might accident yeah. he, he might commit an uh, commit a murder or or second degree you know manslaughter or something by knocking someone off on the pedestrian bec because they have been drunk and this other person might not ne never had touched alcohol in his life the in other fact, thing is uh, like gambling you know yeah. gambling is being banned as well in islam it's prohibited yeah. look how many people gambling destroys as well not only I mean, the individual you know people who are gamblers they go to their friends they lie to them to borrow the money the same thing with the drug addicts and a lot says in the quran about intoxicants all intoxicants are forbidden yes that includes alcohol that includes drugs everything people lie to their friends their families to get money to buy to feed this um, this habit of theirs of either drinking alcohol or gambling or drug addicts or whatever it is they feed their their craving and their addiction by lying to people they destroy themselves they destroy their families they cut relation with their friends you know and obviously this is destroying the community in a way yes because when you're married and you break up your children suffer um both the families suffer the in-laws also have some sort of an impact all these things are bad for you but allah has forbidden this the same thing with adultery with fornication everything that allah has forbidden in the quran if people look at it objectively they will realize that this has to be forbidden from the society but look what happens in the east and the west then the government not only allows these haram things and prohibited things in islam but they actually promote it you see advertisements for alcohol yes why because they get a lot of revenue from it yes they write on a pack of cigarette yes it causes cancer but then they keep selling it Absolutely. seriously i mean look at it really? they know it is bad for the society the amount of money that the taxpayers actually in this country actually waste on these habits or these prohibitions or these addictions is something which is mind boggling absolutely
right and the kind of you. number and kind of number which yeah. they play remember in the last stream and it was when you had said what is in your hand and he said it's a lighter and it's a, yeah. it's, it's just harming myself so this entire and this is supported by this kind of philosophy like mill you know saying that it's just self harm no it's not harming mm. and when you prove that passive smoking does you know then people say that okay and that's why then they make smoking chambers etc let's see everybody yeah, come exactly. you know who smokes are here so we are not we are not even indulging in passive smoking yeah. yeah because these I you know shiva used these. to smoke right second i think shiva used to smoke weed i think uh, oh, no, yeah. i i know, i know that the uh, the sadhus <laughs> they love Sadhuri. their bhang and they yeah, love they their know. weeds yeah yeah and he also they he also shiva. do yeah yeah So anyway, like I mean, everything that Islam has prohibited is definitely bad for you, and everything is permitted is is something which Allah, in His wisdom, has allowed us. You know, so we as Muslims, we are not saying that you give up everything. No one is saying that you don't make money or become um, successful in your life in the halal way without uh, usurping anybody else's wealth or taking somebody else's rights away, and. it's you go about your daily life alhamdulillah allah loves us that and it's it's the the way the way that allah because he's our lord and our our creator he knows exactly what is best for us and what is not and if we abide by those conditions by those rules then you'll be successful not only in this dunya but also the akhirah which is the eternal life which we have to prepare for so inshallah i mean may allah give us all tawfiq and hidayah to to see the true path the straight path mm-hmm. and to to remain firm on our deen uh, amen 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 right uh suhail uh, you got anything to add brother uh, <coughs> assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh wa alaikum assalam uh, yes i'm seeing these the stream since last uh, means 2 3 months actually before that i have uh, seen i mean sadar ex muslims and haris sultan all but i was very worried ke nobody comes uh, for this but i am very glad ke you people are doing very well and yeah, thanks to allah thanks to allah and we a big thanks to allah that uh, we are muslim yes a very big uh, i want to ask regarding this topic uh, ke Uh, about carbon dating of these books who has done this carbon dating i have heard uh, uh, miss uh, half an hour before ke 7000 years back some, somebody has done carbon dating of these book no, no. because carbon no, no. dating is carbon dating is only for 5000 years i think no no carbon dating is quite recent oh you mean uh, you yeah. mean what it uh, yeah. in terms of Yeah so these are all claims in fact they the carbon dating that we have about this Rig Veda uh the earliest manuscripts they have in possession is just 1464 which is less than 600 years old Yeah okay. so 1464 CE which is like even like 700 years after or oh, sorry 7 800 750 to 800 years after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we no, have, no, it is done it, it no. is done recently but the so are yeah, you talking about the hindu manuscripts yeah yes yes hindu manuscripts yeah which which veda hindu manuscripts or... is older than this uh, rig veda which is like said, 600 years old yeah so even okay. if it's 11th century that still is not very old you know it's like less than a thousand years old like they say yes. so, so how what, can it be oldest called? yeah even islam yeah. is 1400 years old so it's even less than what but my uh, my point happen. is nobody can carbon date it uh, means oldest than 5000 uh, five, five years i don't know i haven't researched yeah. but even if that's the case look they can't even go beyond 1000 year let alone 5000 years mm. yeah so <laughs> let them produce something okay. from from, <laughs> from within the 2000 years yes mm. at least from from at least from within the period of uh, Jesus Christ onwards yes before they start saying yeah. 3000 or 4000 or 5000 years bring something within 2000 years and then we'll examine it but all yes, of it is exactly. just just blatant claims basically just baseless yeah mm-hmm. and one more uh, thing ke what uh, point or what good deed they have given from these vedas and all things i'm not finding anything ke do this and you will be uh, get successful or anything 
any helpful thing in our life i am not finding it all rubbish things are there well to be fair with them i That's, think there are a lot yeah. of good things also within the book like one right. thing i i noticed right. within the hindus is like they give really great respect to the teachers so they they treat them almost like gods okay. basically yes and the, the ones who practice their religion they they treat their parents also quite quite well so there are some social uh, what do you say uh virtues that they have within their faith within their religion but for us the main main uh focus Tawheed. is always the yeah. always god almighty isn't it actually so you, if you're, going to, if you're going to, not going to respect god then everybody else is uh, yes. respecting mm. anybody else is pointless isn't and it ev- everything which they revel you know this thing about teacher like yeah guru guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara guru sakshat param brahma that's my shri guru ve nama which they say which is like guru is equal, like you know it's like they make everything equal to the god equal to yeah to the brahman and then they start everything they start worshiping that and you know now they have started because now they've realized it so i've seen now they say no we don't worship we just revel we just you know we just make the idol so that we can we can draw some inspiration you can draw inspiration like that only then why to have temples like that for it and why to say that these are our gods so they, that's the problem with it that every yeah. good thing also has some bit of that you know some element of that you know inherent corrupted thing within that that it doesn't stay pure within that's it right, yeah. mm-hmm. hi uh, hi assalam alaikum uh, assalam alaikum uh, uh, just to add into swati's statement that if someone claims that uh, we Uh, we just take the inspiration from this this is not the reality or one more claim which comes from the hindus that uh, we are not very rigid uh, you know like all the river goes into the ocean so yeah. like <laughs> that if that is the logic then any hindu who travels into america or into arabia or into other part of the world they don't need to create a separate temple for their own god they can simply go to church and they can worship the jesus christ they can simply go to the mosque and they can like do whatever we are doing because if you are claiming that all are the rivers then and if you are standing next to the river b you will not say that let me bring the water from the river a and then let me take the bath so this Very is it. correct this is the uh, claim versus contradiction absolutely yeah. and you know what brother you this which you have mentioned no this is something which they act, the modern liberalized hindu actually does this they say see we come to your mosque we come to church also and we are not so rigid about it so why don't you also come why don't you also you know participate in our rituals uh, exactly. which are there because we do that so that's the kind of plea which they give that all rivers go to that ocean so we we are so flexible that yeah we, it's some who are very like you know rigid about it who say that we want to go into temples only but many urban people i have seen you know the, the the ones who are drifting away from the religion they just go any you know they don't have they don't create so much fuss so so much of fuss about it they can go anywhere they say yeah because god is one and is in every everywhere it's everywhere and in every being so that that's why we worship everything so i i'll make like a couple of quick points just i want to give a brief background about myself that right now i'm in us but i come from a place called allahabad which is one of the central place of hindus and mm-hmm. i studied like for 12 years in a rss school oh. so i, I know a lot about the rituals and things and uh, how it's like uh, completely joined with the politics you can mm. separate islam islam's worship and islam's politics but in hindus of these are very much combined and when you you make a claim like that ram doesn't exist or something like that then their politics also get like destroyed so just for an example there is a festival called ganesh chaturthi yeah it's a very famous festival they take the idol ganesha they put in their house for i think 14 days and then they drop it into the ocean and river but this yeah. whole and every hindu follows it like we follow our ramadan or something like that but do you know that this practice was created just 120 years ago by one of the person who was fighting against the britishers 
Right, right. <laughs> it was not Correct. existed before that. And right. when Hindus make claim that, oh, we should do what our ancestors used to do, then you should not be doing this. What you are doing is you are picking someone from your race and you are only following that. You are not going back in the history. You are just going till a certain point, which is giving you political, uh, this, uh, which I is know. making you political majority. Yeah. Like Hinduism is the term, which now you guys already know that it's an umbrella term. It's not like uh, in itself a religion. It's a religion created to make people majority in, during 1872, when the first census was done by the British people. They did the census on the basis of that Muslim exists. They follow a perfect, uh, uh, not the perfect, but a pattern to worship and all. And rest of all the people will put them under the Hinduism. And what they did is, Britishers thought that upper caste people who are the Brahmins and all, because only those people used to sit with the British. So they, British thought that Hinduism means what Brahmins do. And they put these Swami Vivekananda and Dayasana and Saraswati's Vedanta and everything in the Hinduism. But in reality, there are more than thousand of religions in India. They are the folk religion. They are not Hinduism. They have been created after 1947 by the law in India. And there was a huge debate in the parliament. Sorry, like I, I don't want to bring politics, but I'm just touching those points which are needed uh, for you guys to know that after 1947, when in 1952 or 55, when Hindu Marriage Act was getting created in India, that time there was a huge debate that who is a Hindu? And they wrote in the constitution that someone who is not a Muslim and not a Christian. Hinduism is not a positive identity. Just to give you an example, right? all the non-Muslim die today on, I mean, just for an example, die today yeah, on Muslim. Brother, brother. Yeah, but sorry, sorry to interrupt you, brother. But we are going into history again. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it's good. Uh, do you sorry, have anything? Did you, you, yeah. did you see at the starting you were what part of the RSS? Did you say that? No, no, I was in the school because oh, in the school, okay. Muslims don't have their education system in India. They right. are like properly depend upon the Hindu system. So I was like in their school, I used to go to get the education and all. And how they they do this Hinduism is first of all they don't take a, a like I saw your video with with a, a guy in the uh, you uploaded on the Dawa wise with a Hindu who had a hat who was wearing hat recently yeah. and he took like one hour or two hour and even with the brother Mansoor he did a video but he didn't take a spot like he didn't clarify his spot so that's yeah, what you, the first thing that they'll not clear the spot but they will yeah. do it. They will clear their spot when they know that the person is not that critical about the what they are telling. Exactly. So, yeah. The reason he wanted to stay on the fence is because he knew as, as soon as he said he's a Hindu, mm -hmm. then we'll focus on, on Hinduism. We'll focus, so what he, what he, he evaded that question, even though it was specifically asked, he never answered that question, whether you are a Hindu or not. I but he knew quite a, quite a bit about Hinduism and he started to, you know, the same old rhetoric about the propaganda. And uh, he, he couldn't answer afterwards. He didn't even know the, the basics of Hinduism. It, it turns with out. Pandit Rami also. With Pandit Rami, you did yeah. the session and Pandit Rami said that, oh, we don't believe in these stories of the Rama and other things. But by mistake or intentionally, I don't know, he, he said that, Oh, there was a huge movement, political movement in India about the Rama temple, and I supported that. Mm. So on one side, he was saying that Ram didn't exist. And on the other side, when he went to India, he oh, has supported yeah. the whole movement that Ram existed, and he did that. Just that it's, all, it's all to do with this. Right. Yep. So, yeah. so because when, when you get support from a Westerner, suppose... At least uh, he's supposed to be some sort of a advisor in the Australian government as well. You know, you got some clout, you got some some status, in, in so they give them money and say, okay, speak on our behalf. So it, it makes our case stronger. Right now, but, there uh, is a yeah, huge, there is a huge debate in America about the transgenderism. So yeah. and you'll see a lot of like even right wing uh, American they are against it. So when you'll find a Hindu here in America, he'll talk against the. Uh, transgenderism that this is not correct but when he's going back to India where there is a whole Kinner society 
kinner mm. and transgender he says that oh my hinduism is so liberal that we all, also have the kinner so it's like when you go to israel you say israelis are great when you go to yeah, palestine yeah. you say palestinians are, are great that's but that's the that's what hypocrisy is all about you know it's yeah, like yeah. creating theory out of thin air you'll ask any question to hindu and mm. all three will create three different uh, theory right yeah because it's it's all subjective isn't it everything yeah. that they say is subjective because they don't have a firm foundation like the way the muslims do you know we have clear instructions what to do what is halal uh, sorry what is haram and what is makro even what is har- halal all these things we have to instruction they have to on a daily basis they become uh, like the muftis you know giving fatwa to themselves like okay should i do this or not I, yeah. if i feel nice if i feel good i'll do it if i don't then i want and as the time changes you know before all this dhyanand saraswati and all these guys in the 19th century when the christians uh, were ruling them you know when the british were ruling them they wanted to align with them somehow and they couldn't compete with that so many gods you know with so many different rules with the simplicity that christianity provided them so they wanted they, they started white washing everything and they tried to align themselves with the christians now that the christians are not ruling over them liberalism secularism is becoming more popular so everything that the liberal and secular do these guys want to have a part of that as well look we are with you now so whoever is in charge whoever is the one uh, in vogue in uh, whatever is in fashion they try to align with them uh so when they see burqa they say that these are backward people but when they see sari or lehenga of their own culture they say that this is tradition this is great mm. so it's like use yeah. the scale and put it between the modernist and traditionalist whenever you yeah. want it's and as for yeah. w- w- what time you want which will suit your tradition and which will allow you to preach it right yeah. now in india there is a whole, whole movement to say that semitic religions all the semitic religions christianity judaism islam they convert people but at the same time hindus are doing the same thing now in the western places well the hari krishnas have been doing it for quite a while now quite a while but the they, they find a escape way by saying that but we don't say that if you'll not believe in us you'll go to the hell so by that they, they they claim that we are being liberal see we are being so nice we are not like you that you have such a rigid framework. they might not claim but their karma will will actually take the, <laughs> give them the <laughs> consequence of that for well, example you know when arjuna didn't want to kill his own brothers krishna actually forced him in a way yes, to say yes. this is your dharma you have to obey it yes and you know what i mean so even though he, he didn't want to kill his own brothers he said you have to do it that's what you're born born with that's but your birthright the, but you should ask this question whenever someone brings the gita that first of all you cannot just bring gita and not bringing the whole concept of mahabharata together because it's a 18th chapter in a book and hmm. before krishna talked to the arjuna what all the brothers did they sold their wife so many incidents brother this is just one of them entire yeah. mahabharat has like yeah that they sold their wives that what do you mean such a great like they, person he put it in he, gambling no oh he i see it. they gamble yeah. the wives yeah, yeah. and and, and nobody how how can you do that and that also proves that in case if mahabharat was true or hmm. even if it is like relative what was the right of the woman also in hinduism of that time well they were treated like property basically yeah property Unless you had some status yeah and yeah. about the script uh, because i was listening earlier and, in- and who says that marry five you know five people are there and they you know they're saying that this is this is somebody i've got some gift and they say okay all of you divide it amongst yourself <laughs> and then that's that's how draupadi has five five husbands who says like that and they, they it's like you know i it's believed to go like that they don't find any problem with it It's mm. like yeah, that's that's okay. And then there is questions that in in your uh, this thing you have polygamy and things like that. So it's so, it's, so even that one woman which they shared between five brothers. Yeah, yeah. Even that they they gambled her away. Yeah. Wow. And this is this is done by Yudhishthir, who's supposedly the Dharm Raj, you know, mm. the one who's uh, who's basically an epitome of Dharm. No He's wonder Ramayana was very popular in the series. 
<laughs> yeah. The TV series, you know, the other I series. Like I, I'd never watched one of them because it was just so cringe. You know, the way they made these crazy little <laughs> arrows and they fly. Yeah. I mean, it defies <laughs> physics in every single. But movie. majority of people know Ramayan <laughs> only through those. Nobody reads yes, scripture yes, as absolutely. much. Yeah. And, 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 the, and the pundits, you know, they were not happy about it. The Brahmins, right. because they were misrepresenting their their faith, their religion, their books. So no, they were not happy that about that. Time, uh, brother Hashim, if yeah. you know, uh, 1990 was the time when Ram became very popular after this drama. And even mm -hmm. people of the southern part of India who didn't know much about the Rama and who were not worshipping, they started worshipping Rama. So that's what I'm saying that Hinduism is not a religion where... Everyone used to believe in Rama or Krishna or uh, or the Shiva or these people. It has slowly after like 1947, it has progressed way much when everyone has been put into one single. Yeah, yeah. because the, the television and also these Bollywood movies, they have a huge impact, you know. Huge. Like, so many deities, so many deities have come from television movies. Yeah. And, and this has become a new... Scriptures. It has become a new norm now because I think the politicians are also a part of this. Yeah. And they want to change the, um, you, you know, the common narrative that is around. Like, for example, like Orange creating, Lip. Creating they, they're changing the names of the streets and all. And yeah. the movies are actually helping the people to make up, to, you know, to change their minds about all these things, like the previous right. Mughals. Like, they, a... they whitewash all the Mughal history recently, isn't it? In, in UP yes. somewhere. Yeah. Yes. There is a very famous... So the Rajput, they fought, uh, or Shivaji fought, and he lost. To whom? Nobody. <laughs> there is a yeah, yeah. Because there's no winners to fight, you know. <laughs> Whom did he win or lose against? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> so there it's is crazy, a honest, famous no? ritual in Allahabad. It happens every 14 years and every 28 mm. years. It's called, uh, uh, sorry, the word is Maha Kumbh Mela. Kumbh Mela. Yes, yes. This is, so in that, one of the most important ritual is Shahi Snan. That means Shahi means royal bath. Now, the word Shahi itself is a Persian word which came after the Muslims have come into the land. Right. And after that, this has become, there is no Hindi word for this, for Shahi Sna. That's one of the ritual. That how, uh, and this is one of the IS officer, uh, that person who was giving training to the uh, Hindus or Muslims to become the IS officer, administrative officer. And she was also telling that Hinduism developed later on once the Islam came and they got a framework that, okay, this is how we can do like Jai Shri Ram is it become a slogan now because Allah Akbar is also there already there. So these kind of things like later on it has propagated. So yeah. it's not something like existed 2000 years ago, the same thing what you are seeing or 3000 years ago. Maybe Veda was like just one page. Uh, four or five points, uh, like uh, 1500 years, uh, 2000 years ago. Then later on, it got added, and in last seven to 800 years ago, it has become like real books and something like that, which is getting practiced by the Hindus today. But they don't take a spot because if you take a spot, then you become like uh, questionable. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so yeah, I think the movies are changing a lot of opinions, uh, people's minds as well. Creates animosity Scramble between the Muslims and the and the Hindus. Mm -hmm. It's it's actually, it's it's kind of fueling the fire and making the community even more toxic. Yeah, so it's, it's very counterproductive, and I think they got a lot of movies uh, yes. under the sleeves. They're still making those. If if you don't and, have uh, concept of isnad, which is in the Islam. And that's mm. what I like, uh, apart from many things. Isnad is basically the concept, again, that when was it written, who has written, and... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's watertight, you know? It's a so, science, actually. Yes, it's a science. The science of hadith is not for everyone. You have to actually study it. So and we know on the surface level. There is much I'm more intricacies in there. I'm in the research field, so we also give the references in the research field. That from right. where the information came and all. So I understand very well the concept of Isnath. And the other religion lacks completely. So the best way, I mean, from my uh, small mind will be, uh, if I have to put that anytime Hindu comes, just tell them that, hey, we have a concept of Isnath in Islam on the basis of which we verify the information. Give us the at least like same kind of system. If you don't have, then your religion is like yeah. not 
up to the islam that's the simplest thing exactly yeah. and Otherwise, that's exactly what i was telling that chandra yeah. guy who came because yeah. he started to say that all oh, the uh, we have this oral tradition what what is the name he said sam i forgot the name of these guys who memorize their 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 uh, vedas or something he mentioned he some name give, he didn't give he didn't give no no he Is mentioned a term he mentioned a term uh and i asked him is that same like the hafiz of quran yeah. yeah so they have some people who memorize yeah. it but if they don't have a chain of uh, transmission like from whom it was transmitted a clear chain which can which we can verify and check then it's meaningless because let's say if i tell you a story and you tell the story to swati swati says it to somebody else you know and by the time it reaches the 10th person the story has now changed okay but how will you know whether it's the same or not you can unless unless somebody has written down the story and that story has then passed on that okay i learned it from him yes and then and the other person says they learned it from him and so on and then you actually verify every time you give the name that this is the same story then you then only you can do it and this is very logical which is why because yeah. he did not have any response to it he was succumbing to personal attacks by saying yeah. being in 4 by 4 room and all that stuff you don't need to yeah, bring that yeah of course that. yeah he was yeah. getting a bit cocky anyway that's why i removed yeah. him as well yeah. and and the, it's not it's not just one chain by the way okay so let's say yeah. even if you even if one chain gets something wrong there'll be another completely separate chain which can verify the same information Yeah, Nambudri, Nambudri was it? Yeah, that's, that's something like that. Yeah. 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 So what right. is that? Is that people who who memorize the Gita or oh, sorry the the scriptures or something? Nambudri did he said, but I haven't found anybody who had memorized all four Vedas like that. Yeah. So because yeah. I heard I heard before that these surnames like the Trivedi and Chaturvedi. So those people who memorize three Vedas, they're called Trivedis. Yeah. those who memorize four they're called chaturvedis the way but these are these the just way. remain as name now they they're just in, yeah they're just they're really not in no, no, they, they, no they they don't remember the one who learned about the four vedas or three vedas are called, called chaturvedi and uh, yes that's what i meant yeah three vedi I, i had all the friend vedi they never they never memorized it nobody oh, nobody so in there they just studied it they just studied it through some guru they just they never it, memorized yeah. it okay i see okay and they never memorized it doesn't go in the lineage like that i mean if you ask very contemporary person from that family that have you studied they 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 may be clueless to it so it's not going through lineage like that even yeah. forget about memorizing even studying or reading or going through that even that doesn't yeah, after, later on it just stuck as a name isn't it it yeah. just became yeah. as a yeah. surname Re- recently yeah, yeah the recent recently one ex muslim he 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 converted to uh, hinduism and he kept his surname as a uh, uh, chaturvedi yeah, yeah. <laughs> the gyani of four vedas <laughs> if if i create in, in religion, his dreams yeah. if i create a religion right now abrahamism and i mix like bible gospel torah dead sea scrolls quran and then i start claiming that you know we have like multiple books and each book is contradicting with each other and i made abrahamism just to make myself a majority in a certain land to have the political power so that's what hinduism is where each yeah but it always fails you know i think akbar beat you to it already he started yeah. his own religion remember <laughs> the ilahi yeah he did exactly the yeah, same yeah, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. he took good yes, bits yeah. from everyone but then at the end nobody practiced it because it was impractical and just for the people Hinduism. people who will see that hinduism part they'll take only that part and they'll reject everything else so you're just, back to square one just to add one more information that at the time of akbar lot of brahmans have included akbar as one of the avatar of the god really <laughs> yes <laughs> whoever technology <laughs> became powerful in that land or whoever well we we had we had uh, somebody who was worshiping trump recently so i'm not really yes. surprised yeah <laughs> elon musk also even even the elon musk <laughs> yeah, elon, yeah elon musk is well, a new yeah. god now So Sanatan, it's crazy, you know, it's, it's Arya like Lingayat. Uh, if you guys know Lingayat, just few years back there was a yeah. huge between the Lingayat okay. that we are not Hindu, we are not part yeah. of Hinduism. So stop calling us that. So these right. are different religions who are just became the Hinduism so that Muslim or any other person do not become a single identity in that particular land and by the democracy or whatever system. should not come into the power. Yeah. No that's true. I think Hinduism itself is um 
Well, it's it's actually an amalgamation of many religions. It's not just right. one religion. Right. Not and that's the reason they cannot Hinduism. identify one God. Every single yeah. sect within Hinduism yeah. identifies their own personal God, you know. Yeah. Even till today, the definition in the... And a lot of Muslims are in jail today for saying this. Uh, they are running the whole movement in India that the definition of Hindu and Hinduism is a political definition which has been created to make Muslim minority and it's written in the constitution that one who is not a Muslim and Christian or these Jews who come from a different land religions, they yeah. uh, they are Muslims. Yeah, okay, interesting. Jazakallah khair for sharing your uh, exactly. thoughts, uh, yeah. Brother Shabazz. I think we are running late now, so it's almost five hours. Uh, can I add a uh, yes, one well, point? Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Again, <laughs> actually, uh, uh, they ask uh, um, regarding polygamy. So mm. uh, we refer to their gods in uh, means all Vedas and all things. Uh, uh, somebody can ask the recent means uh, 19th uh, means 1630 uh, this Maratha ruler uh, Shivaji Maharaj how many wives he has so why going to the Shivaji go all the way to the god man yeah. the, the no no god, because Krishna, because recently they are practicing na? Shivaji had eight, eight, how many wives. Gopis that Krishna eight wives <laughs> eight wives they have 16 and 8 but recent also they yeah. have um, uh, polygamy also and they are worshipping uh, Ganesha. But I think, in, three, I think in India it's banned, isn't it? Polygamy is actually banned in India. But not for the Muslims. Yeah, but Hindus. <laughs> the, the they Muslims are, they are worshipping their, go, their gods and making festival yeah. of that. Ganesha, he has three wives and six uh, means caretakers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because at that time it and was a Krishna is being worshipped and uh, Ganesha is... Yeah. yeah. Okay. This, this was the one point and... Thanks to all. Yeah, just uh, Furkan, you want to add something before we close? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, you said that uh, um, Hindus will blame Muslim for erasing their history, but uh, Muslim invaders, as they say. But uh, it's refuted by their own scholars. Swami Vivekananda wrote in his letters, why amongst the poor of India, many are Mohammedans. It is nonsense to say they were converted by the sword. It was to gain liberty from the zamindar or uh, Brahmins. He himself is refuting their claims that they were converted by force. They were ju they just wanted the li liberty from uh, Brahmins. Yeah, I think you should uh, read uh, Audrey Triske's. Uh, I think she wrote. Uh, Aurangzeb, right? I have that book. Yeah. So Aud they they actually threatened her uh, with rape and with the usual stuff, you know. When you and, so, and she's an, an academic at a university in the U.S. and she's written about all this uh, propaganda spread by the Hindus against the Muslims and against the Mughals and so on. So yeah, it's it's quite an interesting uh, book. Uh, if you guys get a chance, try to read it. Uh, Audrey Trishke. Uh, this name gives many of the Hindus in the field nightmares. <laughs> yes, yeah. okay. you guys can just go to Z Library and download it for free. Just write Aurangzeb, the man, the myth, and legend. Yeah, this is the name, Audrey Tishke. Yeah. For the caste system, I just want to tell to the brothers that even in untouchables, untouchables mm. also has the caste system within themselves. Just to tell you. So it's not just like the Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. These yeah. are like four top classes. Now within Of Shudra, course, the subsects are so many. They are in hundreds like that. There is a statement, political statement given, it's a very famous in India, that every caste will find another caste who is below them in India. Yes. So, so this this is the whole system there. So it's not just the untouchable, they also have like multiple uh, caste within themselves. Yeah, they have lots of sub -caste, I think. That's, yeah, which they then just... refer to as Jan But then you have the out -caste as well, you know, like the Dalis and the Chandalas and all these guys. So they don't even belong in the f in the four Varna system. The out -caste. We Muslim and Christians are Malaysia. Malaysia. Yeah. Malaysia. What does it mean? Outsider. A foreigner or what does it mean? Outsider, yes. Outsiders. Yeah. Okay. I think the way they use it is is derogatory, isn't it? After in the last stream, yes. in the last stream, I think somebody last had stream... come and said, yeah. Yeah, in the last yeah, stream, a guy uh, explained about Malaysia. He, he he was like uh, mocking us by calling us the uh, shit. Yeah, yeah, that's Malaysia what they, they actually mean. Yeah, well, that's.
that's that's fine they can say whatever they want at the end of the day alhamdulillah ala ni'mat al-islam you know that's what we we pray to allah every day yeah all right brother and sister inshallah we should now close yes. because it's already over five hours uh, i don't want to be unfair to yeah these brothers and sisters i think all of you are from india aren't you or different no, yeah. i was born in india not, no no but are you are me. you look are you in india now or no i'm in u.s you in the us yeah. okay so you okay with time i'm just a bit concerned about these brothers it's five o'clock in the afternoon yeah i'm fine but <laughs> other people i, I can understand yeah. i can understand yeah please do uh, join our streams next time inshallah share your nuggets of knowledge inshallah and uh, that'll be good i don't know if you watched our stream we had one on saturday on um, on the cost system actually the last one no i didn't watch the yeah, last yeah. So the, it was on cost system and uh, it was quite interesting. I think it went on for eight hours, they seven just hours. Sorry. Common theme that it's the Varna system, and the Varna system has become caste system after the Britishers has arrived. That's the mm. common point they say. But if if you guys know, in Ramayan, Lakshman said that do not eat food from the Shabri. She is untouchable. Now ask them that why. A god, if if the system has become untouchable after a long time, then why Lakshman, who was the god of that time, he was like uh, saying this. It means it pre-existed before the Manu Smriti and all also. This mm -hmm. caste system. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have it in the Upanishad as well. Not yeah. 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 Rama has eaten the those bears, like berries, but later on Rama has killed the sh uh, Shambuka because... and. For the, uh, I'm sorry, just just one minute. Give me one minute. You said, uh, Brother Hashim, that Mahatma Gandhi was against the caste casteism. No, I'll I'll just uh, give you a little bit of clarification. That there was a guy Savarkar and Mahatma mm -hmm. Gandhi. They all followed the concept of Ramayana. In Ramayana, the concept is that do not believe in untouchability, but believe in the caste system of the authority. That. When it comes about the food, you can eat together. But when it comes about the position, authority, it should be divided on the basis of Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. And that's what that's what Gandhi even said to one of the communist person of that time. That when it comes about the ruling and authority, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. But when it comes about the food, let's have together and eat it. Because it's dividing our society. Interesting, yeah. Okay, Jazakallah, bro. Um, and uh, inshallah, we'll see you guys uh, on another stream uh keep us in your dua thank you very much for all the moderators inshallah. Uh, for us. yeah and uh, inshallah join us next time um i'm just going to remove a few guys here uh brother shabas leave your email address uh inshallah we'll get in touch with you so how should i put my email uh, like right here so you know at the our email is dawawise at gmail.com just sure. send an email there inshallah Okay, I will. Okay, see. thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, it's good too because there's so much knowledge to be learned, isn't it, in Hinduism? <laughs> knowledge, you <laughs> right. so what? It never yeah. stops. <laughs> I would say not after so, reading so Hinduism, our iman becomes more stronger. Absolutely. Yeah. After reading any any other religions, uh, okay, sure. any any other religions, absolutely. And, yeah. And I would like to correct whether I wouldn't call it knowledge. I would say reading about so much of contradictions, stories, inconsistencies, stories, stories narrations. <laughs> They're very yeah. good at say, telling stories, aren't they? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. All right. The, inshallah, keep us in your uh, duas. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Inshallah, you do well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.